And we should be live. Yep, I'm just waiting for the uh, screen to show. There we go. We are indeed free. Okay. Oh, fantastic. What a great day to remind ourselves of uh, sins of the past. Yeah, we found a uh, a video defending Halo, which is um, yeah, probably not a good idea, but let's see how it goes. Well, we found some other videos defending some other things, but that is for future us. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I shouldn't really say we found, they were suggested to us, but uh, yeah, either way. Fair. Oh, someone's seen this video. <laughs> they said Master Cheeks in the... <laughs> yeah, that's that's gonna come up later. Wait till you hear that argument. Oh God! I already, uh, my mind's already thinking of arguments and stuff like that. I'm just like, oh no. Defending the indefensible is never a smart idea. It isn't. It, it's so weird that people will choose to like these the most insane hills to die on. It's like, I stick my claim that the Halo show is amazing. I mean, while every normal person looks at them like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> like they're, they're standing on a tiny little bump. <laughs> <laughs> I declared that Rings of Power is the greatest show ever. Oh, God. I hope no one has actually said that. Oh, they have. They absolutely have. Oh, uh... Why are there so many people out there with just absolute dog shit taste? Uh, the education system. Yeah. Oh. Yep. <laughs> well, it's not entirely off topic this time. Man, I'm so happy to love Halo Reach. I'm sure nothing bad will be said about it today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Man, I want to get back into doing Halo Reach, uh some more for the streams. It's a lot of fun uh, going through with the stream and everything, and we're pointing out everything in the, the stream. And, and a lot of people in the stream chat are like, oh my god, I never really realized that. It's like, yeah, that's what happens when you pay attention. And it's not saying anything disparaging against my stream chat or anything. It's just one of those things where you get sucked into the moment, or like, you're there, you're like, okay, we're in the lull now, you know, they're just saying some random bullshit, I'm not, I'm not really paying attention to what they're saying, the, my objective pops up, I'm gonna go do the objective sort of deal. That's kind of what, what the, what Halo Reach is is you don't really pay attention to what's going on. You just do the objectives to just to do the objectives, and when you do pay attention, you realize how dire the game really is. Are there be a full Halo Reach tangent compilation? No. Well, I'll have the video out at some point, but again, I kind of want to wait till after I do the full playthrough of Halo Reach again with my stream chat. And we're going through and dissecting it. Now, before we get into the video, I do want to grab the super chats from the video premiere the other day. Uh, there's only two of them, so yeah, it'll go, go very it. quick. Uh, Five dollars from Alex Hoffman with no message. Thank you. And five dollars from Kitten Pyro now. Um, best day, Pretosa stream, and there is a blackout at work. Ah, thank you. Um, yeah. It wasn't a stream, though. It was obviously a uh, premiered video. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I responded to that super chat in the chat, but yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I hope you guys liked the Vincent Martin response now that it's finally done. Yeah, absolutely. We, we yeah. can get back to our regular job of kicking the poisoned well can down the road of ad hominem fucking whatever. Ad hominem <laughs> fallacy. God, I've never seen someone fuck up. Oh, I, I can... Fallacy fucking... Ugh. Actually, okay. Here's gonna be a spicy take. So Flannel McManel says, Reach has its faults, but it's better than the show. Then again, it's not hard to be better than grunt shit. I actually think... The show is super dog shit. It absolutely is. But I think Reach does so much damage to Halo that they're on par with each other, honestly. In my Ooh. opinion, they are on par with each other. And again, um, I will present all the evidence in the videos and everything, and we're we're going through on the streams through all the evidence and stuff. So, 
it'll then be up to you guys to decide, am I right? Am I wrong? It'll be up to everybody else to decide. Um, anyways, it, it's hilarious to see uh, Vincent Marta demanding a debate from me as if he's fucking entitled to my time at all. Yeah, uh, no. Yeah. Oh, not uh, every random fucking weirdo who disagrees with me is entitled to my time to debate me. If he had made good arguments, if he hadn't been such an asshole, then yeah, I'd be open to it. But every encounter with him, he's proven yeah. himself to be nothing but disingenuous, dishonest, bad faith. It would yeah. only ever be a waste of time to actually debate him. Yeah. And he always, he always, like, be because he is such a dishonest person, he can never, never speak the truth in any in anything. And we've got chat recordings of uh, stuff he's said in other discords and everything, and he's he's already spin, like, I, I challenged him to a debate, and like a coward, he backed out. Instead, he's just gonna respond to my video, and stuff like that. And it's like, you, you are such a piece of shit in every regard, you dumb motherfucker. Yeah. I don't remember there yeah. ever actually being a debate challenge. That's something that just came up after I confronted him in Mahler's Discord. Yeah. That, oh, he could talk in voice chat, uh, DMs, whatever, and he refuses. I was incredibly good faith when talking to him when he first encountered me, and he was nothing but bad faith. Yep. Yeah. That's my thing that bugs me so much is that he's saying, like, uh, like, we were the ones who were disrespectful, and that's why he won't listen to our arguments and all this shit. And it's like, motherfucker, what? Like, we were the ones who were being polite and actually listening to your, like, you know, countering your criticism and shit. And he's the one who jumped to insults first. But yeah. then he's also like, oh, well, they're just mad because I insulted them. And it's like, no, it's like, it's not because you insulted us. It's just that we're, it's like, we're not angry. It's just, you're the one who's saying that we did it first. But then you complain that we insulted you later. It's just so all over the place. It's like, well, which is it? Oh, again, like I mean, I said, Vincent he... as a whole is all over the place. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. I think I think he's got a caved-in head, so his brain is all over the place as well. <laughs> Probably. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> like I said, Just like Megaton. Like I said in the in the video, I would I would love to hear what college that he went to because man, it would it would be such a great thing to like put up as their as like the this is the type of people that this college produces don't send your kids here let them fucking die let their oh. let the college die out let them lose all their funding because this is <laughs> this is a shit show if they're letting people like this through yeah oh god it um, is so bad um oh yeah someone on the discord found a comment from him i think on one of his videos where he's saying he doesn't compare himself to rags but <laughs> We've also got that right next to the screen cap of him saying, uh, I am like rags. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's fucking amazing with these people. It's it's amazing with these people. They're, they're so, like, woof. Um, yeah. I do, I do want to backtrack slightly, and people are like, but uh, for entertainment, in terms of entertainment, though, when it comes to Halo Reach, you know what? That's fair. You can get a lot of enjoyment out of Reach. You absolutely can. And I'm not focusing on the multiplayer at all. So, you know what? If you play Reach to play the multiplayer, and if the multiplayer is really fucking good, then there you go. But I'm focused on the single player and how much damage the single player does to the Halo universe as a whole. Perhaps Vincent Me Martin's head is toilet bowl shaped and full of shit. <laughs> Well, based oh, on God. past experiences with him, that's probably not too far off from the truth. Yee. Two dollars from Bentastic197. Thank you very much. Thank you. Master Chief Clap of Cheeks. Well, he Master used to Cheeks. be able to. And 100 bucks from Alex Hoffman. Mm, get it? Bucks? Eh, because farm? Eh. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> bucks... Hold on, bucks are deer. You don't, don't farm deer. Sure you do, it's called hunting. Yeah, that's hunting, that's not farming. Like, you don't <laughs> drive down to a farm and find a field full of 
like deer penned in. Uh, they, uh, they don't fucking milk the deer. Technically, uh, you do. In fact, there are farms specifically set up in Washington, of all places, to farm specialty deer that are brought in. To hunt, sorry, to hunt specialty deer that are brought in to this farm. The farm is a private property, so you get permission from the owners to hunt on this property. Okay, but bringing in deer to, like, that that's different from actual farming. I mean, is it? Because you've got to breed them and everything, too. You don't want to keep paying to bring all the deer in, if you can just breed them there. I'd rather not think about the deer farms. I don't like this idea. Why? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, anyways. Hi, everyone. You guys are amazing and love watching. I will listen as we harvest corn today. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Get the corn. Hopefully, it's a, a very good corn harvest. <laughs> Hunting is just meat farming. There you go. And Paradorex <laughs> gets it. Why do you think they call it farming in MMOs? Come on. I mean, that's different. Like... My main thing is, okay, you've got a farm with cows on them. You take the cow to the slaughterhouse, they, well, get fucking slaughtered. Then that's where you get your meat from. Where, if, what, you're, what you're describing sounds like, okay, we've got a farm full of deer. Now go to a field and just fucking shoot one in the head like you're out in the forest shooting, like, hunting wild deer. Oh, the deer farms have all kinds of different things. They'll have tree areas, they'll have waterways, everything. It is it literally is forest, but they didn't plow it or anything like that. They set up a, a deer farm instead. Sure, but oh, man, I don't know. It, it just the concept sounds weird to me. Like, I, I've actually never heard of a deer farm before. That's why I was... Because when I think of... Meat Eater. Huh? We should watch Meat Eater sometime. They, he's a good guy. He, uh, his whole thing is that he is a hunter. And it goes through... Um, this is a, a real show. It's not like a, uh, you know, it's not like a movie or a series or anything. This is him going through and he talks about going to these farms and places and everything. And going hunting and how to prepare the food and everything. Fascinating, fascinating show to watch. Hmm. Granted, yeah, though, I'm, just... I'm a, I'm, you know, we already know I'm, I am Tism Master Extreme, so that's why I find that show fascinating. It, it, for me, it's just more so when I think of a farm, the image that pops into mind is like horses, cows, chickens, corn, wheat, um, and a guy in a straw hat in overalls or not overalls, um. Nah, overall, is pretty accurate. It, At least I'm thinking about the farms here. Yeah. I, I'm thinking of those, like... I, I forget what they're called, but it's, it's the stereotypical jeans with the whole front thing and the straps over your shoulders. Overalls. Those yeah. are overalls. Yeah. Oh. For some reason, I thought they were called something else. With uh, <laughs> you, you need to make sure you get the full stereotype, though, with a, with a hay pitchfork. A hay fork. Yeah. And he's got a bit of a straw sticking out of his mouth. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but there's things like fish farms and stuff like that. It's like there's all kinds well, yeah, of or, farms. Yeah, or fish yeah, farms like... are that's that's different though, because oh. you <laughs> they call them in California now bee farms. Yeah, bee farms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there that's are actual bugs. there are actual bee farms. The thing I'm referring to is California. Yeah, I know. Fish and wildlife. <laughs> Decided that they needed to have authority over bees. Okay? So fish and wildlife now... To get authority over bees and beekeepers and everything, they decided to redesignate bees as fish. So that they could have their bureaucratic blue balls smeared all over beekeeping. And it... Passed. You know the system it is fucked passed. and shit like that happens. Yeah. It's so bad. Ugh. <laughs> kicking the deer down the well can. <laughs> You're damn right I'm kicking the fucking deer down the well can. Gonna, Drown it. Gonna poison the deer of the well 
straw something. <laughs> it's hard for me to do Martinisms because I'm not as retarded as he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So We're not savants. It, it's kind of hard. You, you auto correct <laughs> to something that makes more logical sense. Yeah. Wh whenever I'm doing that, my brain is constantly trying to get me back on track, trying to course correct. And it's just like, no, no, I'm trying to s intentionally say something stupid here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I am going to change one thing on Bintastic's uh, Super Chat here, because he... Oh, uh, I'll, I guess he sent another Super Chat. We'll just do both, then. Uh, $2 from Bintastic197. Thank you very much. Now we farm the emulator, Master Race. And then another $2 wow. from Bintastic197. I met Emu, damn autocorrect! <laughs> <laughs> emulator farms are my favorite farms. Emulator they're best when they're ripe and great. juicy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, five dollars from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are deer farms where they raise them around here, and buffalo farms. It has not been a good harvest, sadly. Ah, uh, sorry to hear. Yeah. And then another. I hate when I do that and I click on. Another five dollar super chat from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Thank I look you. more like a homeless man when I am in my work clothes, and it's getting cold up here, so now I look like an Eskimo. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna get real cold here uh, soon. They're they're nice. actually predicting snow this weekend. I'm like, really? Yeah, I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, I can already. see it. It's pretty. It's pretty cold here already where I am. I'm. I have to wear a house coat wherever if I go outside because it's so cold out there now. Yeah, I, I'm starting I to get wearing my light jacket now. It's finally starting to get a bit cooler here, but this has actually been a pretty fucking warm October for me. Which I hate, because as far as I'm concerned, September 1st, we should be minus... I shouldn't say minus. We should be 10 degrees and no higher. Fuck the heat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, another $2 from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Yeah, hey! My top is here. Go, Pagan, go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, huh. But, um... God, yeah, that's. God, you mentioned buffalo farms, and now I remember um, when I was younger, I used to always go to Lincoln State Park, and they had buffalo farms there, and you could actually eat buffalo. Mm -hmm. It was pretty. It was pretty neat. They are very dumb animals, but <laughs> it's like they are very stupid. But they, God, they look cool. Uh, and then I also remembered the fucking um, the movie Trimmers. They actually had a. An ostrich farm, <laughs> which <laughs> which made yeah. for a great joke later. Yes, absolutely. Uh -oh. <laughs> Tre if you've never seen Tremors, highly recommend watching. If you like B schlock horror movies, that is that is like the epitome. They're they're intentionally B schlocky, campy horror mm -hmm. movies. Fucking oh, hilarious. I, Tremors one and two are still some of my favorite fucking movies. I fucking Let's... love Tremors one and two. Let's not go into any details, but my favorite scene is the basement scene. Because that is oh. funny as fuck. Yeah, the basement scene is great. Yeah, and I don't want to go into any details to spoil anything. You know, we will definitely, at some point, we will watch the Tremors movies. In fact, yeah, I'll, I'll say it right now. We'll watch the Tremors movies in November. Well, we should absolutely do that. That would be fucking fantastic. The Tremors movies are, are great, campy, goofy horror movies. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we should do that. That'll be great. That'll be really fun. Um, God, my my favorite scene is probably the uh, the ending barn scene to two. That's all I'll say. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, five dollars from Johnny All Fourteen. Thank you very much. Thank you. I used to like the heat, but that was back when I was a stupid child. The cold is so much better. Cree, please save me. I live in Texas. I need help. Ha! Um, that's a funny thing. Texas actually seems kind of like an appealing place to live mm -hmm. in every regard except for the fucking temperature. Yeah. Well, you... Make sure you don't go to San Antonio. That's, that's just it. Oh, well, that's right. pretty nice. Corpus Christi uh, gets highly recommended, so... Well, I mean, I probably won't be moving there anyways due to the heat alone. Yeah, fair well, if you if you want to move somewhere and you don't, then 
<laughs> the heat of the, the issue. You can come over to Hoosierville if you want. The fuck is Hoosierville? Hoosierville. It's uh, Indiana. Indiana is the only state where we have a custom name for the people that live in the state, which is Hoosiers. And nobody's quite sure where it comes from. Nobody knows. Yeah, we, uh... Yeah, we talked about that in, um... I don't, I don't even remember what the class was, but it was about Indiana studies or whatever. Mm. And, uh... They said, like, one of the things that they think that that came from was people used to shout from their porches and stuff. They'd say, who's there? And because of the, <laughs> like, really southern draw that they would have, it would sound like, who's there? Who's there? <laughs> so, who's there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nobody nobody knows for sure, but now it's just kind of stuck. So everyone from Indiana is a Hoosier. Hmm. Um. Let's oh God, see. Gary, Indiana. <laughs> yeah, no, avoid Gary. I, yeah, avoid Gary. <laughs> I think Gary could. Oh, and avoid Terre Haute. By the way, we call it Terrible Haute, not because the the city itself is particularly bad. It has a stink to it. There is a stench in Terre and Terre Haute. Which is why we call it terrible hope, and it it smells like a used tampon factory. It just it just a, stinks in the air. It just stinks everywhere. A used tampon factory. So a factory that produces used tampons. Yeah, because it, it, it smells like a used tampon, but it, it, it the stink is everywhere, everywhere. So it's like it must be like industrial grade, like export or some shit, because it is just all over the place. Um, hmm. but yeah, no, we have a, we have a lot of nice places. Um, we, of course, we have the the higher end places around Indy, so like the Greater Indianapolis area. You got Fort Wayne, which is uh, obviously named after the fort and everything. But uh, yeah, Fort Wayne is is a weird weird uh, city though, because it's um, a lot of one way roads. Like it is a maze of one way roads. <laughs> I heard this morning that apparently the city I live near is on fire. Oh. Yeah, oh, apparently, a bunch of, apparently a bunch of warehouses caught on fire and it's spreading around. Yeah, our uh, our city burned a decade ago. We had a big fire downtown. Um, unfortunately, a couple people lost their lives too, which really sucked. Yeah. Because yeah. usually if it's downtown, it, it was on Main Street, and that's usually just businesses. But there were a couple places there where the people who owned the business also lived there. And unfortunately, they uh, they didn't make it. Uh, Five dollars from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Thank you. The cold hit us hard, and the frost really messed things up for us. Buffalo are hard to keep. The gun guy is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hmm. Bert Gummer. Bert, Bert Gummer. Gummer. Yep. Uh, $5 super chat from Scoop Meister. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is the, what, third time I binged something out of boredom and now people are focusing on it in some capacity? I feel like a secret catalyst. And he, Scoop now, Meister specifically says he's talking about Tremors. Oh, okay. Okay. Because for a <laughs> second there, I was scared that you, you binged... Hey, you mean the games, right? because <laughs> <laughs> if it's the first three games then we're fine there's nothing to worry about <laughs> um, Gary, indiana also known as caleb yeah <laughs> yes oh my god holy shit i if i get a that would probably be one uh text uh sorry text uh replacement mod I would use in, in Elden Ring. Like when Caleb pops up it's just say Gary Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um two dollars from Alex Hoffman, thank you very much. People from Wisconsin are known as drunks. That's our name. Well, there you go. Hoosers <laughs> hmm. a lot better. <laughs> um Bentastic one nine seven with five dollars. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Cree, you can always come to the land of ten thousand lakes. I mean, that's true. I mean, technically, I could go anywhere in the world. Um, I'm not much of a traveler, though. I... Are you... Oh, okay, so you you don't have your land boat and deal with land pirates, and you're traveling on the, no. the paved waterways? No. Why would I? <laughs> okay, look. It is actually dangerous for me to be driving a car. 
Because ever since I was a kid, I fell asleep in the car super fucking easily. Even if it's only like a 20 minute drive, I fell asleep. Now, I'm not quite that bad now. But. I have been behind the wheel and I've started dozing off. And, uh, no. No. I, I think I'm good without driving. Yeah. Uh, final list from Johnny Off 14. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seriously, though, can someone tell me why Gary, Indiana is so infamous? I tried to Google it, but I just got more confused. So back in the day, Gary was a very, very thriving city. Very thriving. It was just outside of Chicago, but it was over in the Indiana border, so it had Indiana laws, regulations, and rules and stuff. And it had a massive, massive fucking steelworks plant called Gary Steelworks. It was enormous. The thing covered a pretty sizable shoreline of the Great Lake. A huge, huge fucking steel factory. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of all it had. So it, it was kind of a company town at that point. And a company city. So everybody worked at Gary. Well, when problems happened with the economy and Gary had to start shutting down things, it had a massive rippling effect through through the city. And so everybody that could or had the foresight to uh, fled the city. So you have a lot of abandoned areas in Gary. You have lots of poverty because Gary Steelworks kept... Now that they didn't have people to immediately come replace, they couldn't recapitalize on the market, so they started losing shares, and it started. It just went into a spiral. And now Gary Steelworks is closed. It's been brought back open, uh, a small portion of it. I would actually like to open up even more of, of Gary Steelworks and have uh, uh, Indiana Steel be an export. That'd be nice. But, yeah, so it, it's a city that's basically run down. Very run down. Now, keep on top of that, that it is just outside Chicago, right? Chicago, mm -hmm. a very crime-ridden place. Well, if you, if you don't want to deal with Chicago police, why don't you go to Gary, where they don't have much of a police force, because it, it's so poverty-stricken. So it just kind of compounds itself, and then because it becomes more poverty-stricken and more crime-ridden, more people move away from it. So now there's even more abandoned areas. and It, it actually got labeled as the murder capital of the U.S. for a while. Yep. God it's damn. Yeah. It's basically the Detroit of Indiana. Yep. <laughs> Gary is basically the Detroit of America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But again, it's just one of those... It's just a thing, right? It, it just, it's just a spiral. And again, I... Gary is recovering, slowly but surely. Gary is recovering. I mean, that's through a lot of hard work um, from a lot of different people. But I honestly think that we should open up more of Gary Steelworks. We should, we should, uh, and we, if we have to, do it as a, a government uh, subsidized for the Indiana, for Indiana state government, and sh and export Indiana steel again. Indiana Steel, it was good steel. It's good quality steel. That's that's how we have Nucor is still up and running. Nucor Steel Works. Because Indiana does make really good steel. We also, of course, everybody knows Indiana as the farm state. <laughs> that's whenever you see those meanwhile in like Meanwhile, in New York, and or like meanwhile in Illinois, and then it shows like a guy dressed up as a twenties era gangster. And stuff like that. And he's got like a bunch of alcohol and booze on him. Then it says, meanwhile, in Indiana. And you see a guy in overalls with no shirt on. With a farmer's uh, tan. With a pickaxe. Saying, we take our core seriously around here. It's like, uh-oh. <laughs> it's accurate. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I wasn't expecting to get into so many tangents before we even started the fucking video. Well, that's the best time to have them is before the video. True. Um, Get them out of the yep. way. Do we even describe what the video is we're covering today? Yes. A really shit Halo we, video. We did mention it was Halo, but did we mention that... Uh, it was a guy praising it, we did. But we didn't go well, any deeper than that. How... Uh, sorry. Halo TV show gets Master Chief right. 
video essay. <laughs> and in the thumbnail, Halo with um with half the word of Halo blocked out by Master Chief. That, that's a weird design, but okay. Ah! Why it's awesome. Well, I, I was, I, no, just ha. Half the word of Halo blocked out. It's ha. Actually, it's ho. Oh, no. He blocked out the A and the L. You picked the worst letters to block out. <laughs> <laughs> Though very fitting for all the characters. Ho, Chief. <laughs> um... I, I originally one of the titles I was throwing around for today's episode was, was Hail No <laughs> Master Ho <laughs> You see the Turf Nation video about Rings of Power? We're gonna get um, there. Yeah. Yeah, we're probably we were gonna Not we today, were, not today's point. stream. Yeah, not today. We were thinking about covering it, but we decided on this for today. Yeah. But yeah. Let's uh, let's switch on over. Yeah, let's get into it. I can already feel the pain. Yeah, wait, why did the video... Oh, I see what happened. Fuck off here. What? Uh, a little thing popped up. If you're having problems, please disable your ad block. And that's why it moved the video slightly in the in the in the watch together window. I was like, what but is what happened? I don't. I'm not getting the thing to disable my ad block. No, 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 no. It, uh, just, it just has that tiny little thing underneath your bookmark bar that pops up. And that move, that shifted the screen down just slightly. Because uh, I was wondering why, like, YouTube was cut off. You could only see the, like, half of YouTube. And I was like, what the fuck? All right. So I'm going to spoiler alert this. I'm going to put a pin right here. We we'll probably have the same idea, but go ahead. This is super fucking long-winded. Yeah. Yep. This is what I meant by the intro is very long. Yeah, and, and again, now, you can have I a lengthy... Go ahead, go ahead, Cree. I think we're having the same... I, I understand that we're only like 13 seconds in, but that's 13 seconds of, okay, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Why am I watching this video? Okay, I'm going to go watch someone play Minecraft. Yeah, essentially. Again, because there's, there's no text on the screen. There's nothing flashy going on. It's just starlight. And we're just slowly lowering the camera. It's like, yeah. okay, you know, you can have your logo up here, stuff like that. Or if you want to have this 13 seconds long, 13 seconds long could be fine. If maybe it were, you see the stars coming in in time with the music and it makes your channel logo... I, I don't think that's possible, given his channel logo is, you know, this, which is, I assume, his face with a purple light on one side of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you couldn't really do that, but if, if say you had a channel logo and the stars were popping in with the beat of the music, it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of clever. You know, then something visually is happening to keep people interested. Yeah. Um... This is also kind of the reason I'm not doing intros anymore, because it's just kind of a waste of time where nothing is happening, and those first few precious seconds are important to keeping your viewers, and if nothing is happening for them in that first, like, 30 seconds to a minute, charging battery, um, they're, they're probably going to click away, yeah. which hurts you in the algorithm, especially... The earlier on they click away. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm not going to be doing intros anymore myself. Even like, It's not necessary the way I was doing them either. It's just music and my channel name. Well, you know what my channel name is if you scroll down like fucking three centimeters and look at the channel name that's below the video anyways. Hmm. Uh, $5 super chat from Adako the Tricky. Thank you very much. Thank you. Master Creef, you mind telling me what you're doing this stag? Cree, crapping on this absolute fucking tripe someone suggested me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. But we, we can't say that the video is bad yet because we haven't seen the rest of the video. It's just not such a great intro so far. Yeah, absolutely. 
Cree, we can't hear headset waifu. I know, because Seth is hosting, because my internet yeah. is dog shit. You guys will hear headset waifu once again some point in the future. Yep. How long that'll be, I have no idea. Hopefully sooner rather than later. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Killastar5000, coming at you live. <laughs> Don't yeah, those do that. Na those names are wild. You can't stop me. It's already been done. Re! See, that. If you had had that, um, again, kind of kind of generic thing, but that coming in with the beat drop, do that. Do that earlier. We're 20 seconds in and you did it, finally. Do that earlier. Yeah. That worked well. Do that. Over the last several weeks, there's been a collective outrage from Halo fans over the creative decisions made in the new Halo live action series. I'll be pedantic and say I argue the lack of creative decisions made because it's pretty, <laughs> pretty fucking yeah. dark. Yeah. There, there, there's stuff that's obviously like the fan service -y thing, but then they... Oh, God, the, the way everything looks, too, is just wrong. The Warhog, the Warhog looks fine, but that's an actual vehicle that was made. <laughs> so, I still remember those weird promotional things uh, for, I think it was Halo 3, actually, where they did the cross-promotional thing with the building actual real Warhogs you could buy. Hey, creatively bankrupt, I agree. The <laughs> series have at least sorry hello creed pay gone such <laughs> <laughs> yeah the uh the martinisms are never going to end in chat yeah nope, no never if we're still doing this five years from now we're still going to be seeing martinisms absolutely <laughs> yeah we're going to see spiking of the well can for probably a few years oh yeah <laughs> series have at least been upfront with fans about their vision going as far as calling it the silver timeline that's not being upfront with your vision okay my my dude that, that is called deflecting that's one of the most like basic bitch oh well it, it's a totally different timeline things don't have to be the same here okay so guns just magically don't work in this timeline unless the main characters pick them up yeah, and that's more of the bigger problem. I don't... I I know a lot of people take issues with alternate timelines and stuff like that. I don't hate the idea of alternate timelines to a series where you explore, like, what if situations where things are different for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, I think they can be done very well if you have the right people working on them. But for shows like Halo, it's just an excuse to write dog shit. Um, why is Master Chief a pussy in the Halo show? Well, it's a silver timeline, that's why. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why does Master Chief break down and have an autistic cry in the corner? Well, it's a silver timeline. Okay. Yeah, it comes across as very insincere. It comes across as excuse making for dog shit writing. Yeah, absolutely. These events are canon, and yet fans complain. There's Wait, these events are canon or aren't canon? Hold aren't. On. He said aren't canon. Oh, okay. okay. Which doesn't matter because it doesn't fix any of the issues that the show has, even if it isn't yeah. canon. Okay, so to go back to my whole thing about alternate timelines can be done right, again, if the right person is working on them, it doesn't matter that it's not canon when the show is still fucking garbage. Yeah. When the show has no logical consistency to itself, it doesn't matter. You can get rid of all knowledge of the Halo games, and this show still fucking sucks. Like I said, the guns don't work unless the main characters use them, and then suddenly they magically like get an upgrade in power. Yeah, it's completely fucked.
Yeah. And I think it's totally fair that people who came into the show expecting Halo, like, you know, the actual Halo games and stuff and that storyline and that kind of stuff. And the fact that they didn't get it, I think they have a right to complain about that shit because we weren't told any of that stuff. We were right up to the point where the show was released. They made it seem as if, oh, yeah, it's going to be just like the games. And we, we, you know, all this shit. Like, they, they, there was nothing to really hint that it was going to be this fucking divergent from the actual game story. To essentially be so, in name only. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's totally fair that people can complain about it, even though it's a alternate timeline. It's, it's fucking shit. Like, it, not only does it have a ton of problems like by itself as its own timeline, but it was basically false advertising as well. Yeah. Oh, and um, Granius brings up a good point. ESO is not canon, and it's good. Yeah. ESO is not yeah. canon to Bethesda's Elder Scrolls games. But it's really fucking good. Yeah. The whole non-canon thing is just... It's just a really sad excuse. Like, it not being canon doesn't matter. The yeah. product is still garbage. Yep. Find out super chat from Flannel McManel. Thank you very much, sir. Timelines can be interesting, but often it's used as a skin suit to parade around the writer's ideas and to shield itself from criticism. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was here in the Halo show. That's what it was with uh, Bebop flicks. That's that's kind of what it is with Rings of Power, except Rings of Power isn't claiming to be a different timeline. Yeah. They're claiming that they're modernizing Tolkien's vision. And it's like, go fuck yourself. Uh, no. How, see, what's, what's crazy is House of the Dragon has the same problem where they're like, it just didn't feel right to us that there weren't enough black people in House of the Dragon, so we made the Valerians black. And then it's like, but they weren't. But, but the show is also really good, so... Yeah. It seems there's there are actual writing talent keeping these fucking weirdos in check when it comes to House of the Dragon. In fact, that's actually um a good case study or maybe not case but a, a really good example to use uh against all the people who claim that people like Nerdrotic are racist and stuff cuz he had a problem with the race changes in both Rings of Power and House of the Dragon, but guess which one he's uh, saying is good? It's like, yeah. I thought if he was a racist, he would hate the show. Hmm. Funny that. Yeah. Like, yeah. a lot of those weirdos just look for any excuse to hate these people. Um, when people like Nerd Roddick have been right the entire time. They called months in advance that Hal Brand was Sauron. Uh, well, I, I believe they were given information about the show, and all except, like, one of these claims were correct. Just pretty fucking insane. Yeah. And like I said, I've we haven't seen all the Rings of Power yet because there's been scheduling conflicts and everything like that. So yeah, um, my but, work schedule is completely fucked. I hate it so much. Yeah, but I have already been confirmed to me that I was right that Hellbrand was Sauron, which just makes things so much worse. And and yeah. people are. People have painted it as, and I can believe it, but I'll have to see if it's actually true. People have painted it to me as the fact of, um, yeah, not only is he Sauron, but he was actually trying to be a good guy, and Galadriel yep. made him a bad guy again because of she's such a terrible person. Yep, that's uh, that's exactly what happened. That's what I've been told, and I'm like, I can believe it because Rings of Power is that shit, but I don't know <laughs> if that's actually what happened yet because I haven't seen it yet. It is. Oh, Jojo. One hundred percent. Oh, I didn't know any of this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a lot of shit we were in store for for the next four episodes. Yep. Um, two dollars from Lanterns Glow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can't confirm. ESO is good. League's better than Skyrim. I agree with that statement. I wish I had the time to play ESO. Yeah. Uh, Fight on the Super Chat from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. What's worse to their lore? Rings of Power or Halo TV show? Rings of Power. Rings of Power, easily. You're taking this... Th this... 
work that has been insanely influential influential for decades um this like the, the damage they've done to it is almost indescribable yeah. it, it, i it is depressing that rings of power exists absolutely and the only good grace that can come from rings of power is if it gets canceled and the showrunners and writers never work again that that'll be the saving grace because again as we found out the only reason these two nobody writers got to write for lord of the rings was because jj abrams recommended them for some fucking reason that, that's yeah. literally it Uh, five dollars. <laughs> oh, what? That's what I'm laughing at. I'm laughing at. Okay, yeah. Five dollars from Captain Professor Doctor Horatio Felatio Flungus McDingus the Third. Thank you. Salve cream. Today's honorary emperor is Agrippa, who is the military might behind Octavian's politician. It's cream team. You forgot the team. Cream team. Selfie cream. Today, uh, today's honorary wow. emperor. Selfie cream. Today's honorary emperor. Don't worry, McDingus. We can get a refund for you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, thank you. Five dollars from Johnny Off fourteen. Wait, what? But Sauron is literally Morgoth's right hand man ever since he was made. And Morgoth is literally the god of evil. Um, I thought... Don't I, question it. I, I thought uh, Sauron was lured to Morgoth's side, and then he became, like, the greatest of Morgoth's uh, lieutenants or whatever. Yeah, and he became the necromancer. And just, oof. I just... I do have a copy of the Silmarillion now, and I will be going through it for the uh, Rings of Power video. Because I I plan to break down the entire fucking show. Yeah. I've also been listening to audiobook, which is uh, pretty decent so far. That's good to hear. What makes good writing good, though? Well, if you have well-rounded and grounded characters, if you can understand a character even if you don't agree with them, including if there's the a villains, logical through line and things make sense given the context of the world yeah um, if it doesn't contradict itself in any way yeah. or if it does contradict itself but then that becomes a point a plot a specific point in the books like again if you have a contradiction and it's never mentioned again you just have that contradiction and it's just there for all time that's incredibly bad if you had a contradiction but then it's explained like why the contradiction happened like Reality is breaking down because of these reasons or whatever, and this stuff is happening now, and this is why it's bad. Like in the yeah. whole Lovecraftian stuff, where where things start contradicting the way reality works, but then you realize, um, as the, the writings go on, that reality itself is breaking down, so the rules are starting to no longer apply correctly. Yeah. Like, just to give an example, if you have a TV show with a scene where Bob is in San Francisco... And then five minutes later, he's in uh, London, England. Uh, it's like, yeah, that's a contradiction. There's no way he would get there in a span of five minutes. But mm -hmm. then if the show were to explain, you know, it's a clone of Bob, or it's a shapeshifter taking on his appearance, or he used a portal to get there, a yeah. magical portal that instantly uh, transmitted him there, then that wouldn't be, you know, a problem. But they would need to explain that. Yep. That's actually one of the problems in the later seasons of Game of Thrones, is people just fucking teleporting everywhere. <laughs> Because Scrub Lord Nord sixty nine says, "Here's an example of excellent top of the line writing. Somehow Palpatine returned." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's just one of those things. Um... Oh, we got another impersonator of Acer Thorn now. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. Oh, speaking of Medicare, all right, li listen here, Cancer Man. Stop fucking putting Acer Thorn off. Do it, damn it. Ah, he'll get around it. to it eventually. Oh. He has... Look, 
I'm not worried about it because he said he's interested in covering Acer Thorn. And yep. he finds the situation hilarious and he wants to laugh at the turkey man. Yep. Uh, unrestrained on Odyssey, which should tell you <laughs> how fucking much he wants to go in on the subject. Um, it's fine. I, I It'll oh. come eventually and it'll be worth it. Uh, Verse says, I see, so just follow common sense and break it if it'll make a more interesting story. No. Follow the common sense and logic of your particular world. If your world, gravity doesn't exist in your world, then everything needs to revolve around the fact gravity doesn't exist. If your world, um, fire doesn't give off heat, then everything needs to revolve around the fact that fire doesn't give off heat. Yeah. I would say... So I'm just going to read this comment again just for context. Uh, so just follow common sense and break it if it'll make a more interesting story. Do not break the rules of your world unless it makes sense for those rules to be broken. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a good example. Like, if you um, have... Oh, 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 there is a good example. If you suddenly have superheroes existing you can't just put that genie back in the bottle right you can't just have a normal everyday world anymore so your world needs to dramatically revolve around heroes now existing which is the kind of the plot summary of um of invincible and uh, uh my hero academia all kinds of stuff where heroes spring into existence or shadowrun series in the shadowrun universe the shadowrun universe was exactly like our universe but then one day, magic came back to the world. And it had dire <laughs> repercussions. Oh no. <laughs> I sued court for not letting me sue my hair for falling off. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I let the Acer Throne impersonators stay down. They sometimes say something funny. Yep. Uh, Five dollar super chat from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Uh, exactly. Example: Fallout three, four, and seventy six are great writers. Bad writers are Fallout one, two, and New Vegas. <laughs> okay, listen here, motherfucker. <laughs> listen here, you bullshit. <laughs> Essentially, it's just stuff like that. Um, and when it came to Shadowrun, when Magic came back, how do you have? normal prisons anymore how do you have normal society anymore if if a dude can walk into a bank and snap his fingers and explode everybody's head in the bank how do you have security anymore you know what i mean how, how does any of this function and it does it didn't the world's the world collapsed and reformed itself into new nations with new rules and new laws and everything to deal with the fact that magic now existed again <laughs> so it just says, listen, the grass is pretending to be burnt. You just don't get it. <laughs> That's not the one I was starting to laugh at, but that is a good one. Look, look the trees are totally alive. All that brown, crusty grass, it's totally alive and fine. Mm. Um, My father's face scar gets more female attention than me. All I get is my landlord in a hazmat suit. <laughs> Yeah. That's a situation where it's like if the hazmat suit gets a fucking puncture, you're panicking. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. mold crawls inside the hole and okay. just fills up the entire suit. You're just you just dissolve from inside. Ah! No, <laughs> here's no, 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 it's even here's, better. Here's a reference that you might get. Hey, who turned out the lights? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know who you're referencing. I know what you're referencing. I've seen that no, episode. No. Even, you even have. better. I've seen that episode. Yeah, you talk about Doctor Who, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've even seen better. that episode. Even better. You go in. You go into his bedroom and you're looking around and documenting like everything you see. And you turn and look and you see the mold start shifting and moving. And suddenly <laughs> it it sprouts like a giant tentacle and comes towards you and turns into a face and starts mimicking your mouth movements. <laughs> You're just like, oh, God. <laughs> By the way, if you if you haven't seen the movie Abyss, you should watch it because I remember that scene. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, 
those scientists must have balls of steel because if I saw the water turn into a fucking tentacle and then mimic my face and, and start mouthing exactly what I'm saying at the same time, I don't think I could handle that. <laughs> uh, $2 from a British potato. Thank you. Uh, Fallout 2. Okay, I always get these signs confused. Greater Is that the than. greater than? Yep, it's huh? greater yes. than. It's greater greater than, than Fallout New Vegas. I would say Fallout New Vegas is the better written game, but I definitely prefer Fallout 2. I, I really fucking love Fallout 2. It's my favorite in the series. Well, they had the... they had the Didn't they have the other ending where, like, they were threatening the world with tidal waves and he had to convince them not to? I can't remember if that was the the actual ending or if there was the alternate ending. Yeah, it was it's fucking Abyss had such interesting concepts and everything like that, but my god, the the, the ending was definitely wild. The way you describe Acer makes him sound like a creature from uh, a Resident Evil 8 DLC. Well, see, that's the thing. If you were to send a team of scientists into his apartment, They'd come away having discovered 53 new kinds of mold. Yeah. I think you'd have to send a rescue team in after them, honestly, if you sent them in there. <laughs> it'd, be like, um, it'd be like that movie Annihilation, but all set in Acer Thorn's room. How would Arcan... Uh, I assume you mean Arcanum um, of Steamworks and Magic of Skira? I assume that's what you're talking about, Dinod. And if you are, I'd say Arcanum is the better of the games quite quite significantly except it's so fucking buggy and it's combat's pretty oof because it's it's combat has a lot of um where it, it's as fast as you can click or it's as fast as the enemy can you know the ai enemy can click you so guns which need to reload are outclassed by bows and arrows because bows and arrows fire as fast as you can click so you have your fucking legolos wannabe stand there and suddenly he's just like <laughs> like jesus christ that's a bit broke and the uh the am the enemy ai can do it to you as well so She Hulk is hot. I would give her an offer. She can't refuse. Suck the dick or sue the chick. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting way off track here. Let's get back to the video. Yeah. It's too much talking. Not enough action. Not enough covenant. Master Chief is evil? Master Chief removes his helmet? Master Chief reveals his cheeks? Then smashes them cheeks. Oh, I know what the ladies like. I, on the other hand... Okay, yeah, so all of that is a, is a huge, huge problem. Again, ignoring Halo... If you ignore Halo exists, how is Master Chief not executed for everything that he does in this show? He ignores orders multiple times. He tries to kill his uh, superior multiple times. Yeah, like, um, provably goes out of his way to try and kill his superiors. Gets a lot of other people killed through his uh, dereliction of duty and disobedience. And he's a super soldier. Master Chief should have been executed, like, after the second fucking episode, honestly. I mean, during the second episode, because it's the fir uh, first episode where he um, tries to release the fucking war criminal. No, oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. They were going to kill him, but uh, they just forget about all that as soon as he leaves. As soon as he escapes, they're just like, ah, well, you know what? We won't kill him. In fact, we'll let him get away with every crime imaginable. Yeah. From here on out. And I, it, it just comes out of nowhere for no reason. One minute they're like, okay, time to execute him. And then the next they're just like, okay, we're going to literally let him get away with every war crime imaginable. Yeah. And then and then why did we need to see his ass cheeks? Why? Yeah, that's like, not... What, what service does that give to the plot? And, you know, when... dude's not, not bad looking, but I don't know. He doesn't have... Uh, he doesn't have the butt 
that would be just like, ooh. Um, when a change is made with a series, you kind of has, have to ask if those changes for the better or worse of the series. So, how does seeing Master Chief's ass improve the series? Mm. How, how does this make the story better? Yeah, what, what service does this provide to the story? In fact, it gets so much dumber when it when he takes out the emotion chip and it's in his ass. Yeah, that's not where something that affects your brain should be. But yeah, it's like it's it's like technically it's in the the lower spine at the very base of the spine and everything. It's like, but it's your emotion chip. Why wouldn't that be in the back of your fucking skull? Emotion is stored in the ass. Yeah. Um, British potato. Explain how it makes the series better. I get to see some men cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I do get how seeing, you know, some titty or some ass can be a nice thing from time to time if it's done in the right setting. Mm. I just don't think Halo or fucking Bebop Flex is the right uh, setting for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Granted, we didn't or... actually see titty or act did we see titty and bebop flex i think we did yeah, yeah we the, did the signage Fuck. and everything right and that, that weird fucking brothel place that they like ran through and shit had like naked ladies in it yeah, yeah. And they turned off the disguiser and one was an old old granny with super saggy super saggy yeah. uh, Ugh, i forgot about that i'm not looking forward to that when i get to that part in the video jesus christ yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That that video's gonna take a long time to make. Absolutely. <laughs> Fucking Tarkov scavs. Divide my cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, nudity can work in fiction if it's used in a good way. Like or in Game of earned. Thrones. Or if it's earned. But like in Game of Thrones, for example, um first of all, it's just some people are more I guess, open to being nude in that world, at least in certain settings. Um, but, you know, Robert Baratheon with all his horrors, it, that says a lot about him. That yep. they're fucking coming and going from the fucking castle, the Red Keep. Oh, no, e even in the end in the first, in the first fucking episode, when Tyrion is in bed with a girl, and then yeah. his brother comes in and starts shooting the shit with him, and then brings in even more whores to jump on the bed with him. You get immediately the bond between these two have. <laughs> and exactly what Tyrion is. $5 super chat from Rage vs. Emil. Thank you very much. Thank you. I lost a bet with a friend and now need to do a full playthrough of Skyrim. At least I was able to talk to him into letting me mod it. Oh, well, there you go. Hmm. Uh, two Canadian Maple Leaves from Monsoon. Thank you very much. Looks at title. Gonna be one of those videos. Yep. That it is. Absolutely. $5 Super Chat from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. It makes sense to have the chips because that's where the writer's heads are most of the time. I think he meant cheeks? No, no, no. You have the emotion chips in the ass because that's where the writer's oh. heads were. Oh. <laughs> they were up their own yeah. ass the whole time. Yep. I adore the Halo series. Sure, at first it feels derived from better, more recent popular sci-fi series. And with a ninth episode season, the what? earlier episodes do begin to feel like filler. I mean, the whole show what? feels like filler. Yeah, what yeah. episode wasn't filler? Honestly. In your opinion, in your opinion, sir, what episode wasn't filler? If you were to cut out the most important scenes from the show, you'd probably have, like, an hour of content, maybe? Yeah, maybe a single episode. That's it. The stuff that actually is important to the story, the stuff that actually moves the plot along, the stuff that the audience actually needs to know, you have probably yeah. an hour, just a single episode worth of content. It's sad that Maple Leafs are worth more than USD. Did that really flip? 
Hold on. Uh, I think it might have now. No. It's still, according to Google, it's still hovering at the same uh, rate it usually is. One Canadian dollar is uh, 73 U.S. cents. Hmm. I guess we'll see. We'll let's see if that uh, holds up. So, Because inflation's getting worse and worse, the economy's going to go even further down. But, Setch, my Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah, the one that if you actually read it, you realize it would do nothing but increase inflation. Exactly. Like, God, I, oh, I God. fucking love bills that just say the exact opposite of what they are. Oh, I fucking love that shit. Mm. And you gotta love how it's always, always spun, too. This is not... I'm gonna use a completely fake example so we don't go too deep in politics. Right? Completely fake example. Uh, Representative X voted against or voted in favor of shooting children. And then it's like you read why he disagreed to the uh, the Children's Safety Act or whatever they would they would realistically call it in the real world. And it, in that act, it was that um, officers should taser all children and everything. And it was like, I oh, know I don't want them to taser children. Fuck that. Yeah, I. I fucking hate that they do that kind of shit. It's why I'm all for a convention of states to, like, ratify that shit. So you can only put, like, one um, proposal per bill. That would be awesome. That would be great. If you could only do one proposal per bill, that would solve a lot of issues right there. Absolutely. I don't know why it's not that way in the first place. Because oh, you imagine you have a bill, huh? <laughs> I'm like, I can tell you why. Well, no, let me. You just go ahead. Yeah, go ahead with your hypothetical. Like, what if there's a bill where it's like, okay, uh, we're going to be giving money to these community programs. We're going to be increasing funding for school. Um, we're going to be, you know, helping the homeless in some way that isn't destructive for them. We're legalizing rape, and we're going to uh, save the puppies. It's like, wait, wh what was that second last one? Yeah, exactly. Saving puppies. Yeah. No, no, oh, yeah. no. They no. do that are, are, a lot. Are, are, yeah, are they you do that all the saving time. puppies? You fucking monster. So so the real world thing that happened recently, and I'm going to go very briefly into it. A bunch of the Republican Party and Florida itself, Ron DeSantis, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, voted against the the Aid for Florida Act or whatever it was called. It was some like um, sending aid to Florida Act. Oh, God. I remember and they, were, they were like, how could he do that? We were, you know, we were going to help all those people and stuff like that. And then... At the bottom, they put in the fucking act, oh, also, we're going to send $15 billion to Ukraine. It was like, no, go fuck yourself. Yeah, it was insane. They were going to send, like, I think it was, like, $2 million to help Florida, and yep. then, like, $50 million to help the straight to Ukraine yep. for nothing in return. And it's like, why is that in the bill? Why yeah. is that in the bill? What does that have to do with helping Florida? Exactly. But again, that's why that just makes our point of we wish it was you could only do one proposal per bill. And the reason that it's not like that, to, as I said, I would, I'd say to Cree, is because, uh, well, greed and avarice. That's why. Yeah. If you, if you pass the, the um, you know, Saving Kittens Act... And your most of your act is all about actually saving the kittens. It's it's totally lives up to its title. But then at the very bottom it puts, oh, also um, we can divert funds from this group to this group uh, at will. And then you get it passed. Well, now your real goal was so you could divert funds from group A to group B. That's what your real goal was the whole time. You were just padding into something else so it would be forced past. Yeah. That's why they do it. That's why it's become even more prevalent as time went on, because people realized they could do it, and now that's become the standard to do over and over again. You know. Yeah. They they're looking to do a. They're trying to get uh, a convention of states. This one group is to agree to actually do it. Because if they get enough states to actually agree to it, they will they will do a convention of states. And two of the things that they want to do is. Uh, term limits for senators in Congress and yes. the uh, uh, one proposal per bill thing is the two things they really want to get the most. Yep. 
which yeah i completely agree we should do that I especially agree. when they explain like what a convention of states is and the fact that like you cannot make a um because they have a very specific set of rules of what can be added to the constitution and stuff like that in this sort of stuff like you cannot take rights away from the constitution you can only bolster it so if you add so if you uh suggest something to change uh the constitution and in, it empowers the federal government in any way or if it lessens the amount of rights that the citizens have it will automatically be thrown out on its merit oh that's cool and i'm like ooh, i like that they actually thought of that yeah well hopefully that's uh hopefully that does actually happen yeah um five pounds from thread knot thank you very much Thank you. Ignoring the bad stuff, Halo is a good minute of sci-fi on Paramount+. Plus. Why do you people hate it? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty accurate. Actually, I don't think there was even like a good minute in in the Halo TV series. There, was just, there no. just wasn't anything good about it. Sitting through it was a fucking... Yeah. Pain. It don't... was so bad. Oh, it was. I don't remember anything good from the Halo show. No, I, I was getting like... I'd say... Ill watching it. I'd say Rings of Power is far worse, but even Rings of Power managed to have, like, one or two good lines. And that feels more like they stumbled into it by accident rather than actually being designed to be good. Yeah. Halo had, like, one good line, and it was literally the fucking, the gun grease <laughs> thing. That was, yeah, it. That was like, the right. one I good line. About that. Yeah, the gun um, grease line was, like, the one good thing that came out of that show, and everything else was fucking awful. What was his name? It was Vatic, and he was talking to Kai, right? Yeah. Yeah. Vatic had the the best line in the show, hands down, and it was it was talking about how stupid Kai was. It's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, my God, this show just it had so many problems. It was just like every every couple of seconds we had to pause it and be like, "What the fuck is happening? Mm. Like, why?" Oh, every time it was just always something. Yep. Why does the rock sink while the blo- uh, while the boat floats? No, Cause, it's because the no. rock only knows down. It's like uh, what? no, not only knows down. The rock only looks down. It's like what? What the fuck? No, what no, does no that I'm, mean? I'm pretty positive he said only knows down. The rock is only aware of down. I am two hundred percent sure that he says looks down. Mm, I, I do I'm not sure. Know I don't thing. remember, so I can't. I can't even be the tiebreaker because I don't I, remember well, that. Because I think I'll be fine to get where I start scripting the video. Please fucking kill me. Yeah, hold on uh, a second. I'm gonna yeah. look this up just real quick. But yeah, that that line was fucking annoying. <laughs> it was so bad. Also, the fact that like, oh yeah, we don't know death. Like, no elves have ever died in our in our land before until the darkness came. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean to tell me? Not a single elf had ever had a fatal accident at all, ever. They didn't even have a word for death because nobody has ever died. And it's like, okay, one, I don't believe you. I'm pretty sure oh. at least one elf would have died in some sort of accident. And how the hell do you not have a word for death? Don't you eat animals in some degree? <laughs> all right, so he tells her that a stone sinks because it looks down into the dark water. A boat floats because it looks up to the light. Oh, God. God, it's just... It's, it's so shit. Yeah, that's awful. That's on par with the hope is like the sun speech. Oh, God. Oh. Or, oh, God, that moment where, where the orcs stop firing their bows and arrows at the people that are now standing in a field completely unprotected <laughs> because the sun came out and the people are in the sun, but the orcs aren't. Um, your arrows won't burn. First of all, orcs shouldn't fucking burn in the sun. But secondly, your arrows aren't going to burn in the sun regardless of whether you do or not. Just fucking shoot them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we, we've reached oh. the tree line. We can't chase them anymore. We won't even bother to shoot them. We're just going to give up. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Why? And, oh. and they chased them from the village, right? Yeah, they chased them all the way from the village. Yeah, keep in mind, field. keep in mind, keep... they're in the village in the dead of night, and then it cuts to them in the forest, and now the sun is suddenly rising. Yeah, 
But here's the thing, in the village, it was shown that during the day, they were moving around. Not as much, obviously, but there were some of them that had, like, sheets and stuff covering them from the sun. What happened to all that shit? (laughs) They just disappeared once they started chasing them. It's like, oh, no, we don't have any way of protecting ourselves from the sun. We did earlier, but we don't now. Flannel McManel says, that's how we win, not fighting what we hate. It's by saving what we love. (laughs) <laughs> oh, God. that line is so garbage it almost could have been written by the people on Rings of Power yeah <laughs> there, I, I think that's one of the things I find most fucking obnoxious about Rings of Power is the attempted tokenisms because Tolkien had a lot of great lines in his uh, books um, like the line from Gandalf to Frodo and I'm gonna butcher it horribly because I don't have it memorized but it's like the um Frodo says something like, I wish I didn't have to carry this burden. And Gandalf says, so do all who live in such times, but that's not for us to decide. What we must decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. And that's just like a really fucking great line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or the, um, oh man, I, yeah, it's been so long since I've seen the movies. I'm trying to remember exactly how it's stated. Uh, like, will you fight with an elf? And then, like, how about a friend? I can't exactly remember how yeah. it was, but I love that. I love that line. That was a great line. I can't believe I'm fighting side by side with an elf. What about side by side with a friend? I, I, I that can I can do. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, that was so good. It is. It's great. Um, especially in the books, I really, really fucking love the friendship between Gimli and Legolas. Yep. It was fantastic. Two dollars from Alex Hoffman. I think you missed my chat. And then crying emote, shocked faces, and a uh, sad face of a sort. Thank you. I'll get to your super chat we missed. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, Five dollars from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Well, as you guys are starving, I will be making money for once. So, ha ha, I win. (laughs) (laughs) No. Oh, there you go. When I'm starving, I'll make sure I think of you. Yep. In the corner. <laughs> oh shit! Sorry. Nice. <laughs> oh. God, that was a horrible one too. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> Your laugh sounded like the fucking the meme guy <laughs> for a second there. <sighs> For a second, I thought you were playing a clip of him, and I was like, what are you doing? No. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, no, it's it's actually Setch laughing. Yeah. All right, wait. You start to wonder, why isn't this more concise? Wouldn't this be better as a movie? What the hell is this budget? I wouldn't argue with some of your criticisms thrown at the series, but I stand on the opposite side of naysayers and purists. What's well, not? The Halo show doesn't need to be a pure copy of the games or uh, the books or anything like that. Yeah, They could have done their own timeline and they could have done it well. The problem is that they didn't. Yeah. It's, again, and like we said, you don't have to do an exact copy of it and you can still make it really fucking good. Our thing we use in chat and some of the people, other people in chat brought up was Elder Scrolls Online. It is not canon to Elder Scrolls, to Bethesda's Elder Scrolls. In fact, they go out of their way to ignore what's in ESO. ESO is still incredibly well written. So it's good content. It's people that it's content that people want. It's people consume it. When it comes to the Halo TV show, it not only is it not Halo, but it's just a terrible show in general it's so poorly written it contradicts itself all the time its characters are completely unlikable and the plots just don't make any fucking sense like there's nothing in this show to hang your hat on as like a foundation reality itself doesn't work in the halo tv show again as we brought up as our very first example when other people have guns they do nothing When the main characters pick up the guns, suddenly they get a massive power boost and do everything. Yeah. The same exact gun, by the way. I'm not, I'm not like saying like when they, when the main characters use their guns, oh, but it might be different ammo. No, no, no. 
when the main characters pick up the dropped guns of the other people, suddenly those dropped guns can do wondrous magical things. Yeah, it's one of the best examples for an objective flaw in a piece of media, where you, you can't the 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 subjectivisms uh, they can't defend against that because it's literally this gun did no damage to the enemies or to the aliens when a normal human was holding it. But the second Master Chief picked it up and started shredding them like fucking nothing. Yeah, There's it was no the, defending that. It was the, the LAAG, the light anti-aircraft gun on the back of the truck. It's a fucking minigun. And it was doing nothing. And there were two of them shooting at the elites. And they were literally doing nothing. And then Chief yeah. throws away his assault rifle and he picks up he picks up one of these mini guns and suddenly it mows down six elites in seconds. Yeah, it makes no sense. Like when the two are shooting at them, just from the regular humans that are shooting at them, they don't even attempt to dodge or anything. They just kind of walk yeah. around. They're like, oh, who doesn't do anything? And then the moment fucking Master Chief p- picks it up, just instant dead. Instantly. Three of them mowed down, gone instantly. Mm. And it's like, the fuck? $20 from Spencer Harmon. Thank you very much. Thank you. I watched your Vince James video, then was recommended his response to that video. It's more of the same. I had to comment. He responded with incoherent nonsense. Debate him for the content. Not to convince him, silly head. <laughs> no, um, it'd just be, it'd honestly uh, just be a uh, frustrating waste of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, for me, I'm not above debating a retard for content, but the problem is he can barely speak English. Like, yeah, that would be like the biggest problem with trying to debate him. Would literally just be trying to decipher what he's saying. Yeah, it wouldn't even be worth it. Because we we would constantly be falling into the trap of so what you're saying is we're not and again we're not trying to make a straw man of him. We are literally just trying to understand what the fuck he is saying. And again, for what people don't realize is so what you're saying is is usually the setup to argue against a straw man. That's the stereotypical most cited thing that is constructing a straw man is that statement because you're no yeah. longer taking what the person is saying you're you're trying to recontextualize reword it in a way that's beneficial to your argument but we would have to do that so we could just decipher what the fuck he actually was trying to say yeah we'd have to do that hard... constantly yeah exactly that, that, that's my issue it'd be hard to steal man any of his arguments because we'd have to like assume what he's even talking about yep <laughs> they not says yeah halo reach isn't such a bad game such go on you know you want to bite i already bit a little bit earlier like i said we're <laughs> we'll get more we'll get more into that uh later but trust me i will say i will say yeah. like i i don't want to debate him but man if i could ask him what did you ask your friend when it came to the water crisis? Because, God, I am curious. Yeah, I he am had to, <laughs> curious. He too. had to have just specifically said, like, what do you think the Wasteland would think of Project Purity? Because that's the only way it makes sense for the person, his, his friend. Response. Yeah, like, that's the only way it makes any sense. Because otherwise, it, it makes no sense at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... I'm not surprised he responded to you with utter nonsense and coherent nonsense, because that's all Vincent Martin can do. Everything yeah. he says is fucking incoherent nonsense. Yeah, it's all um, babble speak. Debate him for the content. See, even then, like Such said, it would just be frustrating because of the way Vincent Martin is and talks. Mm. Um, it, it goes back to that old. Uh, oh God, why am I forgetting the name? The um. Oh god, what's that uh, author's name who, uh... Whatever. The the quote is, don't argue with an idiot because they'll uh, bring you down to the, uh, their level and beat you with experience. Yeah. Oh, wasn't that Mark Twain? Yes, yeah, Mark Twain. Yeah, that was Mark Twain. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, just because there's a chance Vincent Martin is listening, this doesn't mean he's right. It means he is so fucking stupid that the 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 stupid things he says would get jumbled up and confused for one another 
and yeah. he'll try to claim a victory or try to make you look stupid. Because while you're trying to de um, decipher the stupidity he's saying, he's you know going on and on with his points, and it's going nowhere. Yep. Like in reality, going nowhere. But yeah. And then if you can't like respond in a timely manner because you're busy deciphering it, he'll just be like, you know, he could just claim, well, you're stupid and uh, and just try to declare victory and shit. And it's like, it's not even worth it. It's he's literally just going to speak in babble speak, say nothing that goes nowhere and then declare victory because we could barely understand half of what he was saying. Yep. Uh, Five dollars more from Spencer Harmon. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm behind on the stream. A deer farm, I want to say, would be called a hunting preserve. Uh, they save some and shoot some. I oh. called a preserve as well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have heard of hunting preserves. And a 12-month 12, uh, 12 membership message from Peace was never an option. Thank you. I thought we were done with this dumpster fire of a show. Also, one whole year of supporting y'all with membership. Damn. Well, thank you. It's very much appreciated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dry complimentary. Apparently, he already so dry complimentary says, or he will make a diss track on you. Apparently, he oh, already right. did. Yeah, he did. That was sent oh, to me the other day, and as soon as I realized what it was, I was like, no, I I can't handle those <laughs> level of cringe. Yeah, I can't. I usually I would preview that stuff and then tell you like how bad it is. I I can't even do that. I can't even push play on it because it looks so fucking cringe. I can't do it. Yeah. If someone that retarded and unable to speak is trying to sing, then... <laughs> yeah, okay, no, no, I'd blow my brains out just trying to think about it, so I I'm not even going to preview it. <laughs> Nothing can't go nowhere. It's already there. <laughs> There's both infidels spitting back. He did a shitty parody of Creep by Radiohead. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. I don't want this great song fucking ruined by his shit parody. Mm. Yeah. I stand by this flawed, emotionally driven, action-packed, suspenseful science fiction war epic. Okay, okay, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we have a lot to unpack there. What the fuck? Flawed. Why did we need all that written out on screen? And in different, in different fonts and sizes and everything and colors. Yeah. But flawed. Calling the Halo show flawed is the understatement of the century, my dude. It is. Yeah. It is a disaster. Calling, calling a piece of charcoal that used to be a piece of meat slightly burnt is an understatement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I when I previewed this, the two words that really stuck out to me in this that really pissed <laughs> me off was one? was intense and emotional. The the emotional one. The this flawed emotional. So okay. it's so shit because this show entirely tries to rely on like your emotional feelings and stuff like a soap opera, but it does it so fucking awfully. It's yes. so terrible the way it tries to do it. And it's very fitting that this guy would bring up like the emotional aspect because this dude later on in the video is totally a fucking like music makes the feel sort of thing where oh. he's going to try and play music to make you feel a certain way. So it's oh, like, man. Oh, I can see why that, but, but then the other intense, dude, this show is anything but intense. It is a fucking is snore fest. Fuck. It is so fucking dull and boring. Like, I am all for a TV show being mostly talking if it's well written. But this show, the dialogue is so shit and yeah. there's nothing else going on. I just, I pray for an action scene because there's just nothing else to latch onto. It's so bad. It's, it's not and, like the... Go, go, ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I, I just, well, I was going to say, you know, I'm usually not the type of person who's like, oh, I just want to see action. That's all I care about. Like, I, I, I dislike people that are like that. It's like, I actually really like the slow talking moments in TV shows. I think that's what really makes something great is mm -hmm. those scenes, the really slow uh, character focused stuff. But in this show, do you get none of that? So it's, it's literally like the only thing that keeps you from, from wanting to blow your brains out is the occasional like action scene where you can at least be mildly entertained that something's getting blown up. Yep. Oh. I'd say as a comparison. And by the way, that's comparison, Vincent, not comparison. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But as for comparison, you have the Halo TV series versus The Godfather. And a lot of people don't remember a lot of the slower stuff from The Godfather. But the slow stuff is what makes it. The slow speeches, the, the talking, the watching, the way the characters move, their eyes and everything like that. That's what builds up to the intense, frantic like executions and kills and everything that happen. You understand why it's happening. You understand who's pulling the trigger and who's pulling the, the strings behind the scenes because of all those those slow moments. And they, they build up that tension because you know what's coming. Like the whole thing when it came with um, talking about uh, when Luca Brazzi gets killed and then suddenly it goes to The Godfather. It goes to Vito Corleone. And he's leaving Genco Olive Oil. And he talks to his son and he says, Hey, tell him to go bring the car around. Oh, he's out sick, Pop. He goes, He's what? He goes, Oh, don't worry, I got it. And then you start realizing, again, that little thing right there, even though it's not part of the action scene, that, that little dialogue right there was important. It's a surprise that the normal bodyguard is out sick. Turns out because the fucker was in on it. Polly was in on the shit. He gets his comeuppance later, too. But it's that the slow bits in between that make those scenes more memorable because you start going through and and really paying attention to what is happening in those slow scenes. And those slow scenes give the context for why the action is happening. Yeah. I, I can agree with what Dreadnought says. Then it says the Godfather doesn't have a lot of action scenes in it, and those are brutal, messy, and over quickly. The real meat and bones is the buildup. This ain't your Terminator. Yeah, there you go. But then you compare it with Halo's slow scenes, where... Um, Mr. Cheeks is digging holes in his childhood backyard. Yeah. Or going through another vision quest to show him something meaningless so he can get angry at Halsey again for really stupid reasons that don't matter. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you're you're in a fucking genocide war. You do you stole me from my parents. Okay? Shit thing to do. You're in a genocide war now, motherfucker. Who cares? God, I fucking hate that the Covenant is such a small aspect of this show. Like, yeah. how the fuck do you do that? How do you make the genocide war against your entire fucking species, the fucking afterthought to the show, the literally the stuff that's on the back burner that you hardly ever see. Yeah. That's the shit that gets pushed back. Like really? It'd be like doing a Terminator movie where the Terminator only shows up for five minutes. Yep. Yeah. Um, Two dollars from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. It's all about the feels. Yeah. That's what, yep. that's what a lot of these things feel like. But and then, and then an epic? No, I would I would strongly no. fight against the term epic on this. It, it was so, so bad. This epic felt is like, very overused. This felt yeah. like a student film project, and even then I, I'd be like asking them, what the fuck? Because there yeah. are so many things, there's so many scenes. Rubber, rubber man chief getting thrown around like scenes like breaking continuity to each other constantly just these stupid set designs all over the place that just make no fucking sense the the typical cliche sci-fi future room where you have this massive wide open room and only a single table in it just because not even a chair yeah um yeah and everything also, feels so small too like you have yeah. an entire universe to work with and it feels like we're in the same three locations all throughout the entire show. Yep. Well, that's because we are. Yep. We pretty well yep. are, yeah. So but we've God. got we've got the stupid asteroid colony. Mm. We've got uh Reach City. The very creatively named oh. Reach City on the planet Reach in the solar system Reach of uh the galaxy yeah. Reach. Instead of New Alexandria or anything. Nope. Yeah. It's oh Reach God. City. So stupid. Um, and then the fucking awful desert planet that we keep coming back to that I really wish we go away. Well, see, see, there's the thing, Pagan. There's two desert planets. There's uh, Quan's dumb fucking planet Magical. with the whole resistance, Madrigal. 
And then there's the one where they're pulling the artifact from with uh, Mr. Chump. Yeah. Which was a colony that collapsed because of a plague? Which I don't... Okay, so... Because the show writers are that dumb, how is there a plague on uh, Mr. Chump's homeworld? Because plagues got started because they were animal diseases that transferred to humans. And the way that that happened was because humans and animals were living in incredible squalor and close proximity to each other in these early cities. Like, they were, they were shitting in the Thames and dumping their animal feces and everything in the Thames, and they were constantly walking through the streets with herd animals everywhere. So, so it wasn't a surprise that a, a bug that would make a cow slightly sick jump to a human, and a human ain't a cow. Uh-oh. So are yeah. you saying the next plague is going to originate from Ace Return's house? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I was going to... Ah, God, when they brought up the plague thing, I was certain that that's how they were going to bring in the flood and be like, oh, yeah, this is how we're going to introduce the flood. And but Yeah, yeah we were it. super scared of that because yeah. the writers at that point had already shown how fucking inept they were. Yeah. And then they didn't, and then they don't really go into it any more than, like, an offhand mention that the plague killed everyone off here and it's like and then they leave it at that and it's like okay but that doesn't make sense how did this entire planet get a plague yeah that wiped out everybody how yeah it doesn't make any sense at all um <laughs> i want to read this imperator x if the galaxy is in a circular shape and it's called reach does that mean it's a reach around galaxy <laughs> and then two dollars from alex hoffman thank you very much it was koof 2000 oh. i'm specifically choosing that because of youtube's nonsense yeah god you know it wouldn't surprise me if they <laughs> fucking tried to say that like yeah oh it never went away <laughs> Oh my god, I was going to say something, but it's actually, it might be a little too political, so yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say it. There's a lot of things but, I wanted to say. But there's a lot of things I was going to fucking say there where it's like, oh, I could totally see the show doing and saying this exact thing because of this reason. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, what other, what other bullshit words did he have in there? I was caught completely off guard when teams were... No, uh, no, no, wait, I, I went backwards. How did it go forward? Okay, emotional. Driven, action packed, suspenseful, pa science. Hold on. Suspenseful. Action packed? No. Action packed. It, it is the opposite of action packed. It, there is nowhere near enough. He literally just said that one of the big complaints is that there isn't enough action and that there's too much talking. How can it be yeah. action packed if that's one of the biggest complaints? You Absolutely. fucking idiot. And suspenseful? Yes. Yeah, fucking suspense? where? What? Yeah, where are you getting suspense from? Oh my god. These characters have so much fucking plot armor, it's ludicrous. There's nothing suspenseful about it. Did you think that any of the Spartans were gonna die at the end? Really? I was hoping they all would. Oh, I was praying they would. But n no, we knew the fucking plot armor in these guys is ludicrous. When you saw Kai getting plastered, shields down, no shielding whatsoever, just getting plastered with plasma, and then having an elite just just forget he had guns and a sword walk up and start bitch slapping the fuck out of her and beating her to death did you think she was gonna die or at risk of dying ever no hell no yeah god it was so terrible it, it was super super fucking bad oh and that's not to mention the way it looks the show just looks ugly yeah i don't like the design the overall aesthetic of the show is just Especially the Sang Holly. The Sang Holly look awful. Yeah, they yeah. look really bad. Granted, well, hey, man, the prophets look terrible too, but the Sang Holly look especially awful. Yeah. What if he meant suspense as in the other definition of suspense? You know, like if you suspense something is happening. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find a way to work that joke in, but I was I couldn't think of anything, and you just did it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that we both had a similar idea. <laughs> Uh oh, uh, keep the masses entertained. Jangle some keys. I gotta go to the bathroom. My stomach just told me. Okay. Uh -oh.
uh, uh, jangle some keys. Um, Pegan, talk about guns. Uh, okay, well, uh, uh, what, the, what, what's uh, what's your favorite um sniper rifle? Ooh, probably. Oh well, it depends on what you mean by sniper. Do you mean a marksman rifle or an actual dedicated sniper rifle? Whichever one has the cooler answer. Uh, probably gonna have to go with the, um, oh god, what what's it called again? Uh, the L96. Yeah, yeah, someone said in chat, the L96. Yeah, I'd probably say the, the L96, which you, you've already heard the story. It's the one where, uh, three guys in a shed made it and then convinced oh. the military that they were a full-fledged, uh, yeah. gunsmith shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but just... it is... It is very good. It is a very, very good sniper rifle. Yeah, I just uh, looked it up on Google. That is a really good looking gun. Yeah, it's the um, it's the one that everyone like uses. Uh, the op. You, you ever heard that the AWP? Yeah. And like CS:GO and stuff. Yeah, that's what that's based on. Oh. Yeah. Five dollars from Alex Hoff. Sorry, Alex Hoffman. Thank you. You guys got any big plans for your channel? Like, any big projects or ideas? Well, I know Pagan's current big project for his channel is just asking for more subscribers without making content. Um, I don't know <laughs> what Setch has planned for his streams, but I am working on a secret video that you guys will uh, know what it is once it's released. I hope to have that done in a couple weeks, if uh, if all goes well. If I can manage to not be a lazy cunt yeah. um and after that i'm gonna be working on a rings of power video which oh fucking boy let, let's see how that goes that's gonna be a long <laughs> one yeah like just by here's how bad fucking rings of power is efap couldn't tackle the entire show in one stream like they've done with other shows in the past they had to do it like one or two episodes at a time and they've done numerous streams on it that's how fucking abysmal it is. Oh, wow. I keep having ideas for my channel, and then I never go for it. I never go through with them. Like, I've thought about doing, like, uh, a MLP series, like the entire series uh, retrospective and review sort of thing. I've thought about doing that. I uh, never got around to it. Um... I've thought about doing Elden Ring invasion streams. Never got around to it. <laughs> I'm I might still do the I might still do the Elden Ring invasion streams. I might do that, especially now that the new patch has come out and has changed the PvP significantly. I might do it soon, but we'll see. I it's very I, I don't know. I I've just been I've been having a lot of trouble actually getting any of my ideas like actually completed so eh. i mean i'd say go ahead with the um fucking uh, mlp video yeah i just don't know where to start and i'm terrible start at, at the beginning i know i'm just i'm terrible at scripting and it's it's such a pain oh yeah it is a pain <laughs> they can go for Equestria at War. I no, exist. we're not. I'm not going to do that. Uh, did you guys already get the super chat? Yeah, we were just talking about that. Uh, the the plans for the channel. Uh, well, channels. What are you doing with yours, Stetch? I am doing. Uh, so I've got the Halo Reach video uh we're working on but i kind of like doing the halo reach video on stream with the chat so we're going through halo reach and explaining all the problems with it and everything and tell people like you know keep this in mind what this character said because it's completely fucked even more so and keep in mind what that halo reach still assumes that halo 1 2 3 and odst are canon and it's completely even more fucked from that regard for things coming up in the future and everything so um so we've got that right now i'm going through spooktober on stream so we're just having a lot of fun with that playing eternal darkness tomorrow so that'll be a blast i love eternal darkness 
So that'll be fun. Um, and I started. Oh boy. I started Dead Space Two, which is the first time I ever played. I've ever played that. That's been fun. I I might change what the bounty game is because nobody nobody seems to care about the, the hunt down the Freeman. So I think I'll change the bounty game because nobody gives a shit. Which sucks because y'all voted for it. Damn it. <laughs> but nobody nobody cares. And I know that sounds like an I... Acer Thorn thing, but it's like, but if the bounty is not getting met, it's never going to be played. I, it's never going to be played at all, ever. So, you know, I, I think I might change the bounty game, honestly. I think for bad bounty games, it's going to have to be something more fresh and new. If you had done the Hunt Down the Freeman video, or sorry, uh, Bounty when the game first came out, you probably would have gotten a lot more takers. Yeah, probably. Yeah. We voted for the memes, Satch. I know, I know. <laughs> you voted for the meme, but we don't get the memes if we don't get the game. <laughs> I want to get this comment because he is asking me directly. Uh, hey, short question. In the new MLP series, since they now have a male main character, is he the overwhelming target of slapstick and is generally a clueless klutz? Okay, so I haven't watched a whole lot of the G5 stuff because it's so painful. Um, I watched the movie and I watched a few episodes of um, that really awful looking CalArt style cartoon they made of it. Uh, and I saw like a little bit of that. Um... Oh, they did a Teen Titans go to it? Yeah, they did. It looks awful. And then they did another oh. CG special. I think I, I don't remember. I, I haven't been keeping too close track on it because it's so bad. But yes, the male character is typically the slapstick, um, always the butt of the joke um, character where all the bad stuff always seems to happen to him or he's always getting like left behind because of some dumb bullshit where he has to deal with like a swarm of animals or something. So the other ones just run off ahead and go do something else without him. And it's just it, it's constant. It's it's. Oh, it's so annoying because everyone's been asking for, you know, a male main character that isn't just the sidekick to one of these shows. And then they finally do it and then they make him a complete fucking clueless idiot who is constantly the butt of the joke. Ugh, it's it's annoying. It doesn't help that they also made him a police officer and they treat him like this. It's like, OK, so again, it's starting to feel like they're pushing an agenda here. Has he um, shot any minorities? No, but he is kind... Well, he's not... I wouldn't call him dumb. He's not really treated as if he's stupid, just always the butt of the joke. Which sucks, but whatever. But, I mean, it doesn't matter anyway, because the rest of the show is also bad, and all the other characters are bad, too, and it looks like shit, and it's written terribly, so it doesn't matter. So, meh. Yeah, oh, don't watch that... G5. Just don't watch it at all. Is that the one you showed the image to me a while back where they all look like super fucked? And, and there's like one of them looked like a deformed Chad face. Yes. Yeah, that's that's oh. exactly the one that I'm think that you're thinking of. Yeah. It looks so fucking bad. Yeah, they literally Teen Titan goat it, but even worse. Um, Two dollars from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Uh, do you guys split the chat money? Yes, for, for the stags, we do. For everything else, yeah. no. <laughs> genocide is canon in the MLP universe because of G5. I think genocide was canon in G4, too. I think there was, like, an entire race that got genocided in G4 as well, so... Based. Yeah, it is pretty yeah. based. <laughs> and then Verse says, what do you mean, bounty? Do people give you money to watch you play a game you don't like? Yes. Because they like they like seeing me get incredibly fucking salty. Like that's why they paid for the bounty on Saints Row 2022. That's the only reason I played Saints Row 2022 was because of the bounty. Because it also forced me to install Epic Games and fuck Epic Games. Yeah, fuck Epic Games. Yep. Uh, Threadnought keeps wanting me to do Vagrant Story. Well, if if everybody votes for it, sure. <laughs> no. You will not get me to change off this thing, Holly. You never will. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Scoopy says, "Such tut tut, lizard man." It is pronounced saying Healy. Don't make me get me mallet. You can go get your mallet. I ain't changing. <laughs> yeah, I, saying Holly just sounds better than saying Healy. Yeah. 
Because because saying Healy makes me think of those stupid shoes with the wheels in them. <laughs> the wheelies. <laughs> well, they were called Healies. Really? They called them Healies? I thought they were. I thought they were yeah, called what... Wheelies. No, they're called no? Healies. Hmm, okay. Yeah, that is yeah. dumb. Speaking of G4, G4 got frostbitten. Yep. <laughs> it's it's yeah. fucking uh, dead. It's full it, dead now. Yeah. It is unfortunate for like all the normal people who work there like the people running the cameras and doing the lighting and all that other shit yep that these people all lost their jobs because the higher ups decided to put front and center this dumb fucking cunt who said if two. you don't like us you should well two dumb cunts point is they they supported her they backed her when she said you know fuck off don't watch if you don't like well the audience fucked off and they didn't watch. And now the fucking revival of G4 is dead in less than a year. Good fucking job. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and you gotta love that they pulled the fucking, even though they were told, like, if you don't like it, don't watch it. And then they immediately went with, like, the fucking, well, oh, it's only getting low ratings because people are racist and sexist. Yeah, they doubled and it's down, like, no. tripled down, quadrupled down. Yeah, they tripled down. It's like, it, why does this no, keep happening, fucker? though? Because you, you would think that the message would be received the first couple times this happened. Oh, you don't like, uh, we're shoving fucking messaging or being rude to the audience and our stuff. If you don't like it, don't watch it. And it's like, okay, how many things has this happened with? And it's still fucking happening. This goes back to at least, uh, Ghostbusters 2016, the fucking all girl, um, Ghostbusters where, Again, they were rude to fans, and it turned out to be shit, and it flopped. Yeah. And it, it just keeps happening, it keeps happening. Well, when you're and... an NPC, you're only programmed for certain responses. So, they they are programmed to learn from no, their I, mistakes I, or I, think outside the box. I know, but, like, NPC jokes aside, you, you would think at some point, someone somewhere down the line would be like, Hmm, you know what? Maybe calling the fans racist and sexist is a bad idea. Well, people do that all the time, but that's our side that does that. Says that's a bad idea to do that. No, I know. I'm talking about the people involved with that shit. Well, the reason why they don't is they're literally in a cult. Yeah. And to think that way is considered wrong think, and you can get canceled for it. So yeah. they're far more worried about their own yeah, but, side coming after but... them than they are about potential failures of their products yeah again you aren't dealing with rational well-adjusted minds anymore you're dealing with people that have been completely destroyed yeah i yeah. know but this many of them for this long oh well, like, it's well, not but it's not this many too and huh but it's not this many that's that's why they keep failing there are a they are a minority a very small minority that's why small... all their stuff keeps failing a small minority that is in control of a lot of the entertainment media right now. Yeah, and the way that they got that control was they went into the HR departments. They This has been a long time coming. They no, stuck I... their way in, they took over the HR departments, and then they started bringing in only people that agreed with them. Well, we now know because that like they've been doing studies and stuff now, and they're like trying to source all this stuff. And they're finding out now that a lot of it is coming from uh schooling a lot of it is from the schooling where they're being told this stuff in like grade school and they believe it and they're they become so indoctrinated that they just can't believe anything else it's where you get the it's where that death cult stuff is coming from where um oh you know, yeah like the, the idiots the activists in england right now yeah the environmentalists who are like destroying paintings and uh, setting, setting themselves, themselves on, on fire yeah all that stuff, it's because they were taught this shit in grade school, and it just sunk into them this, like, they were indoctrinated, and now they think that this is how the world is. They think, oh, the world's literally gonna end in, like, two years if we don't do something about climate change right now, and all this shit because of schooling. I wish those people who had thrown the soup on the painting had set themselves on fire before they had gone into the museum and thrown the soup on the painting, because they might not have made it in. Yeah. Oh, I wish I wish when they would the, set themselves on fire, they do the whole body monk thing and actually like, you know, kill themselves. 
but no, it's literally just they burn a little bit of their arm on like a tennis court in yeah. front of everybody um, to yeah. It, it's the it's the cutting across your wrist thing, instead of you know it's the show of. Remember, like, it's down the road and not across the street. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. People are it's, asking. It's Go ahead. Just, it, it, there's good thing from it. One, they got arrested, so hopefully they'll be charged. And two, the painting can be saved. Thank God. So there, yeah. there are restorations. There are things that can be done that will save that painting. So it will. Oh, be did back. you see that they tried to? Uh, they tried to get the Mona Lisa, but it was behind glass, so they didn't. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, that if they pretended to be um, paralyzed, so they were in a wheelchair, and once they got close, they ran. They jumped out of the wheelchair and tried to break the glass and throw. I think it was like white paint or something on it, and. Uh, yeah, fortunately the glass didn't break, so it just got on the glass and it was wiped off within minutes. Which also people like again, that need to be removed from society. Again, yeah. that wouldn't have done anything either. Too. That's the that's the best part about proper uh, preservation because the Mona Lisa has been preserved, so it's going to have isolation layers and everything like that built on it, and it will have reversible pigments and everything on it, intentionally so. Because that's part of preserving art. That's part of how you go about it. I highly recommend a channel called Bomb Gardener Restorations if you want to see how art preservation is actually done. He goes into intricate detail how to preserve artwork. And that's his business. That's what. That's literally what he gets paid to do. That's what his, his job is. And fascinating channel. We got off on another massive tangent. I don't even know how we got here from uh, the words on screen. He said action-packed or something now now we're talking about fucking activists throwing soup on a painting it was the it was the <laughs> super chats it was the super chats that started this because while i was gone i asked did you get the super chats and everything then we started talking right, about g4 you left. yeah then we started talking about yeah. g4 with frost and everything and why this happened and then you're like why does this why do people keep doing this even though the same thing happens over and over again then we started talking about the indoctrination that happens in schools and how these people have infiltrated the businesses and everything and that's why this keeps happening and then to go on to the artwork with the activists trying to set themselves on fire and throw shit at things. All right. $2 from Alex Hoffman. Thank you. What is G4? G4, I believe, was a network um, mm -hmm. that hosted, like, nerd content, like gaming stuff. Um, yep. Uh, I believe, like, there there was movie shows on there, too, like, shows that talked about movies. Yeah. Um, they, um... Th they had uh, Electronic Playground, uh, Extended Play, which became X-Play later. Um, they had uh, uh, stuff like Icons, which would go into the video game industry and talk about Icons. They do like fully dedicated documentary-style episodes on different video game companies or people within the video games industry. Like that, That's kind of what, what G4 was. And then it turned into the Cops and Cheaters rerun channel. <laughs> oh, yeah. The fucking... The, the amount of times they replayed shit like Lost and uh, they also became like the American Ninja Warrior network for a while and it's like oh my god <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, no, it, it went downhill it kind of basically disappeared for a while yeah. and then they tried to revive it and they they woke up they just it was so woke that it failed before it ever got off the ground yeah uh, find out the super chat from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. What is your guy's least favorite conservative person? I don't really pay that much attention to politics, so I couldn't really tell you what my favorite or least favorite would be. Oh, uh, man, probably... Mine is just going to be Ted Cruz, pretty handily. Yeah, I'm, I would probably say the uh, the turtle. <laughs> I fucking hate him. You know what? That's actually a pretty good choice. Then you know what? I, I think yeah. I could agree with that. I'll switch. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he's my least favorite conservative because he's not even really a conservative. He's a fucking Democrat dis disguised as a conservative. Yeah. But oh, I fucking hate him. He's such a piece of shit. I'm trying to remember his uh, Michael. Uh, shit, what's his actual name? I've always just called him the Turtles. So I've already forgotten his fucking name. Oh uh, my god, I just saw what was in our fucking chat, Pagan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, it, I, it's not wrong. That's it, literally it isn't what most wrong. 
And it is. It's what most modern shows fucking advocate for today. Oh, uh, chat. Yeah. While, while Pagan's thinking that, you need to see. Shit, it's huge. Okay, there we go. Let's that shrink it down. Here you go, chat. This is what I just got laid. <laughs> oh, oh, god. This is what happens when it's equity at all costs. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Um, why can't I remember this fucker's name? <laughs> We actually uh, had a similar thing at work. Uh, it's gone now, so I don't remember the exact, like, what it looked like, but it, it was for their whole coof thing. And it was one person standing, and they looked scared of the other person. And, and the other person happened to be black? I can't remember if he was black or not. I think he might have been. Oh, it's so fucking unfortunate. Oh, well, there you go, chat. And there and there was a poorly edited mask over it because they had two versions, one without the mask and one with it. Mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell. That's it. That's who it is. Yeah. Now I remember Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Mm. He looks like a fucking turtle. Hold yeah. on. In fact. <laughs> in fact. Hold on. Open. Uh, Lunar Phoenix says, "What the fuck? Segregation is back." Unironically, yes. Yes. They, they advocate uh, for they, it so they, hard. Their advocacy for it is in this form, though. So that their culture and heritage doesn't get destroyed, we must segregate people. <laughs> yeah. It's it's crazy, because there was that great video where they said, like, you know, where they compared, like, the far right to the far left, and they're basically the same with only minor differences. Like, yeah. they both support segregation, but for different reasons. Yeah. And shit like that, and it, it's so fucked. It's so fucked. But tell me that, tell me this fucker doesn't look like a turtle. He does, you know. You know what you need you, you to do. You kind of need to do you... sure that's farther away from his face. No, you don't. So you can see no, no, the no, no, neck no. flaps. What you need is to get that picture of the guy, the spy movie, where he's disguised as the <laughs> turtle guy, right next Hold to on. him. Okay, let me get that. I can get that. Hold on, I can probably find a really good meme. <laughs> Oh my god, here's a good one. Oh my god, here's a couple of good ones. <laughs> he looks like that with hair in older. Yeah. Oh my god, hold on. Okay, so here's here's this. And then here's right, there you this. Go, chat. There's that. And then here's the this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> chat we're gonna go through a walk in the park here for a second Hold we were about to get back to the video and here's how fucking off track we are now i fucking hate this dude though he's such a piece of shit all right chat so there's mitch mcconnell on the uh, on the left, and here's Mitch McConnell on the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God! Please tell me you showed the one. Oh, I'm that going I, to be. I'm going one. to be. Old. Okay. Uh, I was showing. I was showing the spy show, one next to her. Show the show the other one first. That's uh, just above the last one. I. All right, chat, chat. So I gotta take it down for a second so we don't spoil it. <laughs> God, I could just imagine him making the fucking noise that that one turtle makes in that video where it's humping the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> And the reason, chat, I take it off screen is because I have to resize it because some of these go wildly different sizes.
Yeah. There you go, chat. There's Mitch McConnell looking at Mitch McConnell. Fucking <laughs> 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 last one. Oh, fuck. Me. Yeah, the last one's great. Oh, the last one. The last one is so fucking good. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. Get the last one, get the No, not open link, copy. Alright. Breathe. Just breathe through. And here you go, Chad. Here's the last one. <laughs> it's so good. It's so fucking good. <laughs> there he is in his natural habitat. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 Reject shit. monkey, become turtle. Good God! The, yeah, it's cursed, but so fucking good. <laughs> there are no accidents. <laughs> fucking Uguay looking, looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lizard people, I knew it. <laughs> what type of snake is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, you see, Pagan, he's the kind of snake that has a shell and glasses <laughs> and feet. Oh, God, okay. Well, as we all know, uh, most lizards are just snakes with feet. Anyway. Um. Right, we we missed a bunch of super chats we did because indeed. of this. Oh god! Uh, two pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. Halo reach in a fridge. Oh god, I I'm beginning to hate the word fridge because of Fallout Four. Yeah. Uh, four dollars from Scoopmeister. Sorry, five dollars from Scoopmeister. Thank you. Also, it's because they admit they were wrong. And remember, being right is more important than learning from your mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, that gets to the whole thing we've talked about before, was a big problem with education is that teaching people that being wrong means you're bad, or being wrong is some sin. It's like, no, being wrong means you got more to learn. Being wrong is okay. It's if you learn from being wrong. It's fine. Admit to your mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. That's what makes you better. That's what makes you improve at things, when you learn from your mistakes. But we got into this weird mindset where being wrong is equated to being evil. Or being wrong is equated to you're a bad person. It's so fucked. And $2 super chat from Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Halo was good. The games? I agree. Halo 1, 2, and 3 and ODST? I agree. They're pretty good. And they hold up really well, honestly. They hold up shockingly well. Um, not so much the anniversary edition of Halo 1 Combat Evolved. It's pretty, pretty dog shit. <laughs> Play the original instead. But the anniversary version of Halo 2 is stunning. Absolutely stunning. There's some art direction changes that are kind of, you know, eh, I can see why people are annoyed at them. But overall, you can definitely put there was, there was a lot of care and attention put into it. Whereas the Halo 1, the Halo's Combat Evolved anniversary was just kind of phoned in it was very cheaply done and it actually ruins a lot of the atmosphere really badly uh five dollar super chat from alex hoffman thank you very much thank you this is about halo i blame pagan i spend too much money on you guy but as long as my top is involved it's fine <laughs> uh all right um <laughs> Yeah, this was about Halo at some point, and then we started reading Super Chats, and they uh, got us off track. 
Oh, like this, com- like this comment here. Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, Mitch McConnell. <laughs> <laughs> Two Canadian maple leaves from Zeta Ridge 7. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cree's laughter cures cancer. Oh, if only. Oh. That'd be amazing. Thank you. I wish. Uh, and then you've got a membership for 12 months from Caleb Robinson. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Who, hoot, motherfuckers. Woke up to this at 4.30 a.m. and listening while I get ready. Pagan Best Pony. Also, have you seen the MAS um, the MAS by Dawn somewhere? Yes. Yes, I have. The Mentally Advanced, some, uh, the Menti- ah, Mentally Advanced series by Dawn somewhere. Yes, I have seen them. They, they're I've... kind of what got me into the whole fandom in the first place because they were so good. <laughs> I fucking love them. Yep. Oh, God. Oh man! All right, well, I gotta go for a bit. I'll be I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we could start. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the video. Yeah. Okay. And war. I was caught completely off guard, being turned into a bloody mush with alien weapons in the first episode. You were caught completely off guard, dude. We were cheering. We were like, the we stupid people are happen. dying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, the only problem with that sketch is that the stupid people dying wasn't a constant thing, or else everyone would have been dead by the end of yeah. the first episode. We were yeah. just happy there because these people were set up as kind of loser hippie types, like completely, like they they were the stereotypical like, whoa man, oh your drugs, I wear a lot of drugs, woo yeah. Drugs are cool. So, Go hug trees in hell, hippie. Yeah, and then they got <laughs> blasted, and we were cheering like, "Yay!" <laughs> yeah, it was it was great fucking seeing them just die off one by one. Oh, it was so nice. Yep. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long. God, I see <sighs> what you mean though by the face. Oh God, I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, don't don't. Don't say it out loud. Yeah, we're not gonna say it out loud, but you, <laughs> him, there, there him saying you recognize they told me, it. And yeah, I, I see it. I see it. <laughs> Into a bloody mush with alien weapons in the first alien. episode. I was angry as hell learning the origins of how Master Chief was turned into a Spartan by the manipulating Dr. Halsey. Um, I don't know how you could get that invested in the show, though. Yeah, how do you? Again, you shouldn't also, care, like, yeah, the shitty thing that she did, but there's a genocide war going on, my dude. Priorities. Also, did you, really, did you really buy one of those, like, cheap plastic popcorn buckets from the dollar store that barely holds any popcorn? Because that is not a lot of popcorn. Um, Does he have a Black Widow re- one? <laughs> oh, I hope real- not. I hope <clears throat> not. So, uh, real talk, my, uh, my uncle, the guy who, uh, is a physical therapist and he owns his own practice, he actually owns a whole chain of practices now, um, he actually has an old vintage popcorn machine, one of the ones that you would see the old vendors go around the city streets with. Oh, shit, nice. Yeah, and he, it actually has those little popcorn bags that he uses. Well, see, that's different, because that's like a, a popcorn vendor thing, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying. They're, they're, I'm not doing this thing. I'm just saying. This is just a funny coincidence that yeah. he has that. Well, there there was a chain of um, video stores up uh, up here in Canada called Jumbo Video, where um, I, I think they had rentals, but they mostly, you know, obviously had movies and stuff for sale. And it closed when I was still really young, unfortunately. But I went in there numerous times, and I remember really enjoying the place. Especially because at the entrance they had their popcorn machine and they would have little baggies and you could get like a free bag of popcorn while you wander the store and browse. Yeah. It was fucking amazing. Yeah. Roll King God. still has those. He, um... Who? Roll King. It's a store here. Uh, I don't know if they're like nationwide, but they're definitely all over the place in Indiana. Mm-hmm. They have uh, popcorn machines when you walk in and browse the store. Man, I miss Jumbo Video. I- I'm... God. I don't um, even think that building exists anymore where they were located. 
Well, yeah, he has a lot of, like, really cool stuff. Like, his, his thing, he collects, um, well, he doesn't collect, but he has a couple pinball machines that are really cool, too. He has the, um, um, he has a Shack Attack pinball machine, which is really fucking cool. And he has an old, old-ass, um, Creature from the Black Lagoon pinball machine. Which is a fantastic machine that is set up like it's all about Creature from the Black Lagoon, but the framing of it is that you're at a drive-in, an old-school drive-in theater, and everything like that. So all like the events that happen will either be events from the movie, or there'll be events that like happen at the drive-through. And one of my favorite ones is the guy stuck in a trunk, where he gets locked in the trunk. And he's screaming for help, and you're one of the you you are one of the ushers trying to get the it open, and you're just you have to hit the bumpers. The more you hit the bumpers, is the more the usher hits the trunk to open it. And the whole time the guy is is screaming, "Help! It's dark in here!" Ah! <laughs> it is it is a cool cool ass. It, it is it is amazing to think of this is what they had before they had tons of like technology and everything to make things super flashy but they still have all these like mechanics and storylines and everything in a pinball game of all things it was fun as fuck let me get that on screen while you guys uh do the super chats we got three super chats again yeah let's go grab those two dollars from flannel mcmanel thank you i want to hear mitch mcconnell say cowabunga <laughs> 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 oh god, that would be fucking amazing. The fucking rejected mutant ninja turtle. <laughs> Cowabunga, uh, poor people. <laughs> <laughs> uh five dollars from Wed Fox. Thank you. A guy at an LCBO was talking to me about this show at, uh in checkout. Is it funny, bad, or boring bad? Love you guys. Boring oh, bad. Oh well thank you. It's mostly boring bad. Um, legitimately, the best scene of the entire series is a bunch of children getting murdered. Oh, um, the the runner-up is definitely when uh, Venick tells Kai that she's a fucking idiot. Yeah. It's the second most entertaining um, depiction of children getting murdered I've ever seen. Yep. Um, Five dollars from Alex Hoffman. Thank you. Covenant were right to destroy us. All they had to see was all the people you guys have covered. Yeah, we have yeah, uh, covered quite the characters in the past year and a bit. So here you go, chat. Hey, you Korean Co., how are we all? Uh, terrible. I hope you're doing well, thank you. This is the pinball machine, and it is a really, really cool fucking pinball machine. It's like an old style, it is an old, old school pinball machine. They only have one color for the display screen and everything. So much work went into this. Like, holy fuck. Fucking tentacle, dude. <laughs> what? Poverty induced malnutrition caused your wife to miscar miscarry? Cow a bummer. Oh, God. Yeah, there you go, chat. There's the. Christian the Black Lagoon. It is a fantastic pinball machine. And if it's one where if you can get it, highly recommend it. Um unfortunately, people realized how good it is of a pinball machine. So they command a premium of eleven thousand dollars minimum now. So good luck. Um I was just looking at the ship posting channel on the server. And someone posted a video of the Halo Infinite Needler with the needles being replaced with hot dogs. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> nice. and the fucking uh, call-outs are changed, too. Double grill. <laughs> grill him in Jaro. Oh, oh, so... Tangentially. When I yeah, was we're not on a massive tangent already. Yep, absolutely. But tangentially to that, when I was in the Marine Corps, right... There was a rumor that was going on that our company, golf company, was the last one that was allowed to say the word kill in basic training. Because the, you know, the woke ideology nonsense. There, there was this whole thing where a bunch of marine moms came together 
and they actually wrote stern letters to a bunch of senators that they're teaching my baby how to kill in the fucking marines of course they are lady you dumb fucking ugh. but no so there's a big stink that got made up about it and they, they were no longer allowed to say the word kill and we we thought oh that's bullshit we thought we thought our our drill instructors were fucking with us. You know that's that's complete bullshit. That's that didn't happen. Well, while I was in while I was on um, light duty, because I had gotten viral. Uh, for anyone that knows the series of injuries I had, I had pneumonia that spawned from my upper respiratory infection. So I had a viral pneumonia infection of the lungs. So I had to go on light duty. I was on light duty and I was listening to. <laughs> so, so the company that came after us that ate after us was was fox was the foxtrot and they um oh my god i listened to them do the the mess hall and what you do is they tell you how much room is in the mess hall and they'll give you number of recruits and they'll be like three recruits three recruits aye aye sir sound off three recruits and then they start going in and they go one recruit and then they'll say kill is what we do because you kill you're gonna get out of it. you're gonna go bam you're gonna go hard kill you know one recruit kill two recruit kill three recruit kill aye aye sir and then then the person calls back in three recruits sir well when i was watching them one recruit drill two recruit drill three recruit drill 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 them all <laughs> i was like what no no it can't be true for a couple training cycles, they were only allowed to say the word drill instead of kill. And thank God, sanity came back and they say the word kill now. Again. Because, you know, it, it makes sense to censor the, world, uh, the word kill when you're training people to do nothing but kill the enemy. Yes. What the fuck? Oh, God. I, like I said, I thought it was, we all thought it was bullshit. When I listened to it, I actually called the rest of the people over on light duty and I said, you gotta, f you, you are not going to believe this. You gotta listen to this. So you just have, you just have nine recruits up here on our deck of the barracks. We were, I want to say third deck. Um, we were looking down at the mess hall line and just listening to... <laughs> <laughs> One recruit drill, two recruit drill, three recruit drill, four recruit drill, drill, drill them all. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, my God. They were telling the truth. They were telling the truth. Um, G-Forces is saying the audio is very low. Uh, for who? I know your audio is meant to be balanced relative to the video you're watching, but the headphones are at max volume and I can barely hear you. You are way quieter than other YouTube stuff. Can you turn up all the audio as a whole? All of it? Because all of ours are going into the yellow. I usually have mine go into the red because that's what I've heard you're supposed to do. I've heard you're not but... supposed to because that's what peaks it. Not. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. I'll move it up so we're close to the red. How Hold about on. that? Let, let me listen to the stream quickly. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound super loud to me. It it does sound a tad bit quiet. Like I said, here, I'll turn it up, um, I'll, I'll turn it up a bit. So, I want to get it into, I'll get it to where we're just touching towards the red. How about that? First, I'll adjust my audio. And then we'll adjust, uh, Korean Pagan. And let me check the video. I'm going to go back. We're going to check the video's audio. When teams were being turned. Yeah, the video's proper already. So there we go. Mm. <laughs> well, Peggy's back. I, I was just sitting down. Now they're training them to become internet influencers. Recruit one, shill. Recruit two, shill. Recruit three, shill, shill, shill them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last super chat we've got to do, then we're getting back to the video. $10 from Chris Ellinger. Thank you. Even in the uh, Air Force, we say kill. 
the slogan of the 321 TRS was low slow kill everything below. Every time we did push ups we had to yell that out. Whenever we did push ups, we did the we did the cadence uh push ups. A one, two, three, one, a one, two, three, two. This and then it would just go up to once you got to four. This is what you asked for. One, two, three, five. So on. So it was just the cadence. It was the way to keep everyone on track. And trust me, when you're doing cadence push ups, um, it's surprisingly more difficult than you expect it would be, but you also can spot out who's fucking up way easier. <laughs> cadence push ups are fantastic for figuring out who the fuck ups are going to be. Because they'll be off rhythm and stuff like that, or they'll be like wibble wobbly trying to keep up and stuff. It is funny as hell watching, watching as you're doing the push ups and your head comes up so you can see properly, and you just see a, a drill instructor beelining through all the recruits, just going, dum, 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 dum. and you know he's going for someone. Someone is about to get an ass chewing of their life. And then, and then your heart sinks once you realize, oh, he's walking towards you. <laughs> yes. Oh my God! If he was ever coming towards you, it was like, oh fuck. <laughs> it's like, oh, someone's about to get chewed out. Wait, wait, what, wait. Why, he turned why, my why, road. Why did he just? just he turned wait, my road. No, he's coming towards no, you. no, no. Because <laughs> he saw you fucking watching. <laughs> Dude, that's the best part. Is everybody? Everybody has that rubbernecker um, tendency, right? Where you gotta turn, gotta turn, look, gotta turn, look. And they will tell you, you know, get your fucking eyes off of me, recruit. And if they see you eyeballing them, they'll come up and they will deliver a swift corrective action. <laughs> Which, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, swift corrective action is their uh, code term for they're going to gut check your ass so you're looking at the ground instead. Yep. Into much with alien weapons and the was angry as hell learning the origins of how Master Chief was turned into a Spartan by the manipulating Dr. Halsey. I was on the edge of my seat when Chief first encounters a brute or even when he nearly You're on the edge of your seat when he looked at a brute for five seconds and the brute was like see ya. Yeah you ain't worth my time bye. <clears throat> how are Amazing. you on the edge of your seat? I don't know. I guess some people are just easier to please. Yeah. Because we talked about how I, awful I, that that one one camera take shot was, where things were so janky and wonky, and they just looked so off. Yeah, it's this guy is probably impressed by literal key jangling. <laughs> Oogie says that fat ass is always on the edge of his seat. <laughs> oh god! Look, I, I am making an effort to try and be less mean, so I will say nothing. I'm laughing at the comment. I have not commented on his size or anything at all. No, I know. God, I want to be the good. one. I want to be the one to just interject and be like, "Well, I'm still an asshole, so I'm gonna and then insult yeah, him." But well, but then, I, but then being, if I do, we get fucking in I'm, trouble by from you too. Well, no, <laughs> look, look, I'm sure he's a nice guy. He he just seems to be easily pleased by this terrible show. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It, it, again, this is like the most key jangly nonsense. Again, when Master Chief did this, the thing you were on the edge of your seat for, sir. He would have been court-martialed and executed for this. Regardless of the outcome. Yeah. It didn't matter the fact that he ultimately didn't do it. The fact that he put a superior, a superior and a superior officer way up the chain because she works for O&I, or we think... Actually, no, I don't think they ever mentioned O&I. They just call it Section 3. Yeah. yeah. So she works for Section 3, which is obviously some high-up military spook program. Yeah, no, Master Chief would, would be lining a ditch somewhere right now. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> and and that's, that's the problem with a lot of these shows we watch where the writing is terrible, is we can't get invested in the, oh, my God, the whole tense thing is happening because 
the logic is breaking so many times per second for us it's just like wait what, that doesn't make no don't what no yeah, yeah. just the entire time God. absolutely <laughs> admiral tony donning because you just reminded me of that this dude is impressed by the quality of netflix's resident evil by the way yeah uh we oh, talked I about that, that. Me and Cree talked about that yesterday, and because you reminded me of that, I'm going full asshole mode. All the fat went to your fucking head, you fucking retard. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Wow, rude. His, his take <laughs> on the Resident Evil show is pretty fucking bad. Wait, you've seen his take on the Resident Evil show? I've seen bits and pieces of it, and it is pretty fucking horrifying. Yeah, I've seen bits did, and pieces as well. It looks fucking terrible. Did he like the comments about the Zootopia porn? I don't know if he went that far, but it wasn't far off from it. Oh. Well, still, I... I'm sure he's probably a nice guy. Probably just has bad taste. Yeah, it, again, it's possible. If he's got bad taste, he's got fucking bad taste. But this is the... This is the thing why you shouldn't do, like, critique if you have really awful taste. Cree. <laughs> yeah, I saw. <laughs> I almost said it. All right. When he nearly killed Dr. Halsey. After watching the series finale, I'm ready for round two. And I feel the second oh. season will... God. How? I'm sorry, I don't know... Like, I don't care how easily you're pleased. How do you not find issue with the fact that all three prophets were right there and no one tried to kill them? Yeah. yeah. Just completely ignored them entirely. And that Master Chief is dead? And it's Cortana puppeting him around with necromancy. Because Are... magic exists in the Halo TV show. Actual fucking magic exists. Yeah. Are you telling me you don't like the idea of an AI puppeting a corpse about? No. No. And she's a million times better than the actual Master Chief at her yeah. job. So it makes him completely... It just shows how, like, shit he was compared to, like, her. everyone else. He was just... He was just dog shit character through and through. And this hey, proved remember, it. Remember when uh, Cortana complimented his skills and improved him rather than just being straight up better than him in every way? Remember in Halo, the fall of Reach, where uh, John couldn't see what the benefit of Cortana was until they, the ODST were literally trying to kill them? Intentionally so, because the ODST were trying to prove a point. So they literally brought out all the big guns and the satellite systems targeting Master Chief and Cortana while fighting was not only giving him indications of where enemy troop movements were, what dropships were coming in, but also was currently hacking into the satellites to turn them off to make them blind. So then Chief realized the benefits of having an AI-assisted partner with him. Yeah. Because he could do all the ground stuff. It wasn't Cortana that was helping him move his body around and everything, but Cortana was providing real-time support and feedback Things that were vital, like gathering intelligence the entire time that he was fighting. And her stuff was what was keeping him, keeping him going. Like, realizing what shipments were where, where they were placing their guns, what formations they were using immediately. Because she had hacked into the satellite systems, and then she turned off the satellite tracking on Master Chief and her, so that the ODST could no longer track them and everything. It was, it was a brilliant moment to highlight that... She wasn't better than him. She had a different set of skills that complemented his skills. Because John was not a hacker. John wasn't an intelligence guy. John couldn't, wouldn't be able to hack into the satellite while he's fighting and everything. Yeah, that sounds too complex and nuanced. Eh, nah, better just... Women better. Woman better at everything. Yeah. Better woman. Except in this show, weirdly, they try to do that here at the very end. But then they have the women are weak and pathetic, and without their emotions being kept in check, they fall apart and get other people killed and almost get themselves killed. Yep. It's so... It's, it's weird. Yeah. God, somebody, someone in chat pointed out that he was making soy Wojak faces. 
It's like, yeah, he, he was. Yeah, <laughs> he but, literally yeah. was. He is very fortunate he didn't use the still of him pointing behind him. Yeah. Oh. Uh, membership message from the Wayfarer. Thank you. People are still talking about this show. Just let it die already. Let the nightmare end already, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, well, it's yeah. kind of our job to talk about this stuff, so. Yeah. We, we've got to. Plus, we don't want to feel like our. Uh, the, the fucking. The fact we had to watch it go to waste. It's like we we barely covered anything about it. Yeah. yeah and the... we, we suffered through it for nothing. It's like, come on, we got to cover a little bit more. Yeah, and there's there we want to try to get more of the Halo videos out, but they are Paramount is super fucking abusing DMCA illegally to silence criticism. So we yeah. so there's there's not really all that much criticism I, you can find, and you can't find a lot of people praising the show because it's so shit that they doesn't really have a lot of defenders. I do want to make a video breaking down the Halo show as well at some point, but I've yeah. just got so much on the plate right now I can't. realize this series full potential maybe this video can be used to defend the halo series maybe we need some <laughs> oh um, this video can be used some to things just series. aren't some things just aren't worth defending you should have higher standards my friend Absolutely. yeah get higher standards because like also... here's the thing if you like the show as is then fine whatever you like the show but to try and offset the fully justified criticism against this show, you realize that that will only ever result in the same quality and, like, we won't get anything better. That's not to say the creators are necessarily going to listen to criticism. They probably won't. But yep. someone out there might see this sort of criticism and be, and be like, hey, yeah, I don't want to make garbage like that. Yep. Um, And actually, we have cases like that where a lot of media has been crap, so now there's the Ripaverse. Um, Shadowversity has his book. Literature Devil has his comic book. Yep. And many others. This is why we're getting all the new platforms and everything like that are springing up, too, because they're, they're tired of all the shit that's coming up. Yep. If, again, and it affects their wallets if people actually say, hmm, this looks like shit, and this person said it was shit. I don't want to watch it. Yeah. It hurts their wallets. They don't make as much money. They have to rethink how they're doing things. They have to actually start putting effort into their shows. Yeah. No, no, not like Mixer. I'm talking about Rumble, Odyssey, Locals, stuff like that. We've got True Social. We've got Parlor now. Kanye bought Parlor. So. Parlor yeah. is still around. Hmm? Oh, I thought they died when their fucking hosting got pulled. Uh, they did, but Kanye's got some big money behind him, so we'll see what he can do with it. Oh! Yeah, there's just all kinds of there's all kinds of new alternatives that are springing up now because because these platforms are now so weak, and these platforms just keep, like, shoveling shit at people over and over and over again. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the main point I was uh, getting at there is if you keep giving a pass to garbage and all you're going to get is garbage... Even if you enjoy that garbage, why wouldn't you want it to be better? Yep. Like, oh, I could have a 5 out of 10 game or TV show, or I can have a 6 out of 10 game or TV show, or a 7 out of 10, or 8 out of 10. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want something to be better? Absolutely. I'd rather have more great stuff, even if it's stuff I don't even care about. Like if they make if they make a Barbie TV show, which I don't give two flying fucks about, I'd still want that to be really fucking good for the people that actually care about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a shame Kanye West had his melanin status revoked though. <laughs> yeah. That's sad to hear he's no longer black. Yep. Yep. I'm convinced its potential maybe you need to look halo the series look how awful this this chat this is what we're talking about this is the one shot camera take and how awful it is 
Oh, also, I guess we can go back and look at how awful the fight scenes are, just in general. Like, the, the weightlessness to it, the how the action is just complete nonsense all throughout. One-shot camera takes are only impressive if they're actually fucking done well. Like, yeah. I can't believe I have to add if done well to fucking everything, but apparently I need to. Because people like the showrunner seem to think, oh, let's do one big uncut shot. That is so cool. Yep. And then they fill it with garbage. Yep. I mean, sure, I could take a camcorder to a landfill and have one big long shot. It doesn't mean it's going to be good fucking footage. The series finale. I'm ready for round two. And I feel the second season will realize this series full Look, potential. Barely taps him, barely taps him. And now, again... He just barely tapped this brute, and he's going to be on the backside of it, looking and standing there, and this other brute's not going to do anything. Maybe this video can be used to def- <sighs> And he just stands there. That brute doesn't come back, by the way. Yeah. No, you don't get it, Sesh. He pushed him off camera? That means he fucking evaporated. Yeah. <laughs> he he yeah, got he disintegrated. Exist. At the edge of a camera is a, uh, is a field of, like, energy that will- completely disintegrate you into nothing yeah yeah when, once the show has no more use for you you just get evaporated you just die on the spot uh, they there's said there's not going to be there's not there going to be a second season there is they're working on it yeah they said that they <laughs> they already they've already greenlit it they're already working on it they could very well be filming it at this very moment uh two dollar super chat from alex hoffman thank you very much elon musk thank in you. twitter or if he ever takes over well, he's going to. They're, they're now they're just trying to kick up as much of a temper tantrum as they can. But no, it's it's pretty much set in stone at this point now. It, it's just baffling to me um, where, you know, he obviously is concerned about the bot problem. And then, oh, we're going to sue you into buying us. OK, I'll buy you. No, you can't. It's like what? No, 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 no. It, it's, Are... even, it's even dumber than that. I'm backing out because it's clear that Twitter has fested with more than 5% bots. No, you can't prove that. It's like, yeah, well, I I can prove this from the data stream you gave me. Well, we're going to sue you. Okay, well, you're going to have to prove that it's that it's less than 5% bots. Well, we can't do that. So we accept your thing. All right, good. I accept it now. Well, you know, you've accepted it, and our board says we accept it, but we, we don't want to do it anymore. Well, too bad. You're going to have to do it. Well, the courts say the, the well, the courts are gonna say you have to do it. You <laughs> dumb fuck! I can't wait for Elon to buy Twitter so I could say retard again. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be so nice. I would. The first thing I would do, I would immediately purge all check marks, just instantaneously. Check marks no. system gone. And oh, you then, mean the system? Yeah. No, I mean, I'm not saying get rid of people that have the check mark. No, no, I mean the system. Go to the check blue check marks immediately, and then instead make the blue check mark system what it originally was supposed to be, where you it's verified verifying... your identity. Yeah, you and not special you treatment. Human. Yep. Yep. That yeah, would I can't be fantastic. Believe... It's so hard to get fucking verified on Twitter too. It's insane. Um, five pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. When Creed said landfill, I started thinking of a long sweeping shot in a gal uh, in a quarry. I don't know why I almost said gallery there. That was a long sweeping shot. That was horrific. <laughs> uh, five that dollars ain't from... gonna be in rush hour too. <laughs> I love that was one of my favorite favorite fucking outtakes from rush hour two. Damn, he ain't gonna be in rush hour three. <laughs> <laughs> Um, five dollars from Scorcher Cast. Thank you very much. These shows aren't made for quality. You can't measure quality. Put it on a chart and show it to investors. They never once thought of the audience, uh, shareholders. Yeah, that's what he meant. Well, investors works too, because the the shareholders are investing into your company by becoming shareholders. So it still works. Yeah, but yeah, but the problem is when you're not. Like, I get the sentiment that you can't put quality on a chart, but that's still the thing, is if you, you make poor quality shows, then you're going to be fucking losing your audience, losing money. 
Yeah. So you can put, you can absolutely put quality of chart, but again, these people probably don't think to do that. They do the, they do the thing for the brand is what it is. You know, we do this yeah. just for the brand. Um, I want to point out we're like three hours in and we are fucking, sorry, are we three hours in? No, we're almost, almost three hours in. Almost three hours in and we are way fucking off course. Yep. We are two minutes and 15 seconds into a 15 minute video that I wanted to get through fairly quickly. So we should yep. probably focus a little bit more on the video. Defend the Halo series. Maybe you need some convincing of its potential. Maybe you need to hear why Halo the series is awesome. If you need but it's to not hear, fair. if you need to hear somebody say that the show is awesome before you think it's awesome, you don't actually think it's awesome. Your subconscious knows the truth. Your subconscious is telling you that it's not awesome, that it's terrible. Most cases, sometimes an argument could be made that you didn't see like something good and something you didn't think was quite so good or vice versa. You think something is better than it actually is, but those are more the edge cases. I think like, I just can see that the exception that proves the rule. Well, not so much that it's that some people could sit down and watch something really fucking bad and think, Hey, it's good. You know, cause, cause we've got the whole fallout three thing, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people really fucking love fallout three to an absurd fucking degree. Like it amazes me how many people love fallout three as much as they do, but then look how many also defend it as having little to no problem. This is a great game. There's nothing wrong with the writing. There's nothing wrong with the world building and all this other stuff. Mm. You know, he, uh, but his point more is that from doing this as an example would be you play fallout three and you think it's awesome and stuff and then you hear all these criticisms about it and you're like oh man people don't like it and then you needed somebody else to reaffirm and confirm your bias that it was awesome that's more what this sounds like to me yeah i thought it was more just people don't like the show so here's why they need to hear why it's awesome like maybe you I guess we can see which way it goes you think the show is bad so let me tell you why it's not uh, Halo is better than you think. Yeah. Again, we, I, we can see. We can see if that's what he goes into. Um, Skewmeister says, uh, Such, any show that people must say is awesome is not a true show. Tywin Lannister. <laughs> well, <laughs> what a quote. kind of... Uh, what a quote. <laughs> kind of butchered the quote there, but I get, yeah. I get what you were trying to say. Yeah. All right. Oh, yes, please, please show the elite that drops all of his guns and starts beating on the helpless Spartan who can't defend herself because she's having a, a woman moment. Literally, this is this is the plot point. She's having a woman moment during this battle, and she's crying because of all the death and destruction around her because she removed her emotion chip from her ass. Again, the emotion chip in the ash. And... She is now non-functional. She can't save anybody else. People are dying around her. She's doing nothing. She's getting shot. Her shields are gone. And instead of killing her by just shooting her to death or stabbing her with an energy sword, he walks up with all of his weapons gone and starts beating on her. Beating on her with his bare hands. Remind you, you're in a genocide war where you're trying to entirely wipe out all the humans. And this is one of the humans who helped laid waste to an entire fucking squad of elites on another planet recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's because of these people, the one you're uh, stopping, you threw away your gun to start punching. It's because of these people that they got away with the sacred artifact. Yep. Yep. And before anyone tries to say, well, it's because she took her emotion chip out. And she's just not used to it. It's like, okay. But the chief did the same thing, and he still functions. Yep. At least in fighting, in combat, he still functions. So outside of if it, for he's her, a fucking noodle. Yeah. So it literally just comes down to she's a woman who's experiencing emotions and can't handle it, and just shuts down. Yep. It's like okay, even well, though she's supposed to be a trained it. soldier. Uh. 
Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. Imperator X says, First thing I learned at med school, pee is stored in the balls, emotions are stored in the ass. Well, Must be true, then. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I believe the science. <laughs> anyway. Wife beating Welcome. elite. <laughs> Welcome to Purple Film, I'm Purple Boy, and if you're new to the channel and you love discussing the stories that inspire, encourage, and entertain us, go ahead and drop a like and click that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification button so you won't miss a new video. Go ahead and follow your boy on social media as well. I want to hear what you guys thought of Halo the series on a scale from 1 to 10. What did you think of it? 1. 1. 1, one. easily. Very, very easily a 1. Yeah, it's really fucking bad. Again, there are there are two, two, and only two things that are stand out in this show as being good. One, when all the the hippie losers are getting blasted by by the elites before you see the say, elites, and then that completely gets fucking shattered. Say it right, Satch. It's the child murder scene. The child murder scene. Yes, where the little kidly winks all get blasted. By plasma and explode and gore. <laughs> and then the other scene where where so why did we fight them? We fight them same reason they fight us. But do you ever wonder why? No. You ever wonder why you don't wonder why? I wonder if that gun grease that you put in your hair dripped into your brain to make you ask all these stupid fucking questions. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Damn, what a what a what a sigma right there. Rip younglings? Yeah, rip the younglings. They got blasted by plasma. Yeah, those are the only two good things. Like, oh god, this this plot is beyond fucked. And keep in mind, too, that the second good thing is only a good thing because it's facilitated by the rest of the stupidity in the show. Yes, it's like he has a sane moment, a moment of clarity, realizing that everybody else around him is a fucking idiot. It's so good. Leave your short review below. The first time I ventured into the Halo universe was Halo 3 on the Xbox 360. If okay. I'm honest, at the time I thought Halo 3 had a solid single player campaign. The real fun, however, was in its multiplayer. Alright. I'm literally going to ask, what's this have to do with the Halo show? Yeah, because the, the multiplayer just doesn't factor into the, the quality of the actual show. And as we've we, established, the Halo show has nothing to do with Halo. It is Halo in name only. Yeah, this guy even said it's the silver timeline, so people should stop complaining. So what does the games have to do with the show when you've already addressed that? It's yeah. a completely separate timeline. Yeah, then none of this matters at all. You don't You don't need literally any of this. Cut this all out. Cut this out. Because again, yeah, again this directly contradicts your point. Because now you're going into your experience with the games and everything. Well, you are—you just said earlier that, that that doesn't matter in the slightest. Okay, then cut it out. We don't need any of this. Yeah. Why? Why do we yeah. care about well, your experience of the games? Well, not just that. It's just weird to me for the fact that if you're going to be bringing up the games when you're talking about a TV show adaptation of a game, you're going to be talking about the substantive part of that, the story. Mm -hmm. There is no story in multiplayer mode. It's just killing the other team or uh, other players for the sake of it, for, for fun. Yep. So that you, yep. you can't adapt that into a TV show. Like, not really. Even if you were to try to, like, first of all, you wouldn't use Halo for that. You wouldn't do, like, a Halo TV show that's, I don't know, like the Hunger Games or something or Squid Game or whatever. Like, he... It, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just a game mode about killing other players is not something you can really adapt. So it doesn't factor in at all. Yeah. And it's going to contradict his point because it's like, okay, well, if it matters to you, like if it can be a valid argument for you to use this, like to use the original games, then why can't others? That completely invalidates your whole, well, it's a separate timeline. It's not canon, so it doesn't matter. Stop complaining. It's like, oh, but it matters for you. It's okay when it's your perspective, but when it's someone else's, it's suddenly not okay. So which is it? You you can't you you have to pick one. You can't have it both ways. 
Well, let's see, let's see how he weaves this in. Triple kill. Hill over a kill. Okay, so the reason was he wanted to show off his one, like, streak. Got yeah, it. but why not just make a gaming channel at that point? Yeah. Or, or, make one channel for discussing media and one channel for your gameplay stuff. Me. Or even do both on the same, like, I don't know, it just seems weird mixing that into this. Yeah, it doesn't fit. There was no reason for that to even be here. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, retro, uh, retro R styles, retro R styles. Um, it's done so the reviewer establishes credentials as a true fan, trying to gain your trust. You wouldn't question a real fan, would you? Yeah, I, mean, I we, question we know, everyone because yeah. we know why. I they question do it. everyone because I don't trust a single fucking person on this rock. Yeah, we know why they do it. We know why. We're just explaining it more terms of like. Why do you think they're doing it? Why do you think they're going to do... Well, according to what Pagan says later on, in a part that he jumped to and previewed, um, they're going to start doing the muse, you know, tampering with your emotions and trying to make you feel things through music. A lot. So, it, it's just manipulation all the way through. I also want to grab another comment here. I mean, you can make good media based, on, uh, based off the characters in the PvP game. Uh, the Team Fortress 2 comics come to mind, but I don't think that applies here, though. But that's the thing. You take the personalities of the mercenaries from Team Fortress 2, and then you make a comic series that isn't purely about shooting people in an arena or pushing a cart down tracks. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, you could do a story with that, but... See, Team Fortress 2 is a very different example, too, because you already have the personality of the mercenaries. When you're playing Halo PvP... There is no personal, uh, personality to the characters you're playing because they're all just blank character models. Yep. Um, yeah. Master Chief and the characters in the campaign are the ones with the characterization and they're the ones you'd adapt a story off of. E. Yeah. Like, there's a reason why there's so many, like, you know, TF2, SFM uh, videos on YouTube that are, you know, that do really well. It's yeah, like, it's easy to do something with those characters because you already have an established character. It's not a blank slate. You can actually do stuff with them, and it doesn't just have to be like literally one side goes kills the other side. Speaking of Team Fortress Two, I saw part of a video earlier where some of the voice actors were like fucking about in real life while doing their Team Fortress voices. Yeah, uh, I saw that too. <laughs> it's it's a little bit uncanny to hear fucking. Like spy's voice coming out of a real person, yeah. Or any of the others, you know, yeah. A fucking it's, sniper uh, being like, oh, "We're looking for the medic." <laughs> it's like, same what thing the fuck? For the guy, um, that for Vermintide, the guy that plays Saltspire loves to do that all the time. <laughs> so he'll even he'll even do where he'll do charity events, and then because people donate for charity, he'll actually read out messages that they have as a thank you sort of thing. Oh, nice. And there's a there's a fan channel called uh, Janfron1, I believe, that will then uh, take a lot of those and turn them into animations and everything. And they're hilarious. Like, the, the whole steam tank. I wanted, I always wanted to... You know, I never wanted to be a witch hunter. So I wanted to be a Ver steam tank. Vermintide is the fantasy Warhammer game, right? Yes, it is set in Warhammer Fantasy Universe. A lot of people... Okay. Call it, um, is, they just call it there... Left 4 Dead with swords, which is oh. completely missing the point of it. It's a Left 4 Dead-like, that's for sure. It has the same basic gameplay style. Is there but... more of an open-world Warhammer fantasy game? Kind of. L like like a Morrowind or um, no, no, a New Vegas? Nothing oh. like that. There's, there's Warhammer Online, which is open-world, but that's, you know, an online MMO thing. Yeah. Um... But the thing with Vermintide is a lot of people call it just um, uh, Left 4 Dead with Swords. But, again, the base mechanics, the basics, if you strip everything else out, sure. But each of the characters is not the same. The whole point in Left 4 Dead is that all the characters are completely identical. They just have different personalities. But they all play the same. They all have the same hitbox. They all have the same mechanics. They all have the same move speed. There's nothing different about them. 
in Vermintide, all the characters are different. They get different weapons. They have different roles within the team of support, uh, tank, DPS sort of thing. And they emphasize that even more in Vermintide 2 with being able to change sub to subclasses for your particular character. So it has a lot more mechanical depth, and they're continuing that in, in Warhammer 40k Dark Tide as well, which is fantastic. It's a, I highly recommend the games. Highly, highly recommend the games. They're, they're really good. And the and uh, Salt Spire's voice actor um, is, is just a real, real good dude in general. It is so, it is kind of heartwarming to hear him do the, uh, just because, you know, so many people love Salt Spire as a character. They, they, to hear him just do all these things for charity and stuff like that, and then he'll, like, record messages for people. And he'll be doing it, obviously, in, in the character Salt Spire, so kind of standoffish and snooty, a witch hunter dude, so it's a lot of fun. Having started the story with the third installment in the series, I wanted to learn more about this world, so I ventured back into Halo Combat Evolved. That's where I was introduced to some of the most iconic moments in gaming history, but I didn't have a true appreciation for Halo's narrative and universe until Halo 2. Halo 2 really dived into the Covenant, whom I found to be more compelling than the UNSC. The UNSC was this generic military group with a few memorable voices like Captain Keys, Chief, and of course... God, look how terrible the anniversary edition of Combat Evolved looks. Just, just look at it. Look at it, guys. They just upscaled the textures and stuff like that. A lot of the model work is fucked because it uses the same bone structure and everything. It is... I cannot stress how bad the anniversary I thought, of Combat Evolved is. I thought Keys was supposed to be a bit older than that. He is. Uh oh. Wait till you, if he ever if I don't know why he would, but if he ever shows the swamp level when you first get introduced to the flood and the anniversary edition completely fucks all of it over. Um oh. just check it for any super chat. No, we, we didn't miss had... any, so I'll just grab this one. Yeah. Five dollars from Jylan Brunson. Thank you. I'm just leaving for work, so this is gonna be fun. Also, gentlemen, behold! I fear nothing but that blackface entity in the middle. <laughs> I'm glad he's talking about Pagan. Yep. Hey! Well, I mean your icon. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Britana. But exploring the Covenant as this religious cult, manipulating and enslaving other species whom they thought lesser than themselves. Wait, wait, wait. Halo 2 manipulating and enslaving other species? Manipulating, sure. Enslaving? Who's enslaved to the Covenant? Yeah, I don't know. All of them could, joined could, because of the religion. Could he be getting the impression that um, the Grunt Rebellion is like a slave revolt? Maybe. Because that's the only thing I can think of. But yeah, that was that wasn't what happened. It's because there were there were just too many grunts and there wasn't enough food to go around. So they had a massive revolt because they thought people were keeping food from them. But it was like, no, you're just breeding so fucking fast. There's too many of you idiots. Yeah, that's not the the grunts aren't. I slaved the grunts. Well, now we know who did it. <laughs> Retro R Styles. Yeah, no, I don't think the grunts are enslaved. Again, this is this was all part of joining the joining the path. There are there are grunt deacons and everything too. They're they're part of the ecclesiarchy that spread the faith and everything. It's just this is just weird. I completely unrelated but when you oh, said I, deacons yeah, I, I immediately thought of uh a certain video we watched a while back yeah <laughs> they turned him into a deacons of the deep holy shit 
Yeah, I forgot. The jackals hated the, the grunt so much they sabotaged their methane. I forgot that part, too. Really held my attention. It was in Halo 2 that the Halo universe felt expansive, in depth, ripe with possibilities. It didn't Didn't take long before I was asking myself, how would this translate into live action? So the idea. (laughs) Well, see, this is this is what I find even more confusing is you're talking about how expansive and great Halo 2 is. And then we get the Halo show, which is like, yeah. It's incredibly shallow. E- e- even, let's pretend for a second that the overall story of the Halo show is the same, but well written. It is fucking absurdly tiny compared to the original three games. Mm. Like in terms of size and scope. Yeah, and I don't know how you didn't get the, how deep the universe was from Halo 1. Like. There, there's a lot of evidence and everything of what's going on behind the scenes, which it, it gets incredibly fascinating about everything. Just ugh. <laughs> the worrisome waste wumper. Sup, lads? Oh no. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> he could be talking about the engineers, but he said in Halo Two, but Halo Two there was no, there's, there was nothing like that. There's nothing talking about that at all. Again, in the we, the canon of the games, with exception to Halo: The Fall of Reach, and the reason I'll, I'll tell you why I'd make that exception in a second. The canon of the games is Halo One, Two, Three, and ODST. Those are the canon. By Halo Two, there's nothing that shows that anybody's been enslaved. Nowhere do they mention that any of the Covenant races have been enslaved or anything. Nothing like that. The one thing they talk about is taming of the teaming of the um the hunters which is what the one arbiter died doing that's taming them and the only reason i make an exception to halo the fall of reach is because halo the fall of reach came out before the games and he worked directly with bungie's writing staff so it's obvious that that was intended to be canon because, yeah. again, it came out before Halo Combat Evolved. I'm for, far more comfortable in saying that Halo Reach... Sorry, Fall of Reach is more canon than Halo Reach. Because, oh, um, if anything, Halo Reach retcons Fall of Reach, which it's would Halo, be the problem. Halo Reach retcons and destroys the entire lore of Halo series. It is... It is frustrating how much damage Halo Reach does. It is, it is incredibly frustrating. Idea for a Halo TV series was announced long, long, long time ago, back in 2013 during the Microsoft E3 press conference. Damn. You remember E3? Thank God it's gone. So, so first of all, wasn't that for like a Halo movie or something that ended up getting canned? Yes, it was. The show we got wasn't that announcement. That was something different that didn't... Yeah. Like, there was a Bioshock movie announced at one point, and that never got made. But, wait, aren't they working on a Netflix show or something? Um, For Bioshock? I'm not sure. I do know the last of the show is filming already. Yeah, I, like, I am. Oh, uh, no. I'm glad I'm not too invested in The Last of Us. Yep. Let, let's yeah, just say yeah. that. Oh, that fucking show is gonna be dog shit. I can already tell. Mm-hmm. Well, when when you get a lot of things like they were told, the actors were told not to play the games at all. It's like, um, but you should. Granted, I based of you to say don't play The Last of Us Two because it's shit, but you should have them play The Last of Us One. It kind of it's kind of important for seeing their characterization, their motivations, what type of people they are. I think that'd be important in, you know, playing the character. <laughs> there we go again, such stealing out joy.
Those were the days. Anyways. <laughs> and then you, and then you show a cuckold on screen. Nice. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. The, the best part of E3 was always watching other people stream roasting E3. Yeah. Like, I always looked forward to Metacruz streams laughing at E3 and all the cringe. I still remember the fucking uh, Bethesda Land um, E3 where they announced the Creation Club. Metacruz is fucking roasting that. And then mm -hmm. it cuts back to Bethesda Land and it's on fire and he was laughing. Yeah, that's pretty fucking fitting for what's happening here. Yep. God, my favorite parts of E3 are when Kroby Cat would do his super cuts of just how awful E3 was that year. Those super cuts are fucking hilarious, by the way. Yeah, I don't, Why? I don't miss it at all. Yeah, I'm Why so is glad. E3 always cringe? Because it's it's all pandering and marketing now. Before, instead of it was when it used to be like a bunch of geeks and nerds showing all of these cool things that they could get the engines and their tech to do, and just like gamers actually talking to gamers. Now it's all PR, or it turned into all PR and fluff and mirrors and bullshit. It's where yeah. originally at E3 when they said uh, not representative of final product, that meant the game was going to look better when it released not worse better that's when and then we started seeing the rise of oh in engine cutscene okay so we'll never see that in the game it's an in engine thing it's what the engine could do it's what the game can't handle it yeah when that shit i hate yeah when you have an engine showcase you can do all kinds of tricks and shit to make way more advanced stuff look smoother well it's not just the the tricks and stuff it's the fact that a lot of games would be announced or advertised with all these cinematic cutscenes when that's not what the gameplay represents, like, ever. That's why if you ever see the words in-engine, immediately disregard anything you are watching. Like, immediately. There is nothing you will gain from that. It is all just pure fluff and hype. That's all it is. The moment you see in-engine. Uh, if it says not representative of a final product, it means it's going to look worse. If it says um, alpha gameplay or whatever, you can take notice of it, but it, watch for manipulative things. Watch In for particular. animations that are a bit too smooth from people that are supposed to be player characters and stuff. Yeah, that shit's always fake as fuck. I hate yeah. it. Just, just watch out for that kind of shit. And the fake gamer speak, too. It's like... Not not even like like maybe gamer speak is the wrong way to call it, but it's just like, hey Joe, I know uh, what you're talking go, about. Go, yeah, yeah, check out this area over here to see if there's any hostiles. Mm -hmm. It's like gamers don't fucking talk like that. Not the Division Two, their fucking thing for that was <laughs> the perfect example of that shit. It was so fucking bad it, it got roasted so hard for the gamer speak the ghost oh my recon God. one i think is the worst one of them yeah that one was really far. bad too ha yeah that any, one has anyone done the reverse of that where it's like actual game like gamers talking to one another it's like hey joe you fuck go check uh this area for resources or maybe not resources but you know what i mean I don't think the FCC would allow that. Yeah, no, uh, and I think the ESRB would throw a hissy fit because, you know, yeah. that piece of shit. Fucking but, kill droids. But it would be great to just see a video game pop up and be like, hey, go check around the corner, see if they've got some enemies or whatever over there. And he goes around the corner and he's like, oh, we got two of those fucking shield guys again. Yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, that that is, that's accurate. <laughs> that's something you'll hear. Or... Like a trailer for a horror game, and someone just starts spazzing out, screaming, and running away. Like, yeah. oh god, oh god, don't let him get me! Ah! <laughs> or the best one, when somebody gets spooked, and they do the mouse fling, so the the screen yes. shakes, and then yes. they, they let go of the mouse <laughs> entirely, and they're now looking the other way, and they're like, ah! ah! And they're just running blind, and then they try to grab the mouse, and you see it like... <laughs> flailing around as they try to get it back oriented. I, I, I want to see someone do that and fuck up and run into a wall and get killed immediately by the monster getting game over. Yes. 
that was that was one of the things I was most impressed with the Destiny um, video with its original one. Because I was like, okay, I'm going to be judging this very closely if it's going to be actual gameplay or not. And there were a lot of things that indicated that it was actual genuine gameplay because you could see some bugs and glitches going on or you could see the guy when he tries to throw a sticky grenade and it <laughs> hits it hits the pipe and bounces back and almost collects on him I'm like <laughs> yeah that's stuff that they that if if they were trying to really fake it they would have they would have edited that out they wouldn't be like no no don't do don't use that cut where he almost fucking blew himself up and we almost revealed we have god mode on don't don't do that one do do the other one where he throws the grenade properly They got Steven Spielberg to get up on stage via video to talk about his involvement with the Halo TV series. If you know the movie, Halo movie. Also, what does this have to what, do with Halo TV series? Right wasn't now? Spielberg associated with the show as well? Was he with the show? I thought he was. Uh oh, look. If he was with the show, man, Spielberg has fallen far. Yeah, I, I don't remember hearing anything about him being with the show. I could be wrong, but I don't remember I, hearing anything about I that. I thought there was some big directors, like some big name attached to the show. But it was like in a very superficial way. Quentin Tarantino. Nah. You, are you kidding? I would fucking love a Halo Dude, movie or show by Quentin but Tarantino. But Quentin Tarantino, Holy it would shit. be weird as shit, and I would be down for it. I think Quinta Tarantino is one of those uh, writers and directors where he can adapt any IP and make it work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how uh, there'll be a scene where, like, Chief is looking at a, at a grunt after he kills, like, an elite or something like that, and the grunt's just like, oh, oh, he shot a lead! Run! And the grunt's running away, doing his little, like, oh, and you just see Chief, like, casually put the rifle away, and then he takes out, like, a grenade, and you see him, like, line up with his thumb, and he starts leaning up, back, and leaning his hand up, 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 and then he throws it. <laughs> and you just see, <laughs> boom! Grunt explode. <laughs> Kretosis. Ah, uh, no, that was Senor Spielbergo. Ah. Oh. That would be a Quentin Tarantino scene for sure. So Microsoft actually wanted Master Chief to go to the big screen. They even contracted Alex mm -hmm. Garland to pin the script. You know him, the guy who's responsible for cult favorites like Ex Machina, Annihilation. He even pinned the script. <laughs> Wasn't okay. Annihilation I... really bad? Hang on, I, I just want to point out the fact that you put these up in the wrong order, you idiot. So it's fine. It's I know, fine. but this is just one of those like this is one of those editing things. You know him, the guy who's responsible for cult favorites like Ex Machina. Ex Machina, yeah, that's Ex Machina right there. Yeah, that A N that N I H A. <laughs> boy, oh boy, that spells Ex Machina for sure. I've never seen Ex Machina, so I don't know if it's good or not. But I have heard. A lot of bad things about Annihilation. I haven't. I've literally heard Buffkiss about Annihilation. I've heard mixed things on Ex Machina. If you guys want to talk about Annihilation, DJ Peach Cobbler made a video on it. It's oh, terrible. No. Okay. See, um. I I know we've lost any like um benefit of the doubt for Peach Cobbler. But he's just one of those guys to me that. How, how do I word this? Like, I, I just constantly associate seeing his name with garbage videos. Yeah. But, yeah. It, 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 but for me, maybe this is just my Canadianness. I almost sort of feel bad for, like, almost sort of thinking less of him. I do too, because I've actually seen a couple of videos of his that were actually good. It's like, he can make good content, he just has really shit takes sometimes, and then he turns those shit takes into a video. And if he mm -hmm. didn't do that, he could make good videos. Because he's got a couple that I'm like, that was actually really well made. 
But so for all I know, it could he his annihilation video could be good. But the problem is he's made such fucking stinkers. It's hard to like. Oh no! Well, disassociate it. Final McManel said the annihilation video is terrible. Oh, no, boy. oh boy! Oh okay, wait! Never mind. Hold on! Then. Hold on! If you guys want to talk about annihilation, DJ uh, Peach Cobbler made a video on it. It's terrible. See, that could be referring to either the video or the movie. Yeah. Um, oh anyways. wait, hold on, hold on, Mirthful. Which is terrible, the movie or the video about the movie, or both? Mirthful, both are bad. Oh! Oh, okay. Um, anyways, $5 super chat from Jillian Brunson, thank you very much. Thank you. Can you guys read my comment, YouTube is being a butt. So the comment was, Sesh, did they explain in Halo, uh, ODST, the engineers were slaves? Yes. But again, he played Halo 1, 2, and 3, and he said Halo 2 is what did it. And they don't mention slavery in Halo 2 at all. Yeah. Um, well, they, they mention slavery in a sense of, like, open your eyes, my brothers. We have been enslaved to false prophets and stuff like that. When the heretics are talking about how, like... Because he's, he's talking about what the, the oracles actually are and what the Halo rings actually are and everything. And the prophets are like, nope, can't have that happen. Wait, so, um, but hold on. what if it's, like, like metaphorical slavery rather than literal slavery? Like, we've been lied to to follow this thing. It, it is it is metaphorical slavery, yes. Okay. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's metaphorical slavery. It's not actual slavery. Um, also, Pagan, are you proud of your icon? I bet you wear that to the KKK, you sick pony. Why, yes. Yes, I am. And yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Pagan, I didn't know you were a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> I switch back and forth sometimes. There you go. Depends on when I want to be entertained. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean to switch back and forth? I thought you were gay. Why would you ever vote like Republican or to the right? <laughs> because I have brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Poofed. All right, all right. Anyways, but again, he's saying, so. Back to the point, uh, he says Ex Machina, and he shows Annihilation, This is Annihilation, and he shows Ex Machina, so, you know, it's just one of those, like, fix that, and that's shit you need to fix. Machina, Annihilation, he even penned the script for Dread. You're probably thinking, guys, oh, Dread was Now, Dread I have good. seen, yes. and Dread was really good. He wasn't, like, super deep or anything like that, but it didn't need to be. Dread needed to be what it was, and it I worked think... so fucking well at it. And yeah, I think Dread is a good example of this is a movie that's all about the action, but it's still like the story it does have is done well. Like, even if you want your movie to be nothing but dumb action, which is fucking fine. Yep. Uh, there's no reason to have a garbage scri uh, script. It's yeah. because Dread is so well written, despite being a simple story. We're in this giant tower. The criminal overlord is at the top of the tower so we have to kill our way to her and then kill her like yep. it's simple it's straightforward but it's done fucking well oh yeah absolutely and that makes that's how you get invested that's why you care that's why it's so entertaining mm -hmm. if it was just a bunch of nonsensical bullshit happening the entire time it would throw you out of the movie and you wouldn't want to watch it yep Damn, that would have been a dope ass script. Not really. According to Alex Garland, the Halo script that he wrote for Microsoft was merely a job and it didn't contain any of his personal style uh, from the films I just mentioned. Besides, the way the development was going, I don't think anybody would have wanted a Halo movie. After the script was penned, let's just say that Microsoft's pitch was mm, interesting. They hired some actors, put them in Master Chief's armor, called up some execs at almost every major video. studio, forced them in a room and told them they had minutes to read the script and decide on whether they wanted to make a Halo film. Talk about brass balls. This bullish behavior didn't necessarily go over well with Hollywood, with most folks. Well, as we've fully established and with multiple years and decades of evidence hollywood are a bunch of fucking pansies and uneducated morons so yeah i i applaud 
If this is actually true, I applaud your massive fucking testicles, Microsoft. Holy shit. But, um, I'm gonna come back in here. This has nothing to do with the fucking Halo show. Get to the point. Yeah. Um, we're getting close to the halfway mark of this video, and he still has barely talked about the actual show. Yeah, and how the show is awesome. Past grip immediately. However, Fox and Universal offered some hope. They'd agreed to share the cost and distribution rights to the film, but like most video game movies, and the reason why they suck ass, Microsoft demands were too high, and they. No, 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 no. There is numerous factors to why video game adaptations of movies suck, and most often it's because the people don't tell the story of the video game. They tell their own story with the video game skin stretched over oh, like some fucking skinwalker. Hold on, isn't there a TV show we watched recently that did that? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. That just didn't happen. I uh, am I misremembering, or did I hop from an alternate universe? I, I think you hopped from an alternate universe. There was there was no magical show of coin flipping, backstabbing bullshit. I thought there was a sci-fi show recently that was uh, really... Pro oh, fuck, right, it was the Mass Effect show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah the the writers clearly want to do their own fucking thing and didn't care about the actual lore of halo with the show yep. it, it is bizarre to me that you're sitting here talking about how it's microsoft having the demands too high when it's clearly the writers just not caring the writers literally came out and said they didn't look at the games yeah and we were supposed to take that as, like, a good thing. It's like, no. No, 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 no. P people were taking that a little too seriously. There was not a Mass Effect show. Yeah, no, no, no. There was no Mass Effect show. Again, we were... We were, we're shitposting. Yeah. They wanted too much control. Even because saying the Mass Effect show is the obvious subversion to talking about the halo show without naming it the halo show yeah and going oh right it's the halo show but instead you go oh right it's the mass effect show yeah because no one um, expects that but here he's talking about like microsoft went too much control it's their ip it's their flagship property it's very fucking important to them i'd be one well, to control as well clearly not that important considering what happened after three well, I mean, we had ODST, and that was good. Reach After ODST. Sucks. After yeah. ODST. Reach sucks major, major dick. That's for sure. Eventually, the fell apart. At one point, Gilmore Del Toro was attacked to direct... Gil but... Gilmore? Gilmore Del Toro? <laughs> <laughs> Happy Gilmore Del Toro. Oh my god, I gotta hear that again. Gilmore Del Toro. They wanted oh no, we found another Vincent! Control. Eventually, the project fell apart. At one point, Gilmore Del Toro was a- Gilmore <laughs> Del Toro? <laughs> Happy Gilmore was supposed to make it. Oh, you- Oh, man. <laughs> Gilmore Del Toro. Gilmore Del Toro. Gilmore Del Toro girls. Oh God! All right, it's, that was that was amusing. The tax to direct, but he instead did Hellboy Two. Great choice. They looked to then indie director Neil Blokamp to helm the project. Neil worked with an effects team for months. And did he say Blokamp? Uh, it sounded like it. Uh... They looked to then indie director Neil Blokamp to help. <laughs> Neil Blokamp. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, he just can't. How is this name supposed to be pronounced? Neil. Uh, fuck. Let me get this thing up. I remember, there is a weird thing you have to do. 
See, I'm looking at it now. It looks like so, so there's two L's in Neil for some reason. Yeah, and but it it's, looks like it looks it, like Blomkamp, 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 or something like that. Blow, blow. Oh shit! Camp, he did this, uh, District Nine. That was a good movie. Ooh. I heard Elysium wasn't that good though, and neither was Chappie. Wait, is a District Ten coming out? Yeah, I just saw that. Well, I. Why would you name it District Ten? I get it because it's the sequel to District Nine, but it's like so they're just gonna make another district and do the same thing again, or what? I mean, I guess we'll have to see what happens. But why District Ten? Anyway. Yeah, I don't know though. That that seems like the kind of movie you just don't make a sequel to. Yeah. Well, anyways, chat. That was a fun little adventure there for some. Yeah. Um, the project. Neil worked with an effects team for months and even made some rewrites on Garland's script. But due to drama between Microsoft, Fox, and Universal, it was taking longer than usual. To get an idea of what Neil's Halo might have been, you can check out his short film that was released for the marketing of Halo 3. Obviously, this already looks fucking better than the Paramount Plus Halo show. It does, and it is. It is really good. It's it's the marketing for Halo 3 was really fucking good. See, I don't remember most of the marketing except for that one fucking ad of like the, the diorama. diorama with all yep. the show. Yeah. That that was fucking legendary. Oh, absolutely. God, that's still that's still one of those ones that that gives me the goosebumps every time I see it. Yep. It's the same with the uh, the original Dead Space ad, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star ad it was so fucking good. It's like holy shit. Also, I like just the accuracy to the uh costume items, like this um spike thing here. I forget what it is. Is it a grenade? Yeah, it's the brute's version of the grenade, yeah. It's their sticky <clears throat> yeah, grenade. The spike grenade. Yeah, the spike grenade. Like, that's some good accuracy. It is, and it's the proper size of what it is compared to the Marines. The The one funny thing here is he throws in the air and they just had to add a little bit of action in it where the grenade he throws in the air takes down a banshee. Which uh -oh. is like, yeah, here, here, here Yeah, you've go. got a hell of an arm on you if you uh, hit a banshee <laughs> yes! with that. Yes, watch if it shows. The movie never. <laughs> <laughs> that actually skipped for me. <laughs> I, I saw it, yeah, that. I forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Oh my then, god, that's You can so check stupid. out his short film that was released they for the marketing of Halo They couldn't 3. help themselves. Obviously, the movie never happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a little much, but yeah. uh, it's an ad, I can forgive it. If it was in a movie, I'd have far bigger issues with it. Yeah, absolutely. But they do cool cause... shit, too, like, when when the, the spike rifle, when the brute shoots the other marine and actually sticks his arm to the wall and he's like, ah, oh, fuck! And he's sitting here having to one-arm shoot to keep them pinned while the corpsman runs over and then pulls out a fucking saw and starts trying to saw through the spike so he can get him off the wall. And this is a fucking fantastic ad. And Microsoft fucked around and found out. Well... No, it's more that it's more Microsoft that Hollywood and... were being retarded as they usually are. Microsoft wanted control as was their right, and Hollywood didn't want to give it to them because we know better. So, I've mentioned before that I'm very slowly trying to make a game because it's my dream to make games. And if I ever had a studio approach me to do like an adaptation of it, assuming my game was successful, mm. um. I would absolutely be super fucking careful about that and want some level of control so I don't get a fucking Halo TV show out of it. Yeah, or Bebop flicks, or fucking or... Rings of Power bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Because the, the thing you gotta realize, too, is shit like that is gonna damage the entire brand. Like, yep. what if your introduction to Halo is the Halo TV show and you're like, fuck, this show is lame as shit. I don't want to play those gay-ass games. Fuck that. 
Yeah. Which is a big fucking shame, because then you'd miss out on 1, 2, 3, and ODST, which are really fucking good. And actually hold up really well, honestly. <laughs> Wait, Kyle Rittenhouse visited Hollywood? Oh yeah, the fuck around and find out. Yeah. <laughs> that man has the arm of a gamer. Gamer. Hollywood ain't no hoe. And no, it uh, is. no, no, Hollywood absolutely <laughs> is. They are notorious <laughs> for being a hoe. They are the hoe. They are infamous. Yeah, they are the alpha hoe. Okay, they're the one on the block who looks at all the other hoes and say, Honey, you ain't got no shit on me. They are okay. the supreme hoe. I can totally believe now that this guy fucking praised the wokeness and fucking rings of power. I can totally believe it now. Yeah, he's a fucking idiot. Tree, be prepared to have people like Vincent Martun, Acer Tart, and others to criticize your game poorly. Oh, I know. Oh, of course, I expect yeah. it. That, that's just the natural thing. Like, whatever you make, there's going to be people that dislike it. But if you're somewhat, like, if you're a personality on the internet in any capacity, there will be people who dislike your thing purely because it's from you. Yeah. Um, we've seen this recently with the Ripaverse, where there's people who have been cheerleading the downfall of Ripa and his comic since it was announced, since the campaign came out. And now they're out here saying, yeah, I got the book and it was terrible. It's like, okay, it doesn't matter what the actual contents of the book were because you were always going to think it was bad regardless of what it was. Your opinion on it is fucking yeah, useless. It does not matter in the slightest. What I'm more interested in is all the people who have gotten their books so far and are saying they loved it. Yep. All right, all right. Thus, they decided it was best that Halo be told in a serial format. How else would you truly capture the breath of this universe? I like Master Chief, but after playing Halo 3 and even going back and playing the previous two games in the franchise, to be real with y'all, I didn't really find him a compelling character. Because you weren't paying the fuck attention. And this, is the yeah. thing, this is the thing we talked about with Installation 00. You need to pay attention to the subtleties of it. He has a character. Gordon Freeman doesn't have a character. Right? Gordon Freeman, his actions are entirely dictated by what you, the player, do. Master Chief, we see him in cutscenes. We get to see his interactions. We get to see the first thing he does is when a Marine falls outside of a pod and is too scared to move, he grabs that Marine and throws him into the escape pod to safety. Yep. We see his character. We know his morality. We know what he will do. We know his jokes. And it's like, wait, well, touch. you're finally awake. Um, yeah, and you're waking on one piece. No, thanks to your driving. Thanks. So you did miss me. <laughs> like, My Gordon Freeman killed everyone. Yeah. It's like, that's on you, my dude. <laughs> yeah, technically, as playing Master Chief, you can kill the Marines. Uh, it's probably best not to do that. Though. Yeah. Um, and, and again, we, we see his joking side, too. Of like, this thing is falling apart. We'll make it. It's not going to make it. It'll hold. Pull up. Pull up. And then he intentionally dive bombs the bottom of, of the escape pod chute. So that he can jump up and grab the ledge just so he can annoy a Cortana. He intentionally <laughs> crashes the Banshee below where he's going so he can jump up and grab it. You did that on purpose. <laughs> but my god, if this guy actually fucking says, I just didn't find Game Master Chief all that compelling. But the show, yeah, oh, fuck off. If you try and say that the show's version of Master Chief is compelling, you're well, a fucking brainlet. Well, he will because he says the the show nails Master Chief, but it doesn't oh, at all. God, I know. It's just oh, I fucking hate it so much. This guy's so stupid. Who made that video again? The my Gordon Freeman killed everyone uh, video. Yeah, my version of Gordon Freeman was a psychopath who killed everyone. That was a uh, second opinion. Mm. 
as the second Half-Life video we covered. Yep. Because the first one was the... Um, I, you could change my mind. You can make an argument to change my mind, but you're not going to change my mind. Uh, and, oh, that's a French word. <laughs> <laughs> Such, I'm not Gordon Freeman. I don't owe a guy named Barney a beer. Barney owed you the beer. Yeah. When, okay. I, I, I would be Gordon Freeman. He owes me a beer. It's my fucking beer. Yeah. He was very stereotypical of most video game characters. Was Emotionalist, he? no external conflict, badass at everything. So how can you no be... No exter... Emotionless? We saw lots of emotion. Him joking and everything like that. Him feeling mournful about dead marines and stuff. Him being fucking terrified of what the marines were fucking wiped out by. Yeah, the instant the video thing, the video recording ends, he grabs that chip and he throws it aside, grabs his gun, and immediately he's looking around like, oh, fuck. Yeah, something is super fucked up here, and I do not know what it is. Yeah. This is something the Covenant were afraid of. Yes. No, not moronful. Mourn. Mourn. M-O-U-R-N. Mournful. <laughs> ah, he's a good Deep Space Nine character. <laughs> no, that's M O R N. Yeah, Morn. Morn. The best character. Talks too fucking much, though. I wish they gave him less dialogue. I know. <laughs> Every time you go in Cork's bar, you just won't shut the fuck up. Yeah. But at least he has very interesting things to say. Yeah, that's true. That That's the redeeming quality to him having so much dialogue. Yep. It is weird, though, that the side character has, like, three times as much dialogue as the entire main cast. That, yeah. That's, that's a little bit strange. He he has the same amount of dialogue as the ensemble cast combined, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Me, honestly, the template for video game characters Android head-ass Arnold Schwarzenegger looking head-ass dudes. I was not impressed. Did you need to say head-ass twice? Yeah, and he's talking about how the guy is macho and everything. He's not impressed. I ain't impressed with your fat-ass, motherfucker. Dude, I'm about to say it. I'm about to fucking say it. <laughs> Don't the, say it. Get the fucking food out your face and go hit a gym. How about that? I... I'm not going to attack his looks here. It's just to me... It seems like he just wasn't paying attention if that's all he got from Master Chief. Oh, absolutely, he wasn't paying attention. Again, like I said, it was, it was the same problem we've had with a lot of people, is there, Master Chief has no character. It's like, Master Chief has tons of fucking character. Do you not, are you not paying attention to anything that's happening? It's not the pay, it's not the gamer word, guys. It, it is not the gamer word. That is not what I was about to say. It's something that he looks like. He resembles a certain <laughs> character, yeah, and does. I really want to say it. <laughs> he does. I wonder if Chad is going to figure it out on their own now that you said that. If they figure it out on their own, then I will say it. I will have no problem saying it if they figure it out on their own. If, I, I if they don't, a, then I won't say it. I kind of want to give a tangential hint. Don't. Like, oh, let let them like, figure it out on their own. It'd be like 10 degrees of separation. All right, fair <laughs> All right. It was for three came through and took over and actually made Chief an individual. No, they did not. Oh, fuck right off. Three four three fucked up everything. They fucking destroyed the lore. They destroyed the world. Well, granted, <laughs> fucking Halo Reach already pretty much salted the earth before that. But then they walked around and they pissed all over and shit everywhere. No. Go fuck yourself. 343 totally bastardized everything. Good morning, Stag. How's the video so far? Not good. We're over halfway through the video at this point, and he has barely talked about the show. Yeah. Okay, one thing, one hint I will give. No, no, You're no, focusing. No no no, 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 hold on. You're focusing too much on Halo. It ha it does not have to do with Halo. Oh, okay, fair. That's fine. 
a soldier stunted by his upbringing whose closest connection was with his AI companion. Halo the series wastes no so time pathetic. establishing Spartans as this strong-armed authoritarian force of the UNSC. Strong-armed authoritarian force of the UNSC. You are a fucking idiot. Oh, God. No, I, I, I can't even get into this. No, let's just let's just go. Let's just get through more of this video. I want this video over with already. <laughs> Hold on, I want to yeah. read this. I want to read this comment real quick. Right. Identical dude. He was an individual before. I don't want to hear this full. <laughs> I don't want to hear this full no more. Pagan, whack his pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Bailiff, whack his pee pee. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> You've never heard that meme. Oh, no! God. You've never heard the bailiff wag his pee pee meme? No! What the oh my fuck? I have to show you that after stream then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heartless soldiers ready to execute any order no matter how immoral. The series does what the games don't and establish Chief as a mindless drone who's killed innocent people in the name of the U Innocent people. Terrorist psychopaths are not innocent. The insurrectionists are not innocent. They weren't innocent in the book series. They weren't innocent in the games. They are not good people. A mindless fucking drone. Again, you did not pay attention to anything in Halo 1, 2, and 3. You did not pay attention at all. Chief was never a mindless drone. But yeah, you know what Chief you played... was? He was humanity first. That's what he was. Yeah, if you played the first three Halo games and all you got from it was uh, he's a mindless drone, then... You weren't paying attention at all. Yeah, like, you paid so little attention to the point where you probably shouldn't be talking about the subject. How like, can he um, be a mindless drone if he actively goes against orders and defies, like his higher-ups because he doesn't like what they want to do. No, he's talking about at the start of the show. Oh. Yeah. When he's... <laughs> when he can't even bother trying to save anybody at that base. UNSC. Chief then comes across an artifact that transformed his entire being, made him question his purpose why? and act unpredictably. Yep, why did he do that? Due, first... why due, did do due that? to dumb plot bullshit, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Please explain to us why he did that. Go ahead. Please explain why, why he did that. First see him, he's a covenant killing machine. The classic character we all know. No, he isn't. No, he's not. When you first see him, a lot of people point out the fact he just looks off. And he does. He, d he does I, not it, look like Chief. There, he just looks lanky and gangly. I, I keep being reminded of that video where it said he looks like Spooderman. Yeah, and he really, really does. <laughs> he does. He really does look like Spooderman. <laughs> Please tell me there's a Master Chief version of Spooderman now, like someone drew it. Probably, wouldn't surprise me. Wearing that iconic helmet, which according to the that lore in helmet. the series, they were forbidden to remove. They were... The lore in the series, they were forbidden to remove their helmets? But... But everybody removes their helmets, you idiot! Are you talking about the, like, show or the, like, because they Cause, did cause take they, off... They take off their they helmets didn't... in the games? They take off their helmets in the books? Like, what? What are you talking Halo about? Halo 2 starts with uh, his helmet off, and you don't see his face. But he lifts his helmet up off the table and puts it on. Yeah, he's literally talking to the... the, the he, he, take, he takes his helmet off at the end of Halo 1. Yeah, he's talking to the fucking gunnery sergeant without his helmet on. What the fuck do you think he's doing there? And again, once again, you play Halo 2 and talk about how it's so much more expansive, but you didn't pay attention to even in that cutscene, 
Well, your optics are fried. Let's not even talk about the power converter. Son, you know how much gear this gear costs? <laughs> Tell that to the Covenant. Again, and see, tell that, that to the Covenant. Tell that to the Covenant isn't something a mindless drone would say. Yeah. Again, he's sassy. You said back. there wouldn't be cameras. You said you'd wear something nice. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and I you said you'd wear something nice. <laughs> Such a good line from. <laughs> <laughs> I I love the interactions between uh God why I, today is just a day where I'm forgetting everyone's fucking name. Sergeant Johnson. I love all the interactions with Sergeant Johnson. He is great. Oh my god. Retro R style says, Big false. They were never forbidden to take off the helmet. This guy is whack, looking like low tier gods broke uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh um, I would have far more respect for this for this guy if uh, he took a page out of low tier's low tier God's book with a little bit of lightning in the background. Yeah, as long as it was directed at someone who deserved it, like Paramount Plus's Halo shows Master Chief. Mm -hmm. You should kill yourself. You should fix yourself now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Chief oh, wait, hold on. Oh, he's, old, he's doing the People thing. He's doing the music thing, by the way. People in chat are saying he mixed up Mando and Halo. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if he did that. Yeah, I can believe it. Surprise me. Uh, yeah, I, I could believe that at this point. That That is unfortunate. <laughs> Oof. But again, listen to it. Again, he's doing... Music makes feels here. Listen to the music. He's trying to manipulate his audience already. Machine, the classic character we all know, wearing that iconic helmet, which according to the lore in the series, they were forbidden to remove. <laughs> Chief <laughs> remo <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Get ready. It's it, This is going to get really annoying with how much he does this, because... He really tries to push the fucking, like, music makes feel shit. Ugh. What a pansy. Moving his helmet was a powerful gesture. Not only... <laughs> no, no, it, it was wasn't. not. It was not a powerful gesture. It made no. every single one of us think he was an idiot. During yeah. our watching of that moment, I literally said, fucking kill yourself to Master Chief. Yeah. So... Not only is it just fucking if, plain retarded because it means he can just die instantly right then and there because he has no reason to trust her, but it's also completely undone when the rest of the show, he barely ever has the fucking helmet on, making yep. it entirely pointless and not eventful whatsoever because it's nothing special. Yep, yeah. and we see was... in the show, we see in the show, the other Spartans constantly have their helmets off too. In front of the Marines and everything, all over the yeah. place. Now, all I want to I want to give an example, and uh, I'll say up front, it's not the greatest example. The Mandalorian is fucking dog shit. I hate that show. I hate season one. I hate season two. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of dumb stuff in it. Like you need to take off your helmet for this face scan when the scan is literally, do you have a face? Which most living things do. Yeah. Most living creatures have a face. So I'm just going to say that now. Um, but at least at the end of season two, they tried to, to have a moment where he took his helmet off for uh, Babby Yoda, who I legit want to punt into a pool of lava. Yeah. Um, Babby Yoda's evil as fuck. But you could at least see what they were going for there, where it was this moment where, yes, I'm going to break my code because I care about the small child so much. And it at least had a little bit there because he didn't take off his helmet in every single episode. They actually tried to keep the never take your helmet off thing somewhat. Yep. Now, again, Mando was bad, but that's a moment where you could at least see what they were going for. And it did have a bit more meaning because of the fact he didn't take it off every 30 seconds. Yeah. Only did the trust of the young girl he was ordered to 
represented to the audience that this ain't the chief from the video games. Which well, he shouldn't have been not... trusting her. Yeah, he shouldn't have trusted her, and he shouldn't have shown that he wasn't the chief from the video games. The only people that were really interested in this would have been game fans. So this is bad, bad call. And again, what it did do was it made Chief look like a moron. I'm going to take my helmet off in front of this terrorist who just admitted to my superiors that she would rather let everybody die than help humanity win the war. She is going to lie and get more and more people killed because of her selfish pettiness. Let me take my helmet off so she can shoot me. Blah, 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 blah. Sir Kratosis, Mando video when? Look, it's not off the table. Um, yep. But it is also not a priority at all. I've got the secret video I'm working on now. I've got the Rings of Power video. I've got to do the Fallout 4 analysis, the Fallout 3 analysis, the Skyrim analysis. Mm. I want to do Doctor Who videos. I want to do fucking Game of Thrones. Like, there is so much on the plate right now. Yep. That's also not including Bebop flicks, which I need to do, too, because I forgot about that for a moment. And I want to do a Halo show video. There's so many videos I want to do. That's not even the entire list. That's not even talking about the stuff that I'm not even mentioning yet, because that's so far off in the future. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Flannel McManel. But, guys, they paid big bucks to have Pedro Pascal grunt and say things without having a drop of water on set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah shame he turned out to you know be a supporter of pedophiles so no. yeah that's a shame yep god that wall is getting full <laughs> this was a character who just started a journey of self discovery <laughs> Un <laughs> oh my god Oh, oh man. And he found out he was bisexual and trans at the same time. Lore, Lauren, if you didn't know, Pedro Pascal uh, was doing the whole, during the whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing. He showcased Rosenbaum and he's like, the heroes that lost their lives say his name. Yeah, that was not. Yeah, he one. glorified a pedophile and tried to say that he was a good person. Yeah. Knowing that he was a pedophile. Yep, knowing this is yeah. already after Did, it was revealed he, that it was multiple, multiple children. Didn't he even say something like justice for JoJo or something for fucking Rosenbaum? Yes. Yeah. God, that's disgusting. He's a trans saying Healy. <laughs> wow. Oh, <no>. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, it would explain why he was helping the girl who didn't kill, uh, didn't care if a bunch of people died. Yeah. Yeah. Covering secrets of his past that would shatter everything he knew, forcing him to become someone different, someone better than he was before. But he isn't. He gets way worse. He, he yeah. gets way worse at helping people and killing off the Covenant and everything. He... He becomes an active threat and a, and a hindrance to the UNSC. Uh, I will say quickly, Flannel McMahon in chat pointed out that was Mark Ruffalo, not um, Pedro Pascal, that did the Justice for JoJo thing. I'm pretty sure they both did, because I know Mark yeah, I was Ruffalo gonna say, didn't he like, did didn't he like retweet it? Yeah, and then Mark I think Ruffalo I remember him being standing on people's graves for dying in tornadoes and saying, "See, this is what climate change does. That's what you get uh, for believing in climate that... change." That pissed me off when um, the actress who played Deanna Troy from The Next Generation did that for Texas mm. when they had that big uh, ice storm or snowstorm a year or two ago. Yeah, but yeah. George Sakai just did it for Florida and everything. Yeah. God, these people it's, are so They're all pieces disgusting. of shit. Hollywood are pieces yeah. of shit. They are pieces it of is, shit. It is sadly ironic that actors from a show that's all about the greatness of humanity and, like, how, like, all about being a good person and stuff. Not all of the actors, but especially most of the TNG actors just turned out to be pieces of shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's um, disgusting. But anyways, yeah, back to the video. Master Chief was leg legitimately at his best in this show in the first five minutes of the episode. 
Yeah. Or the first five minutes of his appearance, and it was all downhill from there. It was. And that first little bit wasn't great either, by the way. And this new chief was the hero humans really needed to win the war. No. No, they lose it all! <laughs> In fact, they're far worse off because he is so absurdly emotionally compromised beyond belief. Yeah. This isn't simply a soldier who doesn't have his emotions in check. This is like crazy woman territory where he he's just so emotionally charged with everything that he doesn't do anything that like everything is based on emotion. Yeah. No logic yeah. whatsoever. Which yep. fucks over everything constantly. Yeah. He he's the active downfall of so many Marines and gets so many of the other Spartans hurt because of his pettiness. He gets the artifact taken. He gets the fucking entire mission failed. He gets all these fucking Marines killed. He then tries to kill his superior multiple times. Yep. Oh my god. And then they just let him get away with it too. They don't even try to reprimand him or do anything about it. They're just like, yeah, no, let him wander around. In fact, in fact, let him take this spy that we know works with the Covenant and just let them walk around all over our, our installation, our secret military installation. Yeah, just let them walk around wherever the fuck they want. On a planet that the Covenant don't know about yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, that won't that won't be bad at all. Oh my god, this show is so fucking stupid. See, Master Karen could win the war after having talked to the Covenant's boss. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said I want to see your manager. manager. Yeah. yeah. I want to see your manager. TV show chief is the schoolgirl who screams when the school power goes out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I vaguely remember that happening at one point. He hasn't, he, he literally curls up in the corner, has an autistic cry. I'm not even fucking kidding. Yeah. I still yeah, find why it is fucking... there always Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say that why is there always one girl like that? There's always the one where if the power goes out for even a second and, and when you're it's... in school, there's always the one girl in class who screams and it's like But why? It's it's not even that. Sometimes it's just a teacher turning off a light because they're gonna put a movie on or they're they've got that uh slide project not slide projector but the translucent sheet projector thing yeah. um that's featured prominently in the suicide squad fantastic movie by the way yeah um yeah i i don't remember much of when i was in school because i've got a shitty memory but i do vaguely remember a girl screaming when the teacher turned off the lights <laughs> and it's just like God. why yeah <laughs> Ten Australian. Fagan, have, oh. have you ever considered they have played a lot of amnesia? Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. God, I, <laughs> what was I thinking? Of course, <laughs> she was afraid that her her sanity meter was going to drain. Yeah. Ten Australian didgeridoos from Dialiocon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, Stag. On a scale of one to Beyond Acerthorn, how bad is this video? This it's, it's is one right now, honestly. I was going to say, this is the best video we've covered since Stag 50. Yeah. I, this like, is the one easily that, the best. This, so far, at least. It could go way more wild from here. It's yeah. shit, but it's the best of we've done so far. So this would be this would be probably the only video thus far that wouldn't be in the Ace or Thorn tier. Which is Well, terrifying. I don't think every video we've done is Ace or Thorn tier, like, since Stag yeah, 50. Yeah, some of them are but... worse. <laughs> some of them are worse. Some were just in the tier above Acer Tard tier, though. Like, they were bad, but they weren't quite Acer Tard. It is amazing how many Acer Tard tier videos we've done. Yeah. Since 50, though. Because, dear yeah. God. I, I didn't think that. I didn't think we could dig underneath the barrel, but, you know, we're, we're almost all the way to China at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And, and how consistent, too. It, it wasn't just like, oh, we got one. Okay, well, there's a couple good ones in between. Oh, there's another state. No, it's literally. 
Acer Thorn, Acer Thorn, Acer Thorn, Acer Thorn, Acer Thorn, and a, a semi okay one. Shit, but it's, <laughs> Acer it's Thorn, not Acer Thorn, 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 Acer Thorn. Yeah. The last one had a couple good points, and then we got to this one, which is meh. It's... Yeah, it's it's insane. Like, how the fuck can we consistently find that level of shit constantly? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. They are some uh, mold that's gone airborne and is infecting everyone. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, to be fair, the Acer mold is still better than the uh, Vincent mold. Oh, yeah. The final episode brings these ideas to a resounding emotional close as Chief makes the sacrifice play to not only retrieve the, the artifact, but save his team in the process. I'm but just he doesn't do anything. Fucking... He he literally just kills himself so that Cortana can meet puppet his body through necromancy. I I was just looking at that action scene again and looking how fucking shit it looks. Yeah, and it does. Emotional damage. Yep, I agree. Has Vincent Emotion. Martin commented on your video about him? No, I blocked him because I was tired of dealing with his stupid, retarded bullshit. Mm, that's fair. I would have let him spew his fucking nonsense because it would have been wild. Oh, yeah, it would have been wild, but I have... Look, I am not a very patient person, that's especially fair. when it comes to dealing with stupid people. <laughs> that's fair. I think I've only ever blocked one non-bot ever. Um... And I'm not counting the stuff here because people are saying, like, racist shit or, you know, accusing of, like, horrific crimes or anything like that. I'm not talking about here in the chat. I mean, on my stuff. I've only blocked one non-bot one, and it's because he was just so fucking toxic. There was nothing. There was no conversation anywhere. It was just pure hate. Sounds like a lovely person. Yeah. It, it, no, it was no matter what I would do in Warhammer Online, no matter how I would fight or who I would kill, it was always like, oh, it's a bullshit. You had to get the jump on him. So like, I was like, dude, what are you doing? I even asked him, what are you doing? He's like, you should just stop playing fucking Witch Hunter and shit like that. And it's like, okay. No, I'm not going to. I enjoy playing Witch Hunter. And then I would fight people, and there was a Lobie that I killed because he was running supplies. I'm like, oh, you would go after the Lobies because you're so shit. And it's like, he's running supplies. I can't let him get the supplies back to the keep. Seriously, what are you doing? Bruh. Yeah, it's just Vince. one of those, and it was just like, okay, after the fourth day of that, it's like, yeah, no, you're, you're just gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, Vincent Vartan responded with an 8 minute and 30 second video. See, someone had watched that, and the funny thing is, is that he doesn't actually respond to my video, apparently. He responds to what I was saying in my Discord server, meaning he's got a spy in there like fucking <laughs> like Acer Thorn does. does. <laughs> Why do I keep attracting these crazy fucking weirdos? I just, yeah, as they're I so said, alike. As I said in the video, um, and that's one thing that, um, another thing too, is me and Pagan are going to have to work on uh, script, uh, the script reading thing. Because it does sound very forced, but that just happens because we haven't we haven't done lots of script reading for our uh, video stuff. So that's a skill yeah. you got to work on. But in when we were doing it, we were watching it live, and we did the joke about the orbs, and and Cree says, "I can see my reflection," and I said, "It's because you live rip free in his fucking head." And it's so true, it's so true. If if you genuinely didn't give a fuck, Vincent. If you didn't care about Cree and you thought he was a liar and disingenuous and a nothing burger of a thing, you wouldn't hide a spy in his server so you can just pick apart every little thing he says. Well, not just that. He wouldn't be talking about me across numerous Discord yes. servers, as we've learned now. Yep. Uh, and half the answer to that, like fucking Reddit. Yeah, they where he's mentioned people. me numerous times. We'll get random messages from somebody who's like, guess what I found? I'm like, oh no. I'll <laughs> just give us like that's how we got his retarded song that he did. It's like oh, yeah, no. and, and by the way, like he had to have been planning that in advance, unless he got an artist who was super quick 
to draw that crusty jank owl. Mm. Well, he admitted, remember, he said, like, he had been planning on doing something like that for a while and that he'd already started working on it. So ah, then that was before yeah. the video came out. So, yeah, he Hold it on. was definitely premeditated. <laughs> That's even funnier then. It is. He, he, one of his comments from another server was saying it was insane that I made two videos on him. When, keep in mind, he already made four videos on me at that point. <laughs> I think five, and, uh, actually, on you at that point. Five? Yeah, because it didn't. It wasn't his thing. Five parts. No, his videos on me were three parts. But then he made a response mm. to my short little video talking about how he called me a liar. <laughs> yeah. So he did four videos on me, and now he's done an additional two because yeah. he couldn't handle being criticized. He couldn't handle being wrong, like a fucking little weirdo. Yep. Guys, so here, here's a spoiler alert for you. You're going to be wrong about something at some point. Take it. Take it on the chin and grow from it. it yeah, don't matter. double down. Yeah. Unless you can actively prove that, like, you know, that, you're no, just you straight up right. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you could just be like, yeah, no, you're fucking wrong and here's why. Okay. If you can't, don't double fucking down on it. Yo, that's that's the that's the personality type I hate the most. The insults you, accuses you of things you did not say, you gently reply, and he goes, Oh my god, triggered LOL salty. I hate those people so much. Yeah, yeah he is definitely one of those. Yeah. Cause he is literally bitching and crying right now that we weren't being respectful to him and that's why he won't like take any of our criticisms <laughs> seriously. But at the same time, he's the one who insulted us first. Yeah. And is has been nothing but insulting and literally made a video calling me bad faith when I was extremely polite to him in the comment section. And we'd had no other interactions at like before or after. Yeah, you're and it's responding like, in good faith. Yeah, uh, but then it's like, yeah, but somehow we're the ones that are fucking butt mad and upset that he's fucking insulting us and shit, but then he's also the one complaining that, oh, they, they insulted me and they did it first, even though we didn't do it first. Yeah. Well, he even posted that song with a message, this is gonna make Creed mad. It's like, what? No. no. It's, it's no, just it's, fucking... I'll tell you it made... what it made Creed do. Creed immediately <laughs> curled his spine and shivered like, ugh, from the cringe. He was just like, It oh. is, yeah. It, it was it's embarrassing. Just pathetic. The, the audio file was sent to me, right? And I had no idea what it was going to be. I just thought it was called Creeptosis. So I pressed play and heard the first couple notes of Creep by Radiohead. I was like, nah. Nah, I, I can't handle <laughs> no, that level can't. of Creep. Yeah, no. Like, oh my god, it's so funny they think it's going to make you mad when, like, it, for me, it's like, god, I almost feel sorry for you. I almost pity you of how pathetic you are. Like, Jesus, that is so cringe. <laughs> <laughs> and five pounds from Threadknot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Once again, Creed laughs about him living rent free in my head. But has he even seen the economy these days? I'm doing Creed a favor. <laughs> <laughs> See, the, the problem with that is you need to like swap out words for entirely different words that start with the same letter. Living and you'll be a bit freeze. more accurate. Let's see. Mm. Once again, Creed laughs about him living rent freeze in my head. But has <laughs> he even said the economy or economy these days? I'm doing Creed a flavor. <laughs> 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 I was not flavor. expecting the flavor there. That was good. Oh. <laughs> I I still can't believe some of the shit he says in that video. It is like so hilariously bad. It it keep in mind, people. This isn't a simple issue of someone having a speech impediment. Because he fucking types like this too. Yes, he yeah. does. He actually fucking types Moyer, Brown. Well. Moyer Brown generalization. Get the side dish quest. Like, <laughs> how? How is this person real? Yeah.
<laughs> like, I still I enjoyed get... that as I still enjoyed that joke though. The mortar hardy incoming. Yeah. <laughs> fucking he says it's written as mole wrapped meat in his fucking notes, but then says mole rat meat. And it's like, well then why didn't you fix yeah. that? Yes, mm -hmm. this is this is how fucked it is. He said mole wrapped meat in the comment to me in one of the comments to me in the video. Uh before he made his video. And I'm just thinking, what the fuck? How, how do you get mole wrapped meat? But it's even fucking funnier when he shows text on screen quoting me as saying mole wrapped meat when it's mole rat meat. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> the ineptitude is off the fucking charts. It is hilarious. It is. <laughs> Moldier it's brown. Genuinely funny. <laughs> God, and it was everybody's name. It was... Well, did he? He didn't really mention all that many names, so yeah, he did fuck up most of them at least. Yeah. Um, he even called Billy Creel uh, Billy Creed after he yep. had been calling me Creed for the entire video. Yeah. God, that was so weird. Yeah. Yep. Like at least Creed Creed, I could kind of understand. Because they're, they're sort of similar. But L isn't. Creel. Creed. <laughs> completely different sounds. Absolutely. How do you have the band that on the mind? <laughs> he what? I said he just had the band on his mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. He had, he had the, the band Creed on his mind. Look at this photograph! He also spelt despite as dissipate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> oh, oh my God! I hope somebody gets my joke, please. I'll take a pity laugh. That's fine. I I missed what yours was because the dissipate thing. <laughs> a, yeah, oh well, yeah, he had the he had the band Creed on his mind. Look at this photograph. <laughs> 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 I will take a pity time... laugh. I will take a pity laugh. <laughs> Every time I see it makes me laugh. <laughs> How do I get so red? And what the <laughs> hell is on Joey's head? Yes. Got it. Shush, shush. That's the point. Shush, shush. I just remember. I just remember this fucking. I don't remember what movie it was from. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think it was Up a Creek Without a Paddle. I think that's what it was. And like they've been stranded out in the woods for god knows how long and they're they're like climbing a bank and they can hear music and one of the guys is like oh my god i've never been so happy to hear creed in my entire life <laughs> <laughs> chat okay so some of the people fell for it but chat it's vincent martin we're talking about and everybody knows nickelback wrote the um i'm not okay <laughs> that's all that was one of theirs right I don't know. I don't listen to Nickelback, so I, I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, I don't either. I don't listen to Nickelback. Oh, God. Yeah. Chat, think about it as if I'm pretending to be Cree. I'm pretending to be Vincent Martin. All right? Chat, think about everything I'm saying at this moment as if I'm trying to be Vincent Martin. <laughs> You'll figure out the joke. <laughs> Nickelback. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go. Let's just continue. What I like even more about this chief is his relationship with Cortana. Where he constantly Why? abuses her, says, go away, you're making me look bad in front of my friends. Yeah, the like, games did it way better. Like, you, there was so much more synergy and camaraderie between them in the games. In the show, it's literally just, I fucking hate you! Go away! <laughs> literally, the first interaction between them is him getting pissy like a child because he has a babysitter now. Yeah. Oh my god, and remember he's like, and I don't want to see you again or whatever, and then goes down the elevator as if as if he's actually can leave her behind, <laughs> even though she's in his brain. 
I was going to mention that earlier. We just got oh, caught up in the conversation. So fucking stupid. I love that scene just because it's such a perfect representation of how fucking stupid the show is. In fact, you know what? I should start the Halo video when I eventually get around to it with that statement. Here's an example of how stupid this show is through and through. Master Chief angrily leaves Cortana in a corridor as he goes down an elevator even though she is implanted into his head and cannot leave her behind. She is you know still what? with yep. him. You know what? I would have given them a point if after that scene where he tells her, like, I don't want to see you anymore, and then goes down the elevator, it shows him, like, getting to the bottom, and the door's open, and he steps out, and she's right there. And, and then she just, she just straight up says, like, what did you think? I'm in your head. I literally can't leave. Yep. I, I <laughs> More than that, I'd like to see a vertical slice of the elevator going down, and she's just clipping through the floors, keeping her feet on the same level as his. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would have been great or, too. Or she says, "I don't want to see you again," and then so she goes, she she nods, the elevator doors close, and then she starts talking to him again. He's like, "What did I just say? You don't want to see me again? I'm talking to you. It's hearing me. They're different things." something anything other than her literally just backing down and not making a peep after that it's like oh my god where's yeah. the banter where's the like synergy at all with these characters i don't feel it whatsoever yeah also i had to explain to chat what the joke was so you know that joke's dead now forever rip yep rip and peace we're, joke. we're we're almost done though we are almost done yeah kind in the of. video game chief and cortana gets along without a hitch that's fine, but I think I'd rather see the. They get along without a hitch. John, John in the games is actively poking fun at Cortana, and Cortana pokes fun back at him. Like they, they're, they're playful with each other. They actually have character and chemistry with each other. It actually feels like they know each other. Yeah. Like, oh, I see you're in One Piece. No thanks to your driving. Thanks. Oh, so you did miss me. It's it's so good to establish right off the bat that that John, he is he's stern and everything, but he also has a sense of humor to him. He also has that little bit of playfulness to him, and he specifically does it to Cortana. And she does it right back. Mhm. Mm like um I really like the moment in Halo 2 where they're on the ring and they've got the uh, hologram of the Prophet in front of them. And she's like, they're planning on activating the rings. Are you sure? And then she automatically translates it. The holy fires will burn and blah, 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 blah. The holy fire will burn across the entire <laughs> galaxy and we shall ride the wave to ascension. Yeah. And then she's sure? just like, yeah. <laughs> It's great. It's such a great moment. <laughs> Trust built between these two characters so that when they are in the thick of battle and they must rely on each other, it... Oh, yes! That is one of the best scenes. Clay oh. McMahon says, I love the part where she uses the Halo teleport and flips him upside down and then he hits his helmet. Yeah. He's like, well, we can't, we're not going to get there in time. We can't even use the teleport system. Do you know what you're doing? I sure do. And then he teleports in, and you look around, and then all of a sudden Chief looks up and realizes he's on the ceiling. He slams down on the ground like, ugh! Oh, I see. You have to invert that. And he smacks his helmet. Right. Uh, sorry about that, Chief. <laughs> also, he talked about how... He likes the conflict between them, but when they get in the battle, it's the whole they're working together thing. Mm. That was a flip on a dime. He <laughs> fucking hated her until the very moment she was like, yeah, Halsey is trying to fuck with you. You should maybe not do what she says. Yeah. Those scenes more weight. Like in episode 8, when Cortana betrays Dr. Halsey and assists Chief in fighting off his team. This finale just further cemented my love for these two characters, and I cannot you're so wait. so easy to please. Oh, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> these characters are terrible. Literal NPC right now. 
Beep boop. The the music said I should feel emotion. I feel emotion. I am attached to plank of wood and robot without soul and annoying girlfriend stereotype. Yep. And do you notice how he's playing the fucking epic music over all this shit too? Yep. Music so, makes oh feels. That's what the NPCs always think. Five dollars from the Wayfarer. Thank you. It would have been hilarious to see Cortana act like uh, Courier's brain from old world, old world blues. John Halo stuck with an overly sardonic voice in his head. <laughs> and whose brilliant idea was it to stick your hands in the radioactive waste? <laughs> hey, man, I saw something shiny in there. Yeah. <laughs> To see more of them in. Oh, it's even better if you're dumb. If you are dumb, dumber than a box of rocks, you're, it actually turns out your brain is actually incredibly intelligent. But your your nerve endings are so fucked. <laughs> you're so stupid. You can't interpret what the brain actually wants. <laughs> the conversation as, as a one intelligence courier is fucking hilarious. In season two. Look, I understand fans wanted Chief to keep his helmet on, to not be morally ambiguous and not have sex. Like, I'm not it's not that he's morally ambiguous. It's that, um, it's a, in the show, he's an idiot and incompetent. And in the games, he chooses to be stoic. He's an icon, but he still has those moments of humor and levity and grief and remorse. Like, you think he's a nothing, he's just a robotic drone that doesn't think of anything, which is ironically what you are. But that moment when he is holding Sergeant Johnson as he's dying, you can tell John is in pain. One of his oldest friends is now dying in his arms. And how much it is crushing him. And even Cortana comes out and tries to make him feel better, but he can't bring himself to say anything. There's no, like, quips between them. She only says, Chief, I'm sorry. And there's just nothing. There's nothing else. He, do he doesn't have that same, like, body language. He's kind of slunched. He's um, slouched forward and everything. Slunched. <laughs> <laughs> slunched. <laughs> He's slunched forward. Oh, it's such... Again, if you pay attention, you get his characterization. It's it's the same thing in old movies where the people didn't need to say any words. You could act with the eyes and you could see what their eyes were doing and that would tell you all the emotion they were trying to hide on their face. Like the scene in The Godfather when Michael is working through if he's going to go through with the execution or not. Is he going to gun down the police chief and the Turk in this restaurant in front of everybody? And you see his eyes going to the Turk, looking over at the police chief, looking down at the table towards where he's got the gun stash now. And he's looking around and around. You hear the train coming by and it screeches. And then he immediately locks eyes with the Turk and you realize it. In that moment, when he locks eyes with the Turk and he is glaring at him that he has decided, he stands up and he shoots the Turk right in the head. You didn't need a single bit of dialogue of him going over in his head because you can see it all with his eyes only. You can see him working over everything he's going to do. People are making the Wojak comparisons to this guy again. Yep. <laughs> I don't blame them. Yeah. I miss I miss movies like that. Godfather is such a great fucking movie. Holy shit. I'm actually, I'm actually still having a hard time. Bond he had with this character. Wait, what? Did that skip? No, that, that was uh, before the pause. People are upset about Master Chief having sex. 
no, 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 no. But there was a, there's a thing. I was actually having trouble, like, th this part right here. Did that skip? Look, I understand fans wanted Chief to keep his helmet on. To not be morally ambiguous and not have sex. Like, I'm actually, I'm actually still having a hard time getting over that one. The bond he had. Getting over that one. Okay, I because I didn't hear the getting over that. I heard the, I'm still having a hard time, and then it just went to the bond he had. So I was like, hard time what? What? What the fuck happened? Yeah, Which, my go. God, if he doesn't understand why people had an issue with, with him, him having... Diggy with it? Yeah. Yeah. It isn't the oh fact my... that John had sex. I'm going to spoil that for you right now. It's not the set. That's not the, that's not the thing. If it was done well, every single person, if this was a good show and, and Master Chief bang someone, they would be doing the, the memes from uh, Dead Before Dawn, uh, pussy, 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 and they be doing the Happy Gilmore, get it on thing stuff. No, that is, it, the problem is not that he had sex. No. We'll see if that's what he thinks the problem actually was. with this character McKee was crucial to the plot and Chief's development as a hero. No, it actually made Chief more of a villain and it was only crucial to the plot because the plot MacGuffin magical plot armor bullshit said it was. It's so... It, it's so fucking stupid. Their only bond was the fact that magic existed in this world and they could both be seen, they could see each other on the ring of Halo. That was it. Yeah, that's the only thing they had in common at all. What's that movie? What movie? I think the one you were talking about, uh, the, the Godfather. The... Oh, the Godfather. The Godfather is fantastic. You're talking about the scene where uh, he decides to kill the Turk, and he's acting solely with his eyes. That's the Godfather, the original Godfather movie. If you mean the pussy, 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 that's uh, um. Dead Before Dawn? Or is that Dust Till Dawn? Dust Till Dawn. Sorry, not Dead Before Dawn. Um, Dust... and that's, the, that's the guy trying to bring people into the adult club and everything. Um, and he does the whole joke about what kind of different pussy they have. Yeah. From Dust to Dawn is such a great movie. I just wish the whole reveal wasn't um, spoiled beforehand. Have you seen From Dust to Dawn, Pagan? Uh... I don't think so. You, you Do you probably... know what it's about? <sighs> okay, no. we're going to watch it at some point. Don't yeah, look yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time. I the, saw it obviously like the... two or three years ago. It, it is a good movie for what it is. Mm -hmm. Obviously the scene that stands out is the pussy scene because, you know, that got memed to fucking death. As to set up the fall of Reach, as this one Forbes writer is claiming. And sex with a human covenant spy prisoner while Kotana watches it appears it triggers events that will lead to the fall of Reach. I, well, I mean, in this stupid continuity, it probably does. Yeah. Well, also, in this stupid continu continuity, they brought a fucking covenant ship to Reach. Yep. Like, and I a covenant can't... spy to reach. I would be holding her ass in a fucking asteroid prison. Yes. And that covenant ship would be taken to some off-site research facility. Not reach. Yep. What if there's a fucking tracker in it? Which, of course, they would put a fucking tracker in their ship. Are you fucking kidding me? Yep. Yep. Oh, shit, I went too far back. Fuck. Oh, I'm right there. Arthur McKee was crucial to the plot and Chief's development as a hero. It did not happen as to set up the fall of Reach, as this one Forbes writer is claiming. You don't know this that. This guy, in my opinion, is a classic example of fan entitlement and reactionary criticism. What? How what? Is that because he points out the because he points out the stupidity of Master Chief fucking a Covenant spy who's a prisoner. While Cortana watches like a creepy cuckold, it is fucking creepy. 
Like, oh yeah, I forgot about Kaktana. Yeah, she's yeah. literally watching and like looks sad and everything. It is so like, what the fuck? You you know what makes the scene even worse? What's that? So, Cortana is standing there watching, right? Mm. -hmm. She can feel it too. That's oh yeah, because she's in his body. She can literally feel it. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> god, it um, just gets worse. The scene only would have been complete if she showed up with a fucking snack tray at that point. Oh, one second. Isn't intercourse with a prisoner of war some kind of war crime? <laughs> if you had a logical universe, sure. And you especially wouldn't trust a fucking covenant spy. A covenant spy. You know the covenant are on a genocide war with your people. Come on. Yeah. When literally the only thing they have in common is that, oh, well... We saw the ring in a dream together. Oh, she must be trustworthy. Mm. Even though she proves that she's not trustworthy, like, an episode later. God. Yeah. It's so fucking terrible. This, this show is just so bad. Uh, five Australian kangaroos from Dailyokan. Thank you very much. Cortana, I'm really feeling it! Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> uh, what did I miss? Uh, nothing, we were just talking about it, too. And uh, Cortana, creepy cuckold, that's not a description I ever wanted to apply to her. Yep, the same. Yeah. Um, right, let's, let's, oh yeah. I don't see how this is entitlement. We're, we're in this tweet, does anything come across as demanding or like feeling entitled to something? I don't care if this is a spoiler, the world must know. Mm. Not not really an entitlement thing. In this week's Halo episode, Master Chief has sex with a human covenant spy prisoner while Cortana, while Cortana watches and it appears it triggers events that will lead to the fall of Reach. Could That's just kind of a very short analysis of what he thinks is going to happen yeah and we don't know if that's going to happen or not because that all likelihood it probably will lead to the fall of reed but like that, that, that terrible that that's just not what entitlement is though yep no it isn't again this is an this we are currently watching an, a video from an npc brain he doesn't know what entitlement is npc brains are most commonly like the thing that points them out from everyone else is the fact that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about and they hey, don't know what words mean. Such, didn't we recently cover someone who uh, got the definitions of certain words wrong? Frequently? <laughs> oh, yeah, all the time. And hmm. what the fuck a fallacy was. <laughs> oh, oh he God. knew what a fallacy was. It's just that he got the definitions of every single fucking one wrong. Yeah. Just oof. God, speaking of fucking people not understanding terms or and words and shit, did you see the fucking, uh, oh, what, what was it? Was it, uh, the people that were, oh God, I think AOC was giving some kind of speech or something, and some people said, like, in the crowd, like, uh, that they didn't want war, and... Uh, so now, and now people, like, a bunch of lefties are calling those people who said that they didn't want war fascists. Yeah. It's like, you don't understand what that word is, do you? Yeah. Holy shit. Well, again, they called people that were asking for uh, freedom of speech fascists. And yeah. smaller government fascists. And it's like, yeah, you have no idea what you're talking about, do you? It's literally the opposite of fascism. <laughs> Fucking idiots. All right. But I digress. Halsey versus Chief is the real battle at the heart of season one. Their struggle explodes. <laughs> the real battle at the heart of season one. Whereas we have a current genocide war going on. That's not the real battle, though. Yeah. The real battle is Master Chief's mommy issue. 
Oh my god. <laughs> um, uh, Retro Our Style says, like She-Hulk, didn't hire any lawyers consultants to help them write lawyer characters. It is clear they didn't hire any military consultants for the show. Oh, trust me, I was losing my mind about the the fucking military intelligence that was in this show. Are, are you telling me it's poor design to have a table in the mil middle of a giant tent to have a uh, military briefing there. Yeah. And it's so crowded that people are standing outside and can't hear what the briefing is. Yeah, they're standing out in the fucking sunlight outside of the tent having to lean over each other so they can hear the fucking briefing. Yeah, really bad design. It's even worse design is that this entire base, you have to drive a couple clicks away from the base, go up a hill, and then drive a couple clicks back towards the base to get to your fucking aircraft now this is more of a question than anything else because it's probably not got a real life comparison sorry sorry comparison <laughs> um, if you had such a base wouldn't you be able to erect some kind of temporary ramp from the main base up to your fucking spaceship or even better oh, as gets yeah shown? i was about to say even better just fucking set up your base next to where that ramp is instead of on the opposite side of the ramp yeah no that that doesn't make any sense so chat for anyone that didn't see the show they have a base in the bottom of a ravine right and their aircraft are landing at the top of the ravine their aircraft are probably 100 feet from them they're, they're not that far away they're only 100 feet away from the base itself okay like a normal base it sounds fine they don't put a ramp or anything up to this. So you actually have to drive away from the base, do a 180 up a natural incline, and drive all the way back to the base to get to your aircraft. So naturally, what the fuck do you think happens when the Covenant attack this base? Their air support is fucked instantly. Yep. Yep. And they have to drive all that way just to get the fucking artifact from the bottom level to the top level. And they, yeah. so th that's the only reason all this shit can happen. It's literally the only reason they designed it this way is so that the plot could happen. Because yeah. in no fucking logical world would anybody build their fucking base in like a two level system like that and then have the ramp to get up there be on the literal opposite side of the fucking canyon from them no 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 uh do they not have any budget for the base building no they must have had a ludicrous budget because we see multiple tents and drilling operations and everything to drill into the sides of the ravine so that they can actually put bases into the wall and everything we're talking about a ludicrous military operation and they didn't do a single ramp up to their fucking aircraft and you know what yeah i would be fine if they actually swapped if they put the aircraft down in the ravine so that it's out of sight lines and it can't be targeted by direct fire weaponry or artillery would have a bit harder time in hitting it because it's down in the ravine itself they didn't do that and you would still build a ramp only instead this time you um, no, you still need an industrial ramp. Yeah, you, you still build an industrial ramp, but now you don't have all the tents and stuff in the way at the bottom of the ravine. If you're already going to do drilling operations, why can't you drill into the top of the ravine? Yeah, and like like I said, the only reason they had it that way was so that they could have their super long drive yeah. around, so that they could have for their the fucking plot. stupid... Yeah, for the plot, so they could have their stupid scenes where... They get separated and then they lose the artifact and all that shit. Because otherwise, they could just drive right up to the fucking ship and be gone already. Yep. Which, the Covenant want them to escape because they need the spy to f f go into their midst. They want them to escape. They actively want them to escape. But they want the artifact. So how do you allow them to escape and not let them get away with the artifact? Well, do you do the stupid-ass drive and Master Chief has his autistic fit moment and dives off a cliff onto a banshee? Which the banshees are, for some reason, flying super low. This is the thing I hate about close air support. Games, movies, everything like that gets it so wrong. Your close air support 
does not mean your fucking air support is going to be within high five distance of the people on the ground. Your close air support is going to be hovering up as a speck way up above the battle, waiting and watching and using as much advanced technology, especially in the Halo universe. You're going to be using all of their different like scanners and system like that to just fire down where they're needed. You don't need to be in visual fucking contact range from the ground to target the ground. The AC-130 gunship does not need to be able to be seen by the grunts on the ground for it to shoot at the targets on the ground. Yep. So I hate, I hate when aircraft come in super low for, for close air support, attack, and strafing runs, and they get all the way down so that some idiot can throw a grenade up in the air and blow it up, or jump off of a high place and land on the aircraft. I hate that shit. Yeah, oh my god, there's some awful fucking World War II movies and stuff where the planes get so low to drop their payloads that the explosions engulf the plane and, and, and in real life would have destroyed the plane. Yep. But because it's a movie, they just fly through the fucking fire and smoke and <laughs> it, the plane's just totally fine. And I'm just like, why would you even get that low to drop your payload? That makes no fucking sense. Yep. Oh, it's so stupid. Yeah, and, and Retro Style says, the only reason I could see a base design like this is if it was not so much a base as much of a prisoner holding area, but even then it's messed up. Yeah, because you can see it for security reasons of having multiple, like, land, uh, multiple gates and stuff like that going up to the aircraft so people couldn't just escape. But this wasn't like a prison camp or anything. This was a military-only operation, and they just put it in place for the artifact. That was it. That was it. This is a brand new base they just made. And they had enough time to dig out full tunnels and put, like, mini bunkers and stuff in. And they didn't put a ramp up to their aircraft. So that's where Ryan got the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is just so, it is so fucking frustrating, though. It is so frustrating, this whole, uh, like, close air support. It's like, again, close is relative, guys. You're, you're, the, the, the AC-130, the A-10 uh, Thunderbolt 2s and everything like that do not need to be able to high-five the people on the ground to provide covering and support for the people on the ground. It's just As so Traven Armstrong says in chat, Seriously, it's like having a sniper being within spitting distance of the target. Why even be a sniper at that point? Yeah. That's the other thing I thought was fascinating. There was an episode of, um, I think it was Numbers, where there was a, a guy, there was a, a guy that was doing killings, mass killings as a sniper. Um, and they, uh, they go to this one scene, and the the numbers guy is like crunching all the numbers and he's putting the data in and everything like that. And then they get a, a sniper from Quantico comes in and he tells the number guy he's wrong. The number guy's like, no, I'm pretty sure I checked all the math and everything. He's like, no, no, you don't understand. You're looking at this from the math perspective. This guy took this shot from here. You've got where the shot came from. He took a shot from 400 yards away and he shot the dude in the chest the, this is not the sniper that we're after. The sniper that you're actually after is a guy who's really fucking talented and clearly is an actual expert marksman. This guy here that took this particular shot is an amateur. You get within 400 yards of your target, you're not doing it so you can do a center mass body shot. You're doing it so you can put a bullet between their eyes. And so, and that was a that was a good point of it too. It's like, yeah. So clearly, the guy that took this shot from 400 yards and hit a hit an upper uh, upper chest uh, center mass body shot was actually a terrible shot, and he was compensating for the fact he was a terrible shot. I love stuff like that. I love when when shows actually have that moment of realization of like, yeah, no, a sniper would be miles away from their well, not miles. Technically, the longest range shot was two miles and some change or something like that. Like, to a crazy effect where they actually had to 
to do the curvature of the Earth and the rotation of the Earth in its calculation to get the shot to hit. I don't, I can't even imagine how that would fucking work. How you would even be able to take that shot. It was a Canadian sniper that did it, by the way. Oh. Yeah. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's still the world record. I'm pretty sure the Canadian sniper is still the world record shot. You're talking about where they were on that mountain in um. Oh, what, what it was, was, it? was it? Pakistan? No, or was Afghanistan. it Afghanistan? Yep. Afghanistan? Okay, yeah. And it was a two mile and some change shot. <laughs> yeah. I would love the Guinness Book of World Record people having to go out there and measure the distance between <laughs> the person who took the shot of the fucking corpse of the enemy. Mm. Jesus. And it was with a, it was with a, um, well, the U.S. military called the M82. I don't know what the Canadian military calls it. Is the M82 or the Barrett 50 Cal? And so it was an anti-material rifle that they smoked him with. Yeah. Oh. So I see existing of one piece isn't on the menu today. Yep. That bullet was in the air for ten seconds. As some said, that was long enough. To have called the target on their phone and said bang before the bullet hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's just there's just more things of like minor little things that annoy me and stuff like that. Um then you get stuff that does it really well. Like Saving Private Ryan actually does the the counter sniper stuff really well. Except for the actual shot where it goes through the, the scope of the of the glass. That that would not work. That that German sniper would have a black eye, but he would actually have survived and would have been like, holy fuck! <laughs> he would have bugged the shit out of there immediately. Mm hmm ...of the season. Humanity. Not what it means to be human, but the degradation of it. Erasing one's flaws in favor of perfection. Or at least a false sense of it. But it's our flaws that makes us who we are. It's our flaws that make way for growth. What are you talking uh, about? What? The, the show doesn't go into any of this kind of fucking theming or anything. What are you talking about? Yeah. This comes across as someone just pulling stuff out of the show that isn't there because they want to like it. So, you know, this thing has to be good. So, oh, I'm seeing this kind of messaging in it. It's like, huh? Yeah, Ma Max Andrew, that's that's my point behind it. Is your close air support uh, isn't someone that needs to actually like be holding your hand and shit like that. You see it in games all the time. Halo Reach does it a lot. <laughs> like we got close air support and the the aircraft. I'm like Jesus Christ, I could jump up and give the fucking pilot a high five at this point. Uh, Galadriel is nothing but flaws, and she's a terrible character. Yep, I hate her so much. I hate she her is so fucking much. But again, in, in this show, the moment that he stops being the chief after the first five minutes, it's all downhill from there, and he makes things worse and worse, and he gets more and more people killed. Like, I can't overstate the getting people killed part. Like, yeah. there are numerous deaths that are on him because mm. they pulled out the fucking emotion chip. Yep. Yep. Oh, God. But the show doesn't care because they're just nameless nobody. So it's fine that people die so long as you don't actually know who they are. <laughs> yep. Oh, I hate that shit so much. Yeah. I, like, no, those deaths matter. Shut the fuck up. Well, I especially hate when what they do is um, they kill all the nameless people, but none of the main characters like get killed or even get any significant injuries so yeah. like, mm -hmm. like sure all the randys died but it didn't actually have an impact upon our characters all the random marines died but when kai was taking dozens upon dozens upon dozens of plasma hits while her shield was off and she just oh she's in a hospital bed for a little bit then she gets back up and she's fine hey pagan you've seen a little more than one season of game of thrones we do have to get back to watching that um, was there anything about the battles that, like, helped get you invested a little bit? Or maybe not just the battles, but characters dealing with stuff in general. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, it was done well, at least in the first season so far. I'm going to be honest, I zoned out a little bit when you were talking. I don't know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I, I zone out all the fucking time. Like, it is legitimately hard for me to not zone out constantly. Yeah. I said my thing, and then I just was, like, reading chat, and you guys were talking, and I was just like, uh-huh, and I'm just going to read chat for a second. <laughs> and, then you, and then you said my name, and I was like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. I, I do that a lot. That's why wow. sometimes I'll say something and one of you will be just like, yeah, I just said that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Kree, I, I just said that. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> God, am I the only one of this group that pays attention? Come on. Shit. Look, dishonor. Look. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your horse. I don't have a horse. I'm talking about Pegasus. Oh. Three. <laughs> he is a horse. Technically, he's a pony, I think. Pony yeah. is a horse. The type of horse. It's a type. Yeah, it's a horse. Ah, see, Pagan? See, you're going to get it now. <laughs> eh. Dishonor on your cow. Yeah. Yeah, that's the actual line, but I figured it fit better to say dishonor on your horse, implying that. <laughs> Uh, Peg and the Pony is a horse. Well, he is a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Ponies are horses. Ponies and horses are equines. Yes, you yes. are correct. <laughs> Snakes are a lizard. No, they're not. Okay, they moving on. <laughs> um, it, it's probably just a difference in fucking tism levels. We've got more tism than you, Setch. So we zone out fucking frequently. I don't know. I think it's the opposite. I think I have vastly more tism, and I think that's why I pay attention to stupid nonsense more. Not saying the way you guys are saying is you, stupid nonsense, but I have that you, weird moment of like fascination of like I watched Meat Eater, and I'm just like, oh, it's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to be fair, what I don't usually, usually. I don't usually zone out. It's very rare. No, no, you just fall asleep. <laughs> okay, that is that is fair. I did fall asleep once on stream, so I will give you that. But it only happened once so far. See, see the funny thing is, is I've actually fallen asleep a whole bunch on stream. You guys just don't know it. <laughs> yeah, Scrub Lord, thank you. Scrub Lord says, wrong. Snakes are reptiles. Lizards are reptiles. Snakes are not lizards. Lizards are not snakes. They're both reptiles. Yep. Yeah, okay. Snakes are lizards. Is is there a creature out there that is just called a lizard? No. So therefore, snakes are a type of uh, lizard. There is not a creature out there that is just called a snake. They all have different names. Yeah, that's subspecies. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> god, it's like arguing with Acer Thor. <laughs> it really is. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> wow. The legless lizard that is fantastic. Rude. <laughs> that was uncalled for. <laughs> Peg is going to get it now. Yeah, Peg is taking a, taking a trip to the glue factory after this. <laughs> Damn right he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. Or at least a false sense of it. But it's our flaws that makes us who we are. It's our flaws that make way for growth. One complaint I saw throughout this season among fans was Chief being evil. Why? But was Chief being <laughs> while you swell the music, you fucking asshole. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I was about to bring up the fact that, like, wow, he's trying to push that music is feels shit so hard you can barely hear what he's saying. Yep. But yeah, yeah Chief you need is... to balance your audio better. Yeah, Chief is evil. We'll we'll have to see what he says to counter it, but Chief is absolutely evil. Yeah. Absolutely. To literally kill Dr. Halsley? She done to him? Fucking love this scene, by the way. You love the scene where he turns ah. into a fucking sociopath? Oh my god. God, this is oh like so god. much about you. Yeah. I... I... I don't yeah. like show Halsey. 
but there is I a don't... but there is a genocide war. Yeah, I don't think she's deserving of being turned into a pile of goo. Yeah. There is currently a genocide war. Chief, get the fucking sand out of your clit. Grow up, <laughs> be a man, fight the fucking covenant so that human race doesn't all die. You can deal with this stuff afterwards. The ethical questions can come later. You are currently facing a crisis that kind of needs full attention now. This isn't like a proxy war or some bullshit. No, no, no. This is a... Your species is on the chopping block for survival in the entire universe. It's time to put this childish bullshit away. But I don't wanna. I wanna bang terrorists. Yeah. And then <laughs> instead, he tries to kill his superiors... Multiple times, mind you. He gets other people killed from his callousness and carelessness. He disobeys orders constantly. He steals property of the UNSC so we can go on his vision quest. He fucks a terrorist. Or, sorry. He supports a terrorist. And he fucks a s enemy spy. The enemy who is currently enacting the genocide war. And helps her escape. John Halo wants that Coven Tussie. Yeah, yeah, he do. He, yeah, he do. Yep. Oh, and it doesn't help that, yeah, he helps her escape, and then she goes right back to the fucking Covenant and mm. fully supports them, and it isn't until the assault at the end where, right as he's about to die, that's when she finally decides, oh, no, I will, I will do something. I changed my mind. I, I made a mistake coming back. Yeah. Uh uh, so Max Andrew says, such, I know I'm rehashing something from a while ago that is canon, but can't we have him still have his helmet on, but just make the visor transparent like an ODST? Yeah, absolutely. I think if there's more power to not seeing his face, or do what they did in Godfather. For God's sakes, make, make it to where nobody else could see his face, but you see him taking in the scene of a battle, and... He's audibly counting, like, the dead and wounded, or he's, he's giving, like, an accurate accounting of, like, dead, wounding, missing, injured, and stuff. And, and while he's doing that, zoom in slowly on his visor. We don't actually see his face at all. We just look, and we can see just his eyes. And you see his eyes, they're, they're slightly lidded, they're very melancholy, and stuff like that, and he's, like, looking around and everything, and you can tell, like, he, he's thinking to himself while he's trying to recount all this stuff. Again, these are things you can do for subtlety while still getting more emotion out of it. I argue you don't even need to do that. You can just do it based off of body language, like, if he slumps his shoulders forward, you can obviously tell he's not being stoic, he's not currently experiencing a height of emotion. He is experiencing a low... Again, there there are ways to do it. It's it takes people actually thinking these things through and stop being lazy. Like show writers and showrunners, stop being lazy. Um, there is because now we've seen Master Chief take his helmet off in the game, so there is game canon of what Chief looks like and what his eyes look like and everything. Yeah, we're all that's left. Again, how fucking fitting. Because the book, Halo Fall of Reach, actually sets up what the multiplayer is. Or, sorry, what the co-op is. Who's that other Spartan? Is it just two chiefs? That's kind of silly. No, that's, um... God, was it Linda? Fuck, who was it that he... I always get the, the names mixed up. But um, one of them goes with him to the uh, repair station to stop the Covenant from getting information on where Earth is. And she gets injured really badly by an elite. And they put her in, in stasis. And that's who the other Spartan is that's with John. It's actually set up in the books. Yeah, Lindo uh, Linda uh, 058. Yeah, I think. I think that's who it is. It might not be, but I, I vaguely think it's Linda. 
But again, so that's what the other character is. It's not just, that's not Master Chief. That's not just a clone. They didn't just copy Master Chief. They actually had a lore reason for why there were two Spartans here, potentially. And it even sets up in the book. Like, they don't know if Linda's going to survive. If you play, if you play single player, Linda didn't survive. She died. If you don't play single player, she's your co-op partner. That, I love, I love that they actually set that up. Well, I'm pretty sure I said the human repair station. Yeah, they save Johnson, and they save uh, Jenkins, and they save um, Mendoza, and... Because that, that was the group that was with him. And Johnson, you actually get later on in the other book series with uh, Contact Harvest that Johnson was actually training them as um, local militia on a planet that didn't really want to be UNSC fully, so he was going to train local militia. And then when that planet got attacked by the Covenant... They joined. They joined up in the in the um, uh, UNSC Marine Corps and joined Sergeant Johnson. Sergeant Johnson specifically told them he wants them in his unit. The co-op is canon. Yes, in the books it's made. Uh, they don't know if Linda's going to survive, and you have the branching path immediately. If you play single player for Halo One, Linda obviously didn't survive. She died from her injuries that she sustained on the repair station. If you play co-op, Linda survived. She she recovered from her wounds she received on the repair station. Yeah, Contact Harvest is great. So that it also makes that line that Johnson says, Oh, I know what the ladies like. It makes it so much better because he bangs the shit out of the O&I agent. <laughs> And that was after they survived uh, being they ex survived the extermination of uh, of Harvest, and they're both like their emotions are running high, and they're freaking out. And then she just grabs him, and he jumps at her, just like, "Yep, we're doing this right now." Yeah, shame on Fohammer. It's sh not shame on Fohammer. It's a shame what happened to Fohammer, I should say. And again, it still fits in the ending, too, because only one chief is in the ending cutscene. You can literally just assume in co-op that the other the other Spartan, Linda, falls in the final stretch of the, at the Battle of uh, the Pillar of Autumn. Man, it's so fucking fitting. Ugh. Anyways. Yep. Days. Open the door right now. Make me. I think Chief not being again. That, how pathetic. Mm, make me. What a whiny piece of shit. Uh, I think such as the Warhammer guy, Dark Tide Beta. Ogren is literally the living Giga Chad meme. If you pick the right personality, he absolutely is. And it's funny as fuck. A badass at everything, and making mistakes along his journey made him a more complex character. Okay, Master Chief made mistakes in Halo Combat Evolved, you fucking idiot. What do you think him prepping the Halo ring to launch was? It was a mistake he didn't know he was making. He got t taken in by 343 Guilty Spark, who was trying to tell him we do this, this, and this for a containment thing. And he didn't realize that containment meant firing the fucking rings and killing everybody. Again, it was a mistake. My dude, you need to pay attention to the games. You need to pay attention. If you're going to do critique like this, you need to fucking pay attention. ...than what we get in the video games. I was thinking, Which maybe we can ignore the reactionaries that damned this series after the first two episodes. That's all you need. Well, By the way, mean, you only needed to see the first episode to realize we were in fucking dire trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the first two episodes were dog shit. Uh, the rest of the show ended up being dog shit. How shocking. Yeah. It only got worse, which is hilarious that he's saying, like, all oh, the people who fucking judged it on the first two episodes, like, motherfucker, they got worse. 
Yeah. Every episode thereafter got worse. Yep. <sighs> oh my god. Sure, there is a and some of the CGI can be a bit spotty. And the subplot mm -hmm. involving Bullshit. these two did feel misplaced. But there is a... Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Let's just bring magic. Just pure magic. Magic exists in the Halo universe now. That was a brilliant idea, you fucking idiots. Mm-hmm. They should have excised all of that. Soren and Quan Ha should just have been gone. Yeah. fucking magic in halo god damn it yep also i don't like what he said before about reactionaries like yeah people are reacting to the dog shit show that's not reactionary they're, they're giving their opinions on why the show is bad yeah and then you go through that and do they have a point hey when when there were two gatling guns and a bunch of rifles shooting at the elites it didn't do anything now that there's nobody shooting at the elites and John picks up one of those same Gatling guns, it starts killing the elites. That's a problem. Are you going to say that's reactionary? Oh, you're being a reactionary. Yeah. Uh, Galadriel threatening to murder the fucking queen of Numenor. Oh, that's, uh, that's reactionary. Fucking, I had another example I forgot. Oh, somehow Palpatine has returned. That's a dumb line. That, that doesn't belong in Star Wars. Oh, you're being reactionary. Like, sure, just label every criticism you don't like as coming from fucking reactionary fanboys. I'm sure that's going to work well for you. Yeah, this is what the NPC playbook is. It totally doesn't make you look like a fucking dishonest piece of shit at all. Yep. I love to like. Love even. Open mind. Oh god, it is, it is skipping like crazy now. Hold on a second. <laughs> spotty and the subplot involving these two did feel misplaced but there is a lot here to like love even nope. if you would only go in it with the open mind the script could use some touching up but the action is insanely <laughs> bad <laughs> well, I'm touching up under some touching the millennium yes i'm gonna touch up the halo show script by Control A and delete and fucking starting from scratch. Absolutely. Like, that's the only way you can fix this. It's not a matter of touching up. Go in with an open mind. Uh, and as what I'm going to say, Coolio, Ma Coolio System says, uh, says the closed mind consumer. <laughs> yep. Yep. Just consume product and get excited for next product. Yeah. Yeah, this guy was literally about to talk about how the action is so badass, and the action, it looks awful in this show. The action is so dumb. This whole scene right here, her shields are gone. She is getting pelted with plasma fire from all directions, and she's not dying. This is frustrating. Not here to like. Love even. If you would only go in it with the open mind. The script could use some touching up. But the action is insanely badass. <laughs> These scenes are even more exciting. <laughs> you, show, you show one of the worst examples ever. Oh, oh my god. god. These are the people these shows are targeting. <laughs> this are. right this dude right here is exactly the type of audience that these fucking uh, these new type of writers are fucking targeting they're like oh yeah we're gonna get these the whales of tv shows and movies that's who we're like good targeting for yeah. and this dude is one of them the uneducated mass npc consumers yep it had flashy shiny shit that made it badass like you realize <laughs> that it was a fucking it was a fucking banshee that he magicked himself on top of, shot a pistol at the armored carapace, randomly ended up underneath it somehow, was then the banshee was flipped upside down again at random, never seen, then he kamikazes it into a fucking phantom and they're not dead. Yeah, it makes no- even though it shows, like, all the other Covenant are dead, but- no, nah, he's totally fine. 
Not to mention, the Covenant came down from the ship itself, not a phantom. <laughs> they got drop potted in. Where the fuck did that phantom come from? God. Don't don't think about it, Setch. If you don't think about it, the show is actually really fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just turn your brain off, Warhead. Mm. Because they happen at crucial moments within the narrative and not just as an excuse for action. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, there was he obvious. He says that as Master Chief is punching an elite to fucking death. Yeah. Because he got angry. Angry. He's so angry. He's so salty. He's having an <laughs> autistic refit. <laughs> you could literally Wait. dub over Mr. Chump screaming with a and it would fit better. Yep. Oh, God. And again, the action does just feel like it comes out of nowhere just for an excuse for a set piece. It really yeah, does. Yeah, there, there are three action scenes in the entire show. The first episode with the Sang Sanghali uh, attacking the rebels. Mm -hmm. The episode with the artifact that he's got a clip of on screen right now. And then the final episode, and all three of them are fucking dog shit. No, you missed one. I missed one? Yeah. Well, technically two, but I don't count the assassin chick doing stupid shit to be really that much of an action scene. Oh, you mean the um, the worms on the one ship? That, yeah, the the battle that's... for that one ship. It's an action scene, but it's and it's so stupid because nobody loosely... shoots her ass. It, it's and... it's an action scene by technicality. There's not a lot that really happens there. Yeah, like stuff is happening, but it's mostly focused on dumb bitch walking through there. And not getting like she shot. Owns the place. Not getting shot not by getting anybody. Shot. Who, oh, hey, these worms loses? aren't attacking her, and she's walking through here as if she owns the place now? Oh, yeah, that's fucking weird. Maybe I'll her. shoot her. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I won't shoot her. Maybe I'll just fucking let the worms do everything. Now, you know what would have been more interesting? If one of the Marines or the Captain did take a shot at her, like, why they let her on board to begin with. I don't know. The engines are out in the abandoned ship. Uh, then how to come out of slip space? I... Shit! Shoot the ship down! Shoot the ship down! <laughs> but no, they they never should have believed a single word she said to begin with. But um, when she gets aboard, what would have been way more interesting, right, is if while she's doing her little walk, the captain does pop off around at her and it hits a personal shield like the elites have. You know, something to indicate that, no, she's not that dumb. But no, no, nobody nobody shoots at her and we know she doesn't have a shield, so... Yep, nobody nobody decided to shoot her. None of the none of the dozens of marines that were there, you know, spraying bullets everywhere. Now none of them decided to pop a couple rounds into her. Nope, nothing at all. They met her with a massive firing squad. Well, they should have massive. fired fucking immediately. Yeah, the moment they saw the worms and stuff come out. And she's not moving, and she's smiling and stuff. They they literally should have lit her ass up first, because all of their weapons were pointed at her first. They should have squeezed right then and there. And then they should have turned her into paste. Yep. And then do Master Chief. <laughs> no, I, I just hate all the characters in this show. Yeah. And I want them to die. Yeah. These sequences elicit the power fantasy and adrenaline you feel while playing the video games. They <laughs> no. absolutely nailed it. Not at all. No. no. Not in the slightest. Not even I feel, remotely. I feel more of a sense of action from a game of Tetris than I do the Halo show. Yeah. Especially Tetris 99. That's, that's a fucking fantastic Tetris game. If you, want to pl if you want to play a Battle Royale game that's Tetris... Play Tetris 99. It's actually genuinely really fucking good. And yes, it is a battle royale where you play Tetris against 99 other players. And it's so fucking good. When it comes to performances, I do have some favorites. 
Kate Kennedy as Spartan Kai 125 was great. No, she wasn't. She was one of the worst. Oh, my God. She was fucking awful. Oh, my God. Literally, part of her story arc is that she has a woman moment and completely fucking just breaks down, shuts down. In the middle of a Because battle. she's a woman. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's actually a fucking plot point. Yep. Jesus Christ. And then she gets taken out in the fucking finale like it's nothing like oh my god <laughs> i also want to point out too that um we don't know if this is actually her acting ability or if it's the direction it's just dog shit there's entirely the chance that she could be a good actress oh, yeah, I'm and just got about... no i know that, that's why i'm making it clear though yeah fair enough. um yeah there's a chance that she could be an entirely good actress and it just has shit script shit direction yeah by the way uh we're, we're not kidding we say we say we already explained this earlier we're not kidding when we say she has a woman moment because the whole thing is that she's having emotions because she took out her ass chip because she saw john take out his ass chip um so she's experiencing emotions now and when they get into a battle for this is the first time she's gotten to a battle with without the chip stopping her emotions she has a wave of emotions and sadness and horror and scared and she locks up and drops her weapon and she's going oh, no save me no. meanwhile john can can function just fine without his emotion chips it's literally because she's a woman that's it that's literally it oh dude this guy probably cheered and Thought it was the coolest thing ever to watch Locke and Master Chief fight in Halo 5. And if you've ever seen that fight, it is the dumbest, stupidest, choreographed, nonsense fight you've ever seen. I say choreographed because the animators have to be choreographers, you know, so, fair. It is awful. It is awful, awful, awful. This actress is probably having the most fun out of everybody, and she has my second favorite arc outside of Chiefs. She doesn't okay. have an arc. No, she does have an arc. You see, she was a Spartan, then she took care of her ass chip, and then she became a crazy person. All right, fair, fair. So she she devolves. Yeah. Just like John. Actually, no, they both they both devolve. Yeah. Natasha McCall nails the mad scientist without being this annoying Karen character. Okay, nope, nope. I'm, we're, we're in fucking clown logic at this point. Let's go. That would often be the case for characters like her. She was very cold and calculating and a complete boss. She wasn't. She was constantly getting showed up and she only got away with anything because the plot demanded it. It's so, so bullshit. The show is so beyond fucking bullshit it hurt. And damn it, did I love to hate her. Jen Taylor reprising her role as Cortana could not have been even more perfect. She has. <laughs> <n> <laughs> oh, God. This is not Cortana. This is Cuctana. You will not sully the name of Cortana with this fucking atrocious. And again, I don't blame her. We've seen that she can act. She can give a good vocal performance, right? We saw that in Halo 1 and 2 and 3. This, this script is just so fucking awful. And the CGI for her is so bad. Oh my god, it is, no, th this is not Cortana, this is Cuctana. Yeah. Not miss delivering a very distinct robot to Cortana. And of course... Pablo Stryver leads the cast effectively. I thought he carried the weight of the story no. pretty well. No, he doesn't. Someone we could actually root. No, not I at all. honestly think he was one of the worst. He he was the worst thing about the show. This because the Sang Holly and everything like that, they're awful. They look terrible. These absolute abominations of it. The Covenant don't get 
any screen time like they should. There's nothing that indicates that this is an actual war for survival for humanity. It's just all this petty, nonsense, bullshit, and mommy issues of this plank of wood who can't fucking act. In this show, I should say. He can act in other places, but in this show, oh, fuck no. Oh, fuck no. It is awful. His, uh, he has an autistic cry in the corner in an episode because he can't he just can't handle it anymore it's so bad it's so fucking bad actually root for and deliver incredible action choreography. I've always liked- No, 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 the action choreography he had was really terrible. Again, we were pointing out the Brutes thing, where he just t love taps the Brutes to the side, and then they just go away because they fall off screen, and they don't kill him, even though he's standing there and not doing anything. Yeah. And again, this is, a, this is a lot of problems you have when- you have to rely on the people doing the CGI to give you impact to anything, any of your movements or anything you do. It's a problem with CGI so much. And yeah. he cannot carry the weight and impact. And the CGI team let him down massively. Yeah, because if you're an actor standing in front of a green screen, you can throw a punch or do like a body check thing. And if... um the other character looks like it's like the CGI character that doesn't exist, uh, actually exist. If it like moves slightly, like there's little impact, that's going to look like shit. But if you have them fly across the room, that's probably going to look like shit too. Cause that's not how physics work, mm -hmm. but it would at least imply there's more impact. Yep. And not to mention too, like you, you need other things. Like when your arm connects with something, it, you're, your body reacts, you see that shockwave that goes up. Even in Master Chief's armor, you should see, like, his wrist lock in from when he nails something so hard. You should see the wrist slightly twist as it hits, as it goes and the bone compresses. So his wrist, all the bones in his hand and wrist compress in, which then compresses into his arm, which compresses into his, el or into his elbow, compresses into his upper arm, compresses into his shoulder. Because and you could you probably hit have something really fucking hard. And you could probably have something like that happen if they have like what some if... kind of modified punching bag there yeah. to to fill the space. And then you just put the CGI monster over top of it. Do the full size body bag punching bag. And then have him say, Alright, we want you to go all out as hard a punch as you can, like you're punching this thing in the guts. Put a, put a little marker on the, the bag if you want to be like, hey, this other slightly different color of green tape, put your punch right there. And then you just have them come up and just go wham. And then you get all of that natural impact motion that you could see in the hand. Then you add on top of the CGI of the guy lunching, herching, lunching, herching. Wow. Staggering backwards Lurching or recoiling forward. from the hit. I was gonna say lurching forward, and then raising up from the force of the impact, hitting back on their feet, and then stumbling back and falling away. That would look like you just delivered a hell of a blow. Like God kicked the door open. I wish one of the brutes would have punched Master Chump in one of his fucking ovaries in this show. Yeah, same. Punch him like he owes you money. Yeah, there you go. His catalog, he's somewhat underrated, and if you go looking, he has a few gems worth getting into. Act with the character over the course of a long-term TV show, there's no way you can pull an audience through that without getting to know the character, without relating to the character, without empathizing with the character. And I, I just agree. Failed. Well, you failed to do what you're suggesting. But no, you can absolutely go with it without relating to the character, empathizing with the character. Who related to and empathized with Tywin Lannister? And if you did, I'm, I'm worried. I can relate to Tywin. 
Like, uh, okay. Well, some of the shit he does, of course, he wouldn't uh, relate to that. But his reasons for it, like uh, the Red Wedding, which I'm not going to spoil now because Peg is watching his show, but just referencing it, he does that as more of a move that's like, yeah, we're saving lives by doing this. All these soldiers don't have to go into war and fucking die yep. because we did this. Yeah. That that makes sense from, you know, the tactician's point of view. Yeah, and again, that uh, was... Him wanting his family to retain their... I, I guess respect. Not honor, but respect. That people don't want to fuck with them. And yeah. the actions they do now could create a dynasty that could last a thousand years. Like, yeah. Yep. It, that that is understandable. It's just all the other shit he does, which it's like, yeah, no, don't don't do that. Again, it, it's one of those things where um, what was so good, and we were talking about this earlier when someone asks us, well, how do you define good writing? It's like even when you see the villain, the antagonist, because clearly Tywin Lannister and the Lannisters are the antagonists. Clearly, you are given knowledge above and beyond what normal people have in this world. You know certain things that other characters don't, and that would influence your perception of things. So you know the Lannisters are the antagonists, right? But you can understand their motives, their motions, what they do. You can understand how they're playing the game. You can understand the setups that they're doing, how they're moving the chess pieces. You can understand them because it's well-written. You don't have to like them. You can still view them as a villain and an antagonist. Absolutely. But you can understand what they're doing, and what they're doing makes logical sense. We've only got about a minute left of this. I can't wait. Now, I don't know about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I think... Um, uh, what's his name? Kurt Ur Urban? Oh god, no, please. Brain, don't do this to me. He played Dread in uh in the Dread movie. He played Judge Dread. I think he would Carl have... Urban. Carl Urban, thank you. Oh god. Um I think he would have been a fantastic Dread. Or a fantastic chief, I think, because he could pull it off. Because he could pull off the he could pull off the acting through body language and everything. Which is what you would need, and he, you didn't need to see his face. All he had was his mouth, for God's sake. Yeah, sense. that that's what I was going to say. He's not a little bitch like uh, most actors seem to be, and he's perfectly fine wearing a helmet for the entire movie, and yeah. you don't see his face. Yeah, and you get all of his get all of his emotion and characterization through how he moves and how he reacts. No, I do not mean Sylvester Stallone. Fuck that. I am Daron. No, no. <laughs> old, old Dread movie, bad. No. Cortana, we gotta kill the alerts. <laughs> <laughs> also, Cree, hmm? you said we got a few minutes left of this. I got some bad news for you after this video's over. What? Uh, well, we'll wait till it's over. All right, all right, let's go. Is it something on stream or off stream? On stream. Oh. Uh-oh. Alright, let's go. And that's impossible to do with a helmet on all the time. And you don't... No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. People immediately got attached to Judge Dredd. And he had a helmet on the whole time, and you could only see his fucking mouth. Okay? Because it's amazing knew... that people say shit like this when it's been proven already. Yeah, that you do not need that. People got attached to Master Chief, and he never took his helmet off. Yes, that too. Again, yeah. you're just... You're just too vain. You were too vain, and you should have kept your helmet on the whole time. You should have had some level of humility and care for your craft. Senator Armstrong would have been an amazing Master Chief. <laughs> have the real world rules against it like you do in the mandalorian if this is what i have to... the real world rules against it 
but let's get the full context sizing with the character and that feels virtually impossible to do with a helmet on all the time and you don't have the real world rules against it like you do in the mandalorian okay so he, he probably fucked up what he was trying to say there best faith interpretation would be like the rules of the world the story yeah. takes place in like the mandalorian where it's the rules of the mandalorian or well, this retarded uh, Mandalorian order, that you never take your helmet off. Mm. Um, still, though, if... I'm not going to say you're a bad actor if you need your face out there, but you shouldn't be playing the role of a character whose face you should never see. Yeah. If, if you're somebody that's vain enough that you need to have your face attached to the thing... Don't play a character who's supposed to be helmeted the whole time. Carl Urban played Judge Dredd, and you never see his face. Ever. Even when he's injured and patching himself up, you do not see his face. Even when the crisis is over, he does not take his helmet off. Yeah, someone reminds me of that best line ever, though. It's like... He's like, are you ready? Yeah. He goes, well, I was wondering when you were going to notice that you didn't have your helmet. Sir, a helmet interferes with my ability to use my powers. I think a bullet might interfere a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and it's God, good, because he, he does that shoulder shrug and nods his head. He's like, I think a bullet would interfere more. Again, you didn't need to see his face for that. You could understand that he was, you know, he was fucking quipping back at her. If this is what I have to look future and upcoming video game adaptations, then I'm here for it. I am not. While not perfect, Halo the series has potential to be perfect. No, it doesn't. No. Not at all. They, they've ruined it. You cannot do this. You need to scorch earth this and start from the beginning all over again. I would say this series... cannot be perfect. Yeah, the series as a whole cannot be perfect if the first season isn't perfect. Like, yep. y you realize that's that's part of it, right? Yep. If, exactly. um... <sighs> oh, bear back one second. I, I was going to try and give an example, but a TV show actually is the best example, I think. If you've got ten episodes of a TV show, and nine of those episodes are ten out of ten, and the 10th episode is 9 out of 10, then it's not perfect, by fucking definition. And the rest of the series can never be perfect either, because you still got that one 9 out of 10. But that's still a best-case scenario. We're talking about 1 out of 10 territory. Maybe 2 out of 10. I can't remember what we gave it before. It was very low. There's no more potential in the story than a blank sheet of paper. Saying a show is potentially good means nothing. Yeah, that's the thing. Any idea you have for a show or a video game or whatever has the potential to be good. Doesn't mean it's going to be. All right, I'm back. Welcome back. Thank you. I can finish this thing off and I can get to doing something else because there, there's stuff yeah. I need to do. Yeah. Well, you can hear the bad news I have first and then... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I think it can draw in new fans of the Halo universe. <laughs> you would be wrong. I mean, <laughs> isn't that part of what makes adaptations great? Being able to share what you love so much about a thing with someone else. No. No, no, no. 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 So here's your problem. You want to share what you love about the thing you love with someone else. But if you have to dramatically change it to something entirely different that, that bastardizes the thing you love in order to get the other person in, you're not sharing the thing you love with them. You're sharing some freakish abomination against the thing you love just to try to bring someone new in. 
If I want to bring someone into the Fallout series because I love 1, 2, and New Vegas, and I get them to play Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 instead, um, yeah, no, that's not going to work. In fact, they might be a bit shocked if they play the other games to find out how different they are. Yeah. Yeah, and wanting to bring other people in just for the sake of bringing other people in, that's already not good, but there's also the fact that sometimes you don't want to bring certain people in because all they want to do is change it and ruin it. Yeah. Yeah. When I... When I talk about how much I love Elden Ring and the Soulsborne series and everything, I don't want to bring in the people that liked Lords of the Fallen. <laughs> God, the game was so shit. But again, I don't want to... I They aren't the type of people, if they were like, Lords of the Fallen was great and stuff like that, I'm like, okay, go play Lords of the Fallen then. I don't, I don't want you in the Soulsborne series. I, I would love it if you could see the things that we love in it, but no. And you you go you go enjoy your thing, have fun with it. When I want people to play Space Station Thirteen, I don't tell them I don't like make up some nonsense about it. I tell them the way Space Station Thirteen is about how it's a clunky fucking mess. You have all these cool things you can do, but it's a tism game for a fucking reason. Same with Dwarf Fortress. I love Dwarf Fortress. That game is pure tism. <laughs> You know, so yeah. Know, so if like someone Kree and everything, I don't think Kree has seen Dwarf Fortress. I'm aware of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, if someone tells you about like a super duper hilarious funny story about like Space Station 13, since that's usually the example, yeah. not not every moment of gameplay you have is going to be a story like that. In fact, most are probably not going to be stories like that. Well, it depends on how much you go out of your way to make the story. So that's that's the thing. You have to be more active in the making of the story, right? You can't True. be a person. You in Space Station Thirteen, but, you can't be a person that just okay, shows so, up to the station and then expects all the fun stuff to happen. What I'm saying is, um, Snail Wizard Magic Rod Dude, that video you showed me. Yes. Shit like shit like that isn't going to be the norm. Yeah. Every second of your gameplay isn't going to be that. Yeah, no, it's not going to be anything like that, no. Th- th- that's the point I'm making. Yeah, that's fair. But again, a lot of people will, will hear the stories of Space Station 13, and they'll join it. They'll pick assistant. And then they'll barely get off of the shuttle, and they're like, I don't know what to do, and like, this is so boring, and stuff like that. And they don't talk with anybody, they just try to grab things and run around, and they don't interact with any other players or anything. They just think things are going to happen. And When's the crazy wizard dude going to show up and start blowing up the station and stuff? It's like, we didn't get a wizard this round. Well, what would we get this round? We don't know. There's probably traitors in our midst. We have no idea what we got. And then they'll they'll leave something, or maybe they'll get lucky. Maybe you'll be one of those miracle ones that gets lucky, because you haven't you haven't gone out of your way to interact with people or have you got out of your way to, to get in fights with people or like tell sell sec to piss off and stuff like that in in their proper ways to fuck with sec by the way you don't just run up to sec and start trying to beat somebody with it with a toolbox or anything like that you uh you can go and annoy them in other ways like maybe you uh you see all the sec officers um run away from sec so then you go get a mop bucket and you fill it with water. And then you take a mop and you quickly start mopping the floor all the way up to sec. And then you just sit there at the end of the sec hall with your back to security with binoculars watching as all the sec officers come running back to sec and they start sliding along the floor going, what the fuck? My favorite, that's my favorite thing to do as a janitor. I'll get the floors wet intentionally. And I'll have a wet floor sign nearby. And the moment somebody slips, I don't say a single word. I just point to the wet floor sign. (laughs) And you'll be shocked how quickly that pisses people off. They immediately stand up and say, I don't give two fucks about your wet floor sign. You do that again, I'm going to fucking kick your ass. It's like, (laughs) we are starting the drama. Again, make, make the station have drama. Be a part of the story. Be a part of the catalyst that causes the station to devolve into chaos.
Alright, alright. Without even picking up a controller, audiences can have the Halo experience and maybe No Yeah, by going onto YouTube and watching a Let's Play. Yeah, exactly. You'll you'll get more out of it if you do that than you will this show. Yeah, be a drama queen up to an extent, Kingaroo. Again, you don't want to be the person that's being annoying. You gotta read the room. You gotta read when you're when you're really getting on somebody's nerves and then they're they're gonna lose it and they're just gonna beat you to death. You gotta, you gotta be just that level of annoying to cause friction and to cause sparks and things like that to happen. It opens them up to a new world of which to get lost in. It's pretty damn awesome. Hey guys, no. thank you so no, much for not. sticking it's around. Click that thank link you see on god, the screen so right over. now and check out more. Yeah, yeah thank god. That's awful, so awful. Easily the best video we've covered since, um... It is. Yeah. 50. But still not great. Yeah. This would probably be a... C tier? Probably C tier video. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about the exact tiers on 100 if we get there. Yeah. And we do the tier list then. That's fair. Yeah, my my goodness, guys, my goodness. So, I uh, was looking through this guy's channel. Uh oh. And was going through some of his videos. Oh no. And this uh, this snaggle toothed moron That's has mean. <laughs> he has a four minute video. Okay. Um, going back and forth praising. Uh, bebop flicks. <laughs> and he never did a follow up. He watched three episodes and mildly praised it. Um, said like the characters were great, the writing is good, uh, the special effects are amazing, it's got fun action, all that stuff. It just basically praising the show, saying it's missing the special something that the anime had, but overall it's still a good show. Uh, he made three episodes and then, or he watched three episodes and then never continued. Uh, he never made any follow-up video to it. You know what? That special something is missing from the show. Talent. All the fucking good parts of yeah. the original. Yeah. My God, man, my God, what a world we live in. Yeah. To to make chat happy for a little bit. Oh shit! No, that's the pinball machine. Fuck! I changed it to the pinball machine. There you go. Have uh, the the turtle spy. There you go, chat. Just make you a little bit happier. No, oh, the turtles. <laughs> I I thought you were gonna put up. Um, when I heard you say turtle, my first thought was uh, <laughs> Mitch McConnell turtle. I mean, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Because we'll, we'll leave, that we'll one's leave funnier than the fucking Master in Disguise turtle. It is. It is. <laughs> which, which, by the way, hilarious that they fucking filmed that scene like shortly after 9-11 and had a fucking moment of silence. <laughs> Here you go, chat. Again, this is just so you can kind of, you know, we can kind of detox from the video we just experienced or we're suffering through there you go chat there you go. i'm just waiting for it to pop up on screen <laughs> yeah me too not ah, there it is <laughs> oh, oh shit i'm God. a bit behind yep <laughs> <laughs> god he looks like one of what the fucking great note to fucking end on he looks like one of the prophets <laughs> he does from the show oh god <laughs> Five uh, Australian dollar redos from De uh, Dailyocon. Thank you. Did you redo? Wouldn't it be better? Dollar redos. Did you redo? No, because didgeridoo is already a thing. Yes. And it's it's dollars that is being sent. That's why it's called dollar redos. Because you're combining two things for the joke. Wouldn't it be better if the f Wouldn't it be better if the first season? Uh, point of view, be a rookie Marine. Second season would be veteran ODST, and third be Master Chief. 
Something like that could be done well. Yeah, it would be better. I argue that you shouldn't ever get the perspective of the Spartans. Ever. Because you want to keep their status as this other, this, this thing that's above humanity, this thing that's more powerful. You want to get the reputation of the Spartans from the outside in. And what I what I was suggesting in the way I had, would write the script is in the first season, it's the um, you're following the Marines, you're following ODST, you're following all these different groups, as it's the insurrection fight. In the first season, contact harvest happens. Then it starts uh, switching over into uh, for the for that season finale, it shows a wall, um, a memorial wall show up and then harvest shows up on the wall and then it starts counting the casualties and then as it starts expanding back away from the harvest that's on this wall and the, the number counting you see multiple other worlds all over and they start counting and that's kind of to get you hyped for the next season and in season two we go into you're still following marines and you're still following uh some odst and everything like that but now you're fighting more covenant there's more covenant battles and fights and everything and you see the Spartans show up in, like, maybe episode three of season two. You see the Spartans, and they save the day, and but they, they come and go. So maybe episode five, you see another Spartan. Episode seven, you see another Spartan. And then near the end, you see multiple Spartans. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Stuff to slowly build them up in the world. They're, they're just kind of there. They're on the periphery. And then you go into season three, and you see lots of Spartans and operations and constantly going on but humanity's still losing the war we're still getting pushed back over and over again and then end of season three fall of reach happens right that's the way i would do it but i would also show this perspective from the elites as well because i think it's there's a lot of lost potential there to see what the elites are dealing with especially because a lot of elites ask the question this is what's so fascinating this is why the elites are so much more willing to side with humanity they they because a lot of the elites start asking the question in uh in the books and everything like if we can walk the path to salvation if we can walk the path that the forerunners laid out for us why can't humanity why aren't they allowed to i mean if, if we if we are this covenant where everybody is allowed to walk the path why can't humanity walk the path what stops them from doing it? Well, if you want more of my audio rants, feel free to tune into my streams. They will get a lot of them. So far, all I've been doing on my birthday is listening to you while I stare at a wall. Oh, well, happy birthday. Oh, there you go. Oh, you read the thing I was going to do. I was going to say they're channeling their inner Biden so fat. <laughs> <laughs> All I've been doing on my birthday Ch is listening to you while I stare at a wall. Yep. Channeling their inner Vincent Martin. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, two Australian didgeridoos, kangaroos, koala killers uh, from DaliOCon. Thank you very much. Only if the show hat was written by a better writer. There you go. Yeah. Anyways, I believe that's all for today. Yes, indeed. I would recommend... I would recommend Contact Harvest and Halo The Fall of Reach. Those are the ones I would absolutely recommend No Holds Barred because they're both fantastic works. One was written by Eric Nyland and he was in direct contact with the team and released uh, Halo The Fall of Reach before Halo Combat Evolved came out. And the other actually comes from one of the writers on Halo itself, which is Contact Harvest, to explain when the Human Covenant War first started. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Guys, it was fantastic to see everybody here. And we want to, at least I want to say, thank you very, very much for all of the super chats. It is incredibly appreciated. Uh, let me get the, let me get the Mitch Turtle off the screen. <laughs> it is incredibly appreciated. Thank you all so much for being here. Appreciate every single one of you for taking the time out to come out and hang out with us, chat with us, and listen to the tangents and everything. Because after all, some tangents are guaranteed. Wow, name drop. Yeah. Fuck you. Roll credit. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, everyone. It is very much appreciated, and I hope...
today's Monday. Uh, have a good week. Have a good yep. week. I yep. will hopefully see you guys, uh, some of you over on my stream on Twitch. And we're going to be playing Eternal Darkness tomorrow. And Eternal Darkness is a fantastic horror game. Air quotes. We'll do air quotes for it. Horror game. And if you haven't experienced it before, I highly recommend it. It is probably the best Lovecraftian horror game ever made. So hopefully I'll see you guys there for that. Yeah. Oh. See you guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, do you want to go and keep going? Yeah, I'll do one last thing. This Saturday, we're watching Aliens on my on my Discord. Highly recommend you watch that. You come and check that out too, because Aliens is probably the best sequel ever made. Yeah. Uh, I will try, as I said earlier, to maybe do some Elden Ring invasion streams at some point. Uh, it's one of the things I've been planning. I will try to get to it. We'll see. Hopefully I actually do it. Uh, assuming I have the time and real life doesn't get in the way like it has been a lot lately. So hopefully I can actually do that. We'll see. That's, uh, that's all I wanted to say about that. Great. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that's good. Well, anyways, $2 to end out on by Alex Hoffman. Thank you very much. Love Thank you guys. You. Oh, that's appreciated. Well, until then. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>